good. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little. Oh, no, I'm thinking. Oh, no. Yes. Hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Why he do that? Testing, one, two, three, four. Hello, yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello. I let him, he came, I let him test, he two ears are so big. Yeah, 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 Ah, test, test. It is a little loud, Hi, actually. Fans. Yes, I'm your I can hear you. Guide, Amy, and I'm yep, here I'm with Paper Finn, as always. Yeah, what's up, guys? Good to be back. So we're here to talk about PUBG Global Championship 2023, the year's finale. Before moving on, we want to briefly talk about the road to PGC and how PUBG Esports was like in 2023 so far. Uh, let's start with PGS1. Finally, we got to see 17 Gaming win. So it was awesome to see them get their first championship. And then PGS2 in Riyadh, it was the Sonics coming through with another big win. Uh, such a great moment for them. And finally, there was PNC 2023. It's not a part of Road to PGC, but Team Korea finally succeeded to hold their trophy in their hometown after winning the first chicken dinner in PNC. So only remaining tournament would be PGC 2023, where the best team of 2023 will be decided. PGC 2023 will kick off on November 18th and last until December 3rd, and it will be held in Bissasi Hall, Central Latprao, in Bangkok, Thailand. You remember last year? Yes, I do. I mean, PNC 2022 was amazing. The fans in Thailand have so much passion. They're so kind and welcoming. I can't wait to go back. In PGC 2023, 32 teams will be competing for 13 days to decide the champion of 2023. And we have a little bit different format this time. We have five brackets, group stage, loser's bracket, winner's bracket, and the last chance stage, and the grand finals. We also have four maps, Pago Vikendi, the new maps, and Erangel Miramar, the classic maps. The one thing we want to talk about is that we have the Erangel update in this version, right? Yeah, exactly. So there's been some changes to the map with locations like Stalber and others, Milta as well. And you also have some interesting new features like the secret rooms, which is pretty interesting. There's some good loot in there. And we also have a new weapon coming in, Dragnoth. 
I think it's a really fun gun, really good at close range. Players that like the barrel or the ace might want to use the Dragunov instead. We've seen a lot of interesting plays in 2023 with the new weapons like mortars or pincher pads, so I expect a lot of plays out of Dragunov too. So now it's time to talk about the 32 teams participating in PG 2023. Before moving into the details, I want to explain how the 32 teams have secured their tickets to PG 2023. First four teams from PGS points, it's based on their performance in both PGS 1 and PGS 2. And the PGC points were given based on performance in their regional series or third party event. Based on that point, eight teams from APAC, including the host country seed, and 10 teams from Asia, six teams from EMEA, and four teams from Americas have secured their tickets. So let's move on to the four teams that have secured their ticket earlier based on PGS points. I think these teams have a high possibility of winning PGC as they have been consistent throughout the year. So first is Sonics. Yeah, they're looking really, really good. Now adding Kickstart to the roster, a phenomenal fragger. Trying to get him fit in with the roster can take some time. So yeah, their PAS result for PAS2, maybe not what they wanted, but that's okay. They will get better, I think. So absolutely a TBF to look out for. In 17 Gaming, they finally won the international event. The interesting fact is that after winning PGS1, they have finally won PCL2. Yeah, it seems like once you start winning, things just kind of keep rolling downhill for you in a good way. So really excited to see what they can continue to do. Next is Twisted Minds. I think is the most consistent team in recent years in PUBG's first scene, but it's just that they can't win the global event. All they need is that one win, and then I think you're going to see Twisted Minds potentially string a bunch of tournament wins together. They're just too good. And for last, it's Danawa Esports. We have to say that Danawa Esports were really consistent, winning all PWS, the regional series, and three of them have won PNC 2023, so all the players in Danawa Esports are really in their highest form this year. Previously, the Danawa Esports, the IGL was Seoul and Inonix, but I heard that Inonix is taking role as IGL. So I think this would help Seoul to frag out even more, which means that he has high possibility of becoming the PGC 2023 MVP. And I think we have few more candidates out of these teams. Absolutely. I mean, most people I talk to consider Seoul to be the best player in the world right now. Of course, Tiggleton as well. He has been fragging out of his mind this year. Perfectix continues to dominate. He does a ton of damage every event. This guy's nuts. And I think a player this year that's really had a breakout year is Hemas. Of course, he's always been good, but this year he really could be an MVP. Moving on to APAC region, we have two Vietnam teams, the Bears Esports and Genius Esports. This time in recent PVS, there was an upset that Severs Esports haven't won their regional series. Yeah, it's really surprising, but Genius Esports has Chloris, who's been out of his mind. Like, just period, one of the best players in the world, potentially right now. Uh, you know, we talked about Hemas earlier as a potential MVP, but Chloris, who knows? I mean, with the way he's been playing, he put up crazy good numbers during PVS. Even though Severus Esports missed their win on recent PVS, still, Severus Esports is the best Vietnamese team who have shown their performance in the global level. Yeah, exactly. Their their quality, their consistency is without a doubt. Now, a lot of people considering this an S-class tier team, you gotta suspect that these guys are gonna make a run. Next is Thailand, which have one more seed as a host country seed, so they have three teams. There was also an upset in recent PUBG Thailand Series 2. The Ten Five have won, and that was the only way that T5 could earn the ticket, but they did. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of teams are gonna remember T5 because they really embraced the emergency pickup so effectively so many times throughout all these different events. Yeah, they maybe don't have the fragging power of some other teams, but that's okay because they play really intelligently. Um, What about day trade gaming? They were the powerhouse, and I think this team is still the powerhouse of Thailand. Yeah, it seems like they're in a little bit of a slump right now. That's okay though. I think they can turn it around. We know they can. I'm worried they're kind of going back to that old day trade that played a little bit too safe. Uh, compared to what they're truly capable of with players like Nerds and Flash. So next is Purple Mood Esports. There are some of the familiar names here. Uh, Tanawat, I, I really like this guy a lot. He's been around since basically day one of PUBG Esports. A veteran player, a smart player, so I'm really excited for Purple Mood. And we have one each from PCR and Japan and Chinese Taipei. 
Yeah, so I think from Chinese Taipei, PMA, we don't know much about them. They're brand new. With XO, they played pretty good in the beginning of PGS1, but kind of fell off. So I'm curious to see if they can bounce back. And for E36, you know, some familiar names here. I think a lot of fans are going to be excited to see Star-Lord back. Great player back in the day. Let's see how they perform in PGC 2023. So next is Asia with the most seeds, 10 teams. So we have six teams from China and four teams from Korea. So let's start with the Chinese teams. Tianba Esports have ranked first in their PGC points. So yeah, Tianba continues to play really, really well on the back of really good shot calling by Lin Shu. The guy has been taking tons of good teams to various international tournaments. They're going to be in the hunt, I feel like. Um, second place was 4 a.m. for Angry Men. They have won the PCL Spring, but they didn't perform well in PCL Summer. Yeah, kind of surprising with ZP on and HS coming from New Happy over to this team. I think expectations are higher than what they showed. I think they could still do really well, maybe just taking some time to adjust to the new roster. So it's New Happy again, the winning team of PGC 2021. Yeah, I mean, you still have Ming Ming. He's still performing at a very high level, so this team could pop off. You never know. And then we have Petrichor Road again. Aix Left continues to be a superstar, as we expect. They got third in PCL Summer. Chewy coming on to this team now, looking really strong as well. These guys, who knows? They can pop off at any given moment. Next is Tai Lu. Tai Lu didn't perform in PGS1, but they did show us some impressive plays in PGS2. I really am hopeful for this team because they have Shen, who has shown himself to be one of the most explosive players we have in the world right now. Let's see if they can build some momentum here and have a good result at PGC. So last is Sheng Yi Long. The same as new team, but the names are quite familiar. Yeah, there's some players on here you guys are going to recognize. BL is Bo Liang from Infantry. Um, MML is Tian Tian from Tianba Days. So a really good team came through up through kind of the lower tier system to qualify into the PCL and made their way all the way here to PGC. What a story for this team. Next, we have four Korean teams. Let's start with Gen G. Um, the PO came back to Gen G with their old Big Open members, and they have changed roster recently. That Esther is coming back to play in PGC. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting move. Esther is a player that has a lot of history with PO. In that way, there could still be some potential for the squad. And Diplaskia, they haven't been playing global events for so long, and finally they came back. I think fans should also be excited about V7. You've got Heaven there. They got seventh at PGS1. They're a really strong team. And Asa Pentagram, all familiar names from global events, always fun teams to watch for. So let's see how these teams compete in PGC 2023. Next up is EME region. We have six teams in this region. The shocking news is that defending champion Na'Vi didn't make it to PGC 2023. Yeah, it is really surprising to be honest. I thought this was a team that, even with Uba moving off of the roster, still should have the potential to get there, but they just came up short. Let's start with Foot Esports. I'm really excited about this team. The firepower on this team is absolutely insane. I mean, you got T-Bone and Vard from the UK, Beamy played on Team Denmark, and you got AT coming over from FaZe Clan absolutely could make waves at this tournament. Next, we have FaZe Clan. They have managed to come to the PGC 2023, but they haven't shown a good performance in the global level in PGS 1 and 2. Yeah, that's okay though, I think. I think they were just trying to get this roster playing better together. They got second at PEC. It seems like this is now kind of what they expected out of these players when they put them together. FaZe, absolutely on my radar for a team that'll make the grand finals. Next is Ascend. They have placed second in PGS1, but they didn't make it to PGS2. I think this is a good team. They have one of the most unique play styles in the world. So this is a team that I think fans are going to really enjoy watching. Yeah, Ascend tend to play in the edge, but on the other hand, the next team, Howl, tend to play in the center. And this team is the only team with the Turkish player right now. Yeah, they had moments in PGS1 where they looked really strong, but they got caught fighting for some drop spots and stuff like that. I think this is a team that if they can have some consistency, could have really good results at PGC 2023. So next question mark, this team is a team that showed a good performance in last PGC 2022, but in the first half of 23, didn't perform that well. You know, has a lot of history with some of these players, particularly a doozy, he's been around for a long time. Best of luck coming in here, performing even better than uh, I think a lot of people maybe expected. This is a great team to watch out for. Last but not least is Exult. 
with Wuba coming in. They almost did not make it to the PGC 2023, but based on their performance in the early first half of 2023, and based on all the unexpected situation happened in PGC fall, they barely managed to secure that last ticket to PGC 2023. I mean, with Uba on there, you have to consider them a threat just because of his experience you know he's been there done that he's going to be able to help these players if maybe uh, they're a little bit nervous or something like that so you have to at least consider them uh, as a potential grand finalist so uba being an only player from the defending champion team let's see how he perform in his new team Last but not least is america's region with four teams coming up from pgc points first is space station gaming the roster is not exactly same but this team is that team from PGC 2021 who had made that wicked ending from the Paul and the Miramar. I really like this team. I mean I think Paige and Pixel are really good additions. They fit in well with Roth and Sharpshot. Sharpshot still a crazy fragger. This is a really good team. They could make a splash. Next is Luminosity Gaming. Switching members Mine came in and Kickstarter left. This team was always the strong team coming up in the global level but haven't performed well this year. Yeah, it seems like they had a little bit of a struggle. Now with Mime on the squad, they're really hyped about him. They really think he brings a much needed balance to this roster. So I'm really curious to see if they can have better results. And it's really interesting to see that two teams are from South American region, um, Legacy and Team Falcon. Yeah, so these are really, really good players who've been playing at various international events. They got third in PAS, so they're looking really strong right now. And then also there's the Falcons, which is Silzen's team. This guy just consistently seems to make almost every international event there is. I really like this Falcon squad. They got eighth at PGS2. I think they can do really well again. So these 32 finest teams from all over the world will be competing in PGC 2023 starting from the group stage. And the group is divided into two groups based on their seats. How do you think of the group? Yeah, as usual, both are really stacked groups. It's tough to say which one is kind of heavier than the other, although I'm leaning towards Group A, seeing Cerberus versus Genius. I think Cerberus has a bit more potential at the international level, but still really, really difficult group no matter which one you're in. So we've looked through all the 32 teams, and before moving on to the closing part, I want to talk about some fun facts about PG 2023. Do you know the age gap between the youngest player and the oldest player? No idea. <laughs> well, it's Pew Chills from Day Trade Gaming was born in 1993. Oh. The youngest player, Ventus from Deepus Gia, and Hatsawa from Theratone 5 was born in 2005. Okay then, so on like an individual team, what's the largest age gap there is? Um, actually there are two teams. First is Theratone 5, um, the youngest player, Hatsawa, and the oldest player, Rosetta Juniors, age gap is 10 years and also PMA has the 10 year age difference too between Kip and Tian. And in terms of the average age, the Gen G had a highest average age in PG 2023 and the youngest average age was Seberzy Sports from Vietnam. Oh, that's really interesting. I mean, yeah, Gen G, they've been around for a while. I guess they would be the boomer team, but then uh, Cerberus, yeah, that explains their insane mechanical skills with how young they are, makes sense. Pick'em Challenge is back for PGC 2023. The PGC 2023 special skins are out in in-game store, so please check out. Purchase the item and get the voting coupon. Pick the winner, the pick the teams that you cheer for, and if you get it right, you can get EPs to buy another special skins in eSports tab. Pick'em Challenge closes before the grand final starts, so make sure you use your voting coupon before it's expired. And also the PUBG Fantasy League is happening once again. You can participate in our Fantasy League on twire.gg. Runs the entire length of the event. You get $100,000 in fantasy money to spend. You get to pick four players who you think are gonna perform the best. You get points based on things like damage dealt, getting wins, getting kills, all of those things add to your total point pool. Now, the best part about PGC for this year is we are giving you guys more prizes you can get G-Coins and in-game items if you do really well in the Fantasy League uh, compared to the rest of the world. So anybody can participate, you really should get in on it. And starting from PGC 2023, 
our fans can watch individual team feeds in the pubgesports.com. So don't forget to watch live streaming in pubgesports.com. And here's our pick for PGC 2023 Pick'em Challenge. We've also prepared the PGC 2023 merchandise that you can buy on in the online store. We have the PGC 2023 themed keyrings, the long mouse pads and the small one too, and the cute little Velcro patch, and also the PGC 2023 t-shirts in the blue color, and also the black sweatshirts with PGC 2023 decoration on. You can buy all of these on the online PUBG Esports merchandise shop, so don't forget to check out, and you can check the details in the pubgesports.com too. We've been talking about A to Z of PUBG Global Championship 2023 participating teams to all the actions that we'll be providing. How was it? Oh, it's great. I can't wait to be back in Thailand. Great teams, great country for PUBG Esports. I'm really looking forward to it. So PUBG Global Championship 2023 will take place in Bangkok, Thailand, as you said, from November 18th to December 3rd. PGC 2023 is open to fans, so please visit pubgsports.com for the detailed information about the tickets and make sure to follow up all the PUBG Sports actions on site and online. Hope to see you all in Bangkok. Bye bye! <laughs>《ソムレスペクト》Are you challenging me? <laughs> A tough nut to crack. Now, shall we fight? My turn. All right, here we go. Trust my shield. Fire away. Gotta try harder, huh? <laughs>
and King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Hanuman's forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their car. With my magic, the night will turn. Enemies beware. My era is coming for you. มันไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทำแค่ตั้งใจและสนุกกับมันเท่าแก่น้อยตอบโจทย์ทุกไลฟ์สไตล์แบรนด์สาหร่ายยอดขายอันดับหนึ่งถ้าสาหร่ายต้องเท่าแก่น้อย
Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world. Welcome to the PUBG Global Championship 2023. 32 teams of the best players around the world have come to Bangkok to take their shot at hoisting the trophy at the end of three weeks. All we know is only one team will survive. Will it be a new team that joins the pantheon of PUBG, or will a previous champion solidify their dynasty by winning another victory? What I do know is that the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, and that step is the Group A qualifier. My name is Toppies, I'm joined by Avenger. We have the pleasure of spending this event with you, just like we have the pleasure in sitting in the Onda seat, which is the official gaming chair partner, the chair that elevates the gaming experience with ultimate comfort and exceptional performance. Choose Onda seat, choose the seat of victors. We're also sponsored by the King Power Group, leader in the travel retail industry. King Power, the power of possibilities. Loga Pro Esports Grade Gaming Gear with a unique design. As a world leading gaming brand, MSI stands out as the most trusted brand in gaming and esports. MSI is the official gaming partner of the PUBG Global Championships 2023, providing PC hardware, monitors, and laptops as the designated hardware provider for this event. Talganoi, live deliciously. And number one, fast and reliable fiber internet makes sure you stay connected when it matters most. Now what matters most is that we finally made it here. It is PGC 2023. Martin, I am excited. I am super excited. We have 128 players here in hot and humid Thailand, Bangkok. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, it's nice, it's warm. Oh, come yeah. from the, some of the colder regions, so it's good to be here, of course. Yeah, Happy to be here. The players don't have to warm up. No. They're, get, they're getting that just walking across the street to get over here. Exactly. It's a beautiful facility. We, the players are literally staying across the street. It's going to be a lot of fun. But this is going to be great because we have teams from around the world, including hometown heroes, that I think a lot of the crowd is excited for. Yeah, super exciting. Of course, you see crowd in the background, and that's going to be exciting to see. We remember, of course, Nations Cup mm -hmm. in Bangkok last year. Once we had, you know, Thailand win games, the yeah. crowd exploded, and I'm super excited to see that again. We have they have more teams this time around that they can see on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we do. We have that Group A starts here today. We'll walk you through what groups are playing because tomorrow we do switch that out. Group B will be showing up and having their chance, and then obviously we'll switch back. It is going to be an interesting journey. We've changed it up a little bit. We're not going to see the Grand Survival this year, which I think a lot of players are probably on board with. Uh, so it's going to be sort of get that top eight and make your chance to advance. Yeah, for sure. You have to play as, as good as you can here in, in the group stage, and it starts with that. And as we're going to see here, Hugely important to be able to get out on the top here. And the schedule as you see here at top is we're playing group stage. We're playing AB, AB. So you're going to play one day. You're going to have a bit of a break. You can go analyze. You can go break yep. things down. Then you come back after B has played their first. And then we're going to see things through like that. Absolutely. Then we go loser's bracket, winner's bracket, the last chance qualifier, and then a nice little break for everyone to get their heads right yeah. before we go to the grand finals. Beautiful. At which point we will crown the ultimate champion. And this is a very big deal. There's no back-to-back -back possibility of a defending nope. champion this year, which means the door is wide open for any team to step up and solidify their legacy, which I think we're very excited about. Now let's look at the format. Yeah. Group stages, top eight from each group will advance to the winner's bracket. The loser's bracket will be the bottom eight, where the la bottom eight from that one will be eliminated and, uh, and sent home. Yeah, and sent home. Or That's potentially the sent home. Yeah. Absolutely. And then those who are in the top eight there will advance to the last chance with the bottom eight from the winner's bracket to try to earn their spot back in the grand final. Though remember, without that uh, it's sort of grand survival, eight teams from last chance still have a chance to make a move. Yeah, a lovely double elimination that way. Of course, here the OV in general, you see Group A and Group B on your screens. And again, you go straight from the group stage into yeah. the loser bracket. And if you don't make it after those two days, if you're a bottom eight, you are done. Yeah. You you don't have winner's bracket, you don't have last chance, you're going to get sent straight home. We're going to be starting with the wrangle, we're going straight into Vikendi and then Teiko and Miramar, so we can end things on the wrangle like yeah. we usually do once we get to day two on both Group A and Group B. Let's take a look at what they're playing for. It's the prize pool. $600,000 for first. That could go up. We'll find out as time goes on. I love the idea that we're also giving $10,000 to the MVP. Yeah, for sure. And it's more than hundreds of thousands of dollars Ooh. already added to the crowd. And of course, yep. as well, 25% goes to that too. So super excited, of course, always here at PGC. We're adding huge crowdfunded extra pool to that. Participating teams here, Toppies, there's a lot of Asia, Asia Pacific here representing. There is, and so you're gonna see the teams from different regions. You're also gonna see that little PGS box on the bottom right. Those are the teams that earned their way here through just raw performance at internationals, earning those PGS points uh, to get here. Participating teams, this is who's playing today, Martin. Yeah, for sure. I'm super excited to see here. Some call it the, the 
group of death. I think it is. I think it's a hard group. But yeah, it's, uh, it really comes down to like kind of what meshes in and what True. teams kind of gets pushed off the loot spot, right? So let's see how things come up. I talked to the Sonic boys, they were like, how do you think things are going to start? And I'm like, I think it's going to be very, very open in the middle. It's going to be very edge heavy. We're going to see a lot of teams fight on the edge. Let's take a look at the top earnings. Now remember, this is based the legacies. on the legacies, right? It may not be the same roster historically. They do change, but these brands have shown up, put up, and know how to build good rosters. Gen G, by far and away, though, really sort of setting themselves apart from the rest. Now, here's something that I love. This is the first time appearance for these folks at PGC. They have some players who've been here before. Yeah, well, sure. But it's going to be the first time that we've seen those logos on stage. We have some legendary players Absolutely. on some of these teams. Here's Silson on Falcons, of course. We have Uber on Exalt. Yeah. We have some really big names in that. We're going to be throwing through that once you get things here. Media Day was fun. Yeah. We had them sent all over Bangkok. We saw a lot of pictures and fun videos being taken here, and we're going to be showing you that through these next 13 days of play. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think that that's where, as we kind of look at them getting ready, there is a lot, a tall order for some of these new face teams. Yes, some of the players have been here before, but they are also doing with rosters that maybe haven't. And this right. is a tough experience for players who have not been to a PGC before. I mean, this is stressful. It's the highest calling of any PUBG player. It is. And, but I got to say still, that kind of experience, having been online, having been mm -hmm. on an international stage, or even a PGC before, that kind of comfort level that you're going to be able to bring and the kind of calmness that you're going to be able to bring to your team is going to have a huge impact. Because you're going to have your youngest players yeah. or some of the more inexperienced players, they're going to be looking at your the, the leaders, the more experienced guys, and they're going to be like, okay, he's, he's calm. So should I be. You mentioned experience. Guys, let's talk about experience teams, power rankings. This is uh, coming out straight from Twire. They got Donowa ranked at number one, 92.3. Twisted Minds right behind him at that 91.1. Yeah. What do you think of that ranking? I think in general, what we're looking at that, the, the top four here, you could say some of most of the, yeah. if you look at in kind of in the community, a lot of these teams here, they are in, in people's favorites in terms of who could be winning PGC this year. Absolutely, and we also see the top players there, the big four. We saw him ass up there. I love to see the fact that Cerberus, who I think is really coming to their own over the last right. year or so, has just been growing and getting better and better and better. Yeah, there is no denying we're going to have our eyes peeled and looked at on for here for Tycon and for him as it's two fantastic players, and we've seen them throughout the last year what they're capable of, and that could also be, this could be their tournament, to be honest. They could be stepping up. And of course, the Fantasy League here, uh, two points for kills. And uh, 100 damage gives you one point as well. If you survive and don't get flushed with your team here, five points. And if you captain one of your players top, it's just 30% extra Woo! points. So if you're able to find one of those kind of top five players and captain him as well, it's going to be a huge thing here. Most big players, though, yeah. toughies. Let's see what everybody's doing. This is what you guys at home and the rest of us are involved with. And, you know, maybe you, if you're watching this now and you're rushing to get those last picks in, pick someone who's not on this list because yeah. everyone else is getting those points. The mass not surprising. His, his price was right for the amount of damage this guy does. Kickstarter. It's a little curious to me, but let's take a look at the talents picks. This is what I want to see. These yeah. are our casters. What do you like about what they got? I think there's a lot of kind of known pick here. You have your yeah. Shens, you have your Tycons, you have your Pow Pow and Page kind yeah. of going through because they are cheap. They're cheap. They are super cheap. Sururikos so coming in from Danawa. We have Soul on Porosaurus team. And yeah, I think there's a lot of kind of known performers here yeah. that are on these teams. So it's uh, it's kind of expected. You though. I, well, I went Pow Pow. I went Paige, just like everybody else. Yep. The prices are right. They'll let you get the big hitters. I got him, S, and Shrimsy. I think Sonic's got all their drop spots. They'll do well today. Yep. You did things a little bit differently, though. I, th I thought Kickstarter was too cheap. Him is too yep. good. And I'm like, okay, Kurexi did extremely well for himself. Again, heaven, PGS1 performance was just through the roof. Through so the I'm roof, hoping true. he can kind of replicate that again for this international tournament here. Uh, let's take a look at the Pick'em Challenge. These are the teams that you guys have selected on the client to win this event. 17, 57.7%. Feels like maybe we just got <laughs> some fans putting votes in. I mean, this fan vote is Ain't in the esports tab inside the game, of course. 57% is super high. Yeah. Gen G coming in, that's. A little, I feel like that's a little bit screwed in terms of 16%. We are starting with a wrangle, as you said, yep. so we can end on a wrangle as yep. well once we get to day two of Group A, which is not tomorrow, it's the day after tomorrow they're yep. going to be taking off. We're also going to have Vikendi and Tego in the middle. Yep. Pretty exciting to me, but still, it's only four after 12 games. New maps, a wrangle, the new a wrangle, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's that patch where we've had a bunch of changes coming in, so we'll kind of get to see, uh, I guess, the last hurrah of the AUG, perhaps, before sure. we see that nerf come through. We're definitely um, going to see and that. And the Dragon off that's been great. Now, you guys 
are probably want to get your hands on some G coin at this event. I know you do. So open that client because after in match one, we will be giving a redemption code after the first blood for 400 G coin. During match five, there'll be a code after the first team is eliminated. And that's anywhere from 400, 800 to 5,000 G coin available. So you want to get that client open. You want to be able to type it in when it comes up. In fact, open it right now because we are going to have a code for you to get a voting coupon right there on the bottom of your screen so you can let us know who you think is going to win martin let's just let me just ask you what do you yeah, think yeah i gotta say hold on to that voting coupon okay. because we know that you can vote all the way until we know the 16 teams that's going to the grand final so wait until the 30th you'll you'll know the 16 teams going there you're going to have a higher chance there you we're going to have 16 teams eliminated at that point do you want to give a tip who, who do you think they should vote for if you got one voting coupon who do you put it on uh i gotta say i feel like it's a swiss is mine tournament it They've been together be. for so long. They've been, long. They've been the they've been the bridesmaid oh for, for too long, right? They've been so, the bridesmaid. Yeah. They've been the maid of honor. I mean, literally everything they could possibly be, and it's so shocking they haven't. Here's the weather update for the Rondo area. Rondo region schedules to ensure your travel plans. Okay, Rondo region schedules to ensure your travel plans. Stand your ground. Why did you come to Rondo? For revenge, for honor, for survival. So I did it! Oh, hey! So สวัสดีค่ะหน้าตาจะดูอิมพอร์ตนะคะแต่คนไทยนะคะขออนุญาตต้อนรับทุกท่านเอาคอสเสียงชาวไทยหน่อยเลยเลิศมากพวกคุณเป็นคนเลิศนะคะต้องบอกว่าตอนนี้เราอยู่กันที่สนามกรุงเทพมหานครนะคะซึ่งสำหรับในวันนี้ค่ะกับสถานที่การจัดการแข่งขันชิงแชมป์โลกกับ PUBG Global Championship 2023สุดยอดมากซึ่งแน่นอนนะคะสำหรับการแข่งขันในครั้งนี้นะคะสำหรับใครค่ะที่วันนี้ตั้งหน้าตั้งตารออยากจะมาเชียร์ทีมของเราแล้วก็อยากจะให้ทุกท่านนะคะอยู่กับเราจนจบตั้งแต่วันนี้ไปจนถึงวันที่3ธันวาคมกันเลยทีเดียวนั่นเองค่ะต้องบอกว่าการแข่งขันนี้เราจะได้พบกับสุดยอดทีมชั้นนําระดับโลกที่ในวันนี้เนี่ยมาอยู่กันที่นี่แล้วนะคะจำนวนกว่า32ทีมเพื่อที่จะมาชิงกันว่าใครจะเป็นทีมเพียงหนึ่งเดียวค่ะที่จะได้อยู่นัดจุดสูงสุดของการแข่งขัน e-sport กับเกมพับจีในครั้งนี้นั่นเองและที่สำคัญจะมาพร้อมกับการแข่งขันอย่างดุเดือดเผ็ดมันที่จะมาชิงเงินรางวัลรวมมูลค่ากว่า2ล้านดอลลาร์หรือว่า70ล้านบาทกันเลยทีเดียวโอ้ my god ชวันนี้แต่ทั้งนี้นะคะทุกคนชาวกรุงเทพมหานครเราสามารถร่วมกันสร้างตำนานได้ค่ะเราสามารถทำให้ยอดเงินรางวัลรวมนี้มีมูลค่าสูงขึ้นได้เพียงแค่คุณนะคะร่วมกันไปอุดหนุนแล้วก็สนับสนุนนะคะกับ PGC Skin ในร้านค้าของเกมนั่นเองก็สามารถที่จะร่วมสนับสนุนตรงนี้กันได้และที่สาคัญค่ะสาหรับแต่ละทีมนะคะทิมหมายตากับถ้วยรางวัลของการเป็นแชมป์คุณจะต้องผ่านการแข่งขันนะคะถึง5 stage ด้วยกันทุกท่านน่าจะทราบกันเป็นอย่างดีไม่ว่าจะเป็น group stage winner bracket loser bracket last chance หรือว่าจะเป็น grand finals นะคะนานาย้ายทุกท่านมาร่วมลุ้นกันค่ะแล้วก็ที่สำคัญนะคะร่วมส่งกำลังใจให้กับผู้เข้าแข่งขันก็ได้ตอนนี้ถึงเวลากันแล้วที่ทุกคนรอคอยกับการแข่งขัน PUBG Global Championship 2020 so let's start the game game on let's go
Spectrum, they made a hell of a round. Buzzface, eight kills. Uba, six kills. AC, these guys stepped up and played with me. Victory in Riyadh is an exciting and joyful memory. My team is a band of brothers. Win or lose, we're going to stick together and still make some fun memories. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. If we have a new one, we'll be able to win. We want to play a game with you, and we'll be able to play a game. điều muốn tôi thích nhất là tất nhiên là giao tranh rồi tôi cũng thấy bị giao tranh với các đội khác rất thú vị xin đi thủ xin sơ lược tôi muốn xem xem chiến sĩ bảo đã chuẩn bị hết tất cả mọi người nói chúng ta sẽ win chúng ta sẽ được cái trophy chúng ta là đội tuyển nhưng mà trên thực tế chúng ta là đội tuyển chúng ta sẽ chiến thắng nhưng mà trên thực tế chúng ta là PGC is the biggest event of the year. I'm confident right now because the team feels fantastic. In the Gung Tep, the team that is the best in the Thai, we are T5. It means that the team that we are the strongest is the best. Navi last year, this year is going to be Face Clan. That's true. Face Clan, baby. We'll see. We will see. I still remember the last PGC. We let Navi take the champion. But it was not long after that. We're not the best in the last tournaments. We still didn't deserve to win. Hope I'm gonna change it this tournament. So many teams are trying their best to win the trophy. I hope they don't sweat for what is not theirs. 
过去并不重要，重要的是现在。此刻是朋友们的时间。PG 씨초대우승팀이누구였는지다시한번생각나게해드리고。You really think you can win this thing? Because it won't be easy. PUBG fans, here we are, coming to you live right now, all the way over in Bangkok, Thailand. This is Matchup, joined by Paper Thin. We're going to be taking you through the first set of games over here as we are about to kick off our first match of PGC. So exciting to be here. Everything that we have seen in 2023 in PUBG Esports leads up to this moment. All of these teams across all of their regions, across all the fantastic international events we have had so far, comes down to this, Matt. Dude, I'm just hype off of what we just saw. That, like, that whole video pack package was just amazing. I We got like the teaser online, but that was like the first time that we had seen it. Well, at least the first time I'd seen it. Had you I hadn't seen, seen it? it. No, okay. no, no. Like that was like top tier, dude. I so love good. that video. Well, and think about this. Like, I mean, the only player to ever make every single international from PGI all the way to now, Uba. The only player to ever do it. Not only that, he's got multiple titles underneath his belt. He has been the MVP of his teams for basically every one of those runs. Undisputed best player in the world ever so far in PUBG Esports. But here's the thing, man. It's there is so much that's at this event right now. I mean, I know a lot of talk is going around Twisted Minds. But let's not forget, we got squads like Danawa. Yes. Danawa has been a powerhouse this year. Exactly. And we may have who is the current best player in the world right now, Soul, on that team. Absolutely fragging out of his mind throughout the entirety of this year. Now, an interesting thing to note, uh, some of you who may not have been keeping close tabs uh, on the PWS this year, actually, most of the IGLing has shifted over to Anonyx now freeing up Soul to be more of that kind of fragger uh, that we know him to be. And the other cool thing about that, that team right now is Loki is fragging out of his mind as well. So I want to talk about them more later, but we'll, we'll we got a lot to, we'll to go through. That. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I, I mean, can talk about that team for days. <laughs> talk about what happened to PGS2 sure. and the fact that Sonics are on a tear coming yeah, into this it. Is I you. Mean, th you, this is you. You do this. Okay. <laughs> now, I know everybody's like, okay, there is an asterisk. Yes, they have had some roster swaps gone in with sure. it. But I mean, even then, whenever we look at what's going on in the drama between that and now LG with now Mime making the shift over there, we've got Kickstart make the shift back over on the Sonics. There is a lot that we're going to be looking at moving into it. And those are just like three of the top teams. And you saw, we already got a great group A that the analyst desk was talking about is essentially a group of death. Insane group. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Sonics are nuts in this group. Uh, Donawa is nuts. Cerberus is nuts. If phase is really good as well. I mean, there's so many good teams in this group, but it's hard to go through the entirety of it because there's 16 in here, and almost all of them are really well. All of them are really, really good. This they was, got here anyway. This was really hard to make a fantasy like roster for because every single time I was picking somebody, I was like, but you know, this other guy could pop off because it's right. like this. This group is going to be an absolute feast. I love the fact that this is how we're kicking off day number one for PGC. But it also means the fact that that's going to be such a pressure point for all of these squads having to deal with today as whenever we're looking at moving through the group stage, yes, okay, it is spread across a couple of days, but we're looking at the best of the best of PUBG in the world now, all in, under one roof. One or two bad games could really make it a lot worse for you. Have to start looking at the loser's bracket and fighting your way back up from that, which isn't always the worst thing because, you know, coming in with a hot hand, not always the worst thing, but it's not where you want to be. No, exactly. You want to be top eight here, right? Because that's what's going to get you onto the next phase without having to go directly to that loser's bracket. So that's what really you should be focusing on here, you know, as a team and as a fan. You want the team that you're rooting for here to be top yeah. eight. That's really all they need to do. Uh, so that, that kind of cutoff line just is going to... Yeah, top eight. that's easy, right? Uh, just top half. But, like... That's where you got to be focused here. Uh, so everybody's going to be looking at that line. Yes, we want to see teams perform really well. Love to see a team come in here, just dominate, smash, you know, kind of like what we saw at Navi last year in 2022, just right out the gate, just won the whole thing from start to finish. Can that happen again? I don't know. That run was absolutely magical. Man, I, I don't know. I'm I'm in for a treat, though. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Mm. No matter how this is going to go, whoever your favorite is, you know you're going to see some star power moments coming out from them. And I do want to remind you, yes, we do also have the code that are going to be going out throughout the entirety of the day. Heck yeah. So first blood. So we, as we move into game number one, whenever the first player dies, we're also going to have a code that's going to pop up down at the bottom. We will try to help you guys out with it, but if there's a lot of action, I'm sorry. Make sure you have your eyes open. You're looking down there and you're set and ready to pop it in. Just make sure you have the game open, set and to type it all in. 
But also, as we're bouncing around everywhere, let's not forget the fact that, yes, we have heard you guys. We know sometimes you like to focus in on a couple of teams. And so with this, on top of having the map stream, on top of having this feed, on top of having all the international feeds, we also, if you go over to PUBGesports.com, can watch six different teams right now and just watch their perspective all the way through. And I love the fact that we're bringing that feature in. No, that is so cool. That is something that we have really wanted to see for a while. And now we get it. So now if you have some of your favorite teams who are fortunate mm -hmm. enough to be one of those six teams that's selected, Get on over to PUBGesports.com, check it out. Or if you just want to see what they're doing, maybe it's a team that yeah. might be kind of bumping heads with your favorite team as well. Just see what they're thinking, see how they're playing. Get involved in the action a little bit deeper. Uh, you know, it, you know, if you've got multiple monitors, you can put one of the map feeds up, you can put us up, you can put them up, mm -hmm. put the map on your phone or something. Lots of options to really get yourself engrossed in PUBG Esports. Yeah, that's even, not even counting fantasy, dude. I mean, yeah, and then there's fantasy. there is so much going on. I love the evolution of how we just keep continually growing as an esport. I'm just excited going into this one. I, I mean, sure, yes, we do have the new modified Aaron Guild. That's what everybody needs to be aware of coming into it. Uh, it's kind of the, I, I don't want to say the swan song for the AUG because I'm still in the AUG, but let's be honest, it is going to be shifted out. We're on the previous patch before, I believe, what's live now at the time. So it's still going to be the more powerful version of it than what you go hop inside the lobby of. But we are also still kind of pre dragon off as well. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. I mean, even with the nerfs, actually, it was funny. I was talking to some of the players, and uh, they were like, you know, we don't really notice the AUG nerfs. Like, they're so yeah. good. They're just yeah. like, we don't really notice it too much. I was like, that's interesting. I mean, they're so good. But the Dragon off really, really fun. Uh, you know, teams kind of experimenting with how their loadouts are built because some teams feel like, because the Dragon Off isn't as good outside of like 100 meters, because that bullet velocity is so low, because the damage drop off is so high, that it's not really worth having more than maybe one, maybe two on your team at a time. Most players still sticking to that Mini 14 Mark 12 uh, high bullet velocity uh, kind of DMR style. Well, I mean, the DMRs still have a lot of benefit inside of just flushing out kills, doing a lot. Yes, yes, there's snipe. I, I, I'm a fan of the Bolties too, just because it just feels so freaking good when well, you hit the headshot. We've got Corexi here, so we might see a little. True, true. Okay. Um, but whenever we're looking at it, it's just for more mechanical siding. If you, like somebody gets a spray at range with like an assault rifle, then they can put a couple of taps in there. And you can probably see, yes, guys, I know you want us to start the game. I want to start the game too. But players are presently still filling in, making sure everything is set, prepped. We want to make sure that we're kicking off everything as clean as possible for game number one. Because, I mean, you got to put the best foot forward. Yeah, right? and they were just out on stage, so give them a break. Yeah, like I They, mean, they had to come out and do a little show Like, there. Did you not see, like, we had poor Uba that had to animate himself and do all of those things yeah. and then come... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Uba there, he's really uh, hes really doing the heavy lifting for that one. That was, was incredible. I mean, what a, what a cool moment for him, though. Well-deserved. Uh, absolutely, again, the best I, we've had so far. I loved how you could see he was like, I'm not I'm not going to be emotional about this afterwards. He was like, I'm going to hold it together in true Uba form. But yeah. I, that, there was a crack there. I saw. I saw the emotion creeping it's, through. It's, it's got to be a powerful moment for him. I mean, yeah. the culmination of an incredible career, you know, ever since, again, back to 2018, you know, even probably before that, the guy has been absolutely insane since he stepped onto the international stage. Uh, so, look, he's he's going to maybe continue that here. We don't know. With Exalt, it's a lot of big question marks. We're going to see them today uh, with him for the first time. You know, again, kind of some interesting things happening there. A little bit of fortuitous, uh, like, dice rolling their way, I guess I'll say, for Exalt. Yeah. Uh, and so it is what it is. So they're here. They're playing. They've got Uba. Who knows? Uh, the sky's the limit. You know, this team could could do a lot. He, he tends to elevate the level of whatever team he's on. I mean, we've seen him across multiple teams bring them to new heights. Uh, it, whenever he decides to turn it on, man, it, that's really, well, that's the problem is we're looking at so many good players that at any given time have that capability inside of here. Like, I know that there has been a lot of conversation around, like you were just mentioning a second ago with Soul, right? Sure. Uh, Soul had like these big, huge moments previously, then had to kind of pull it back and be kind of more of the guy in charge, but now starting to be kind of let loose back on everything that's going to be going on. And I just, the star power inside of this lobby right now. I get this is this is the final. This is just a group stage. It's, it's nuts. Bonkers, Matt. I mean, like I'm just like going down this list. Some teams that I didn't get to talk about because there's so many good ones in here. Petrocore Road, three-time PCS yep. winners. Axelet still 
leading that team. I mean, Donawa, look, I could talk about these guys all day, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna wait a little bit. Dude, Ty Lu, Shen. Shen, Shen is out of his mm. mind. Mm. They are an incredible team. They're a safe team. They're an edge team, uh, but they're really smart. Phase is even better, maybe, than we've seen them for the last couple of years. This Phase clan looking really strong, switching over to Jeans, calling the shots now for Phase instead of Gustav. Seems to have opened up Gustav, similar to kind of with Donawa with with Soul. Gustav now opening up the fragging, being their big heavy hitter, even more than Fex in some ways recently. And so that's really cool. And yeah, these guys, dude, I am I am a huge Shen fan, have been for quite some time since I saw him on SGD back in the PWS years ago. The guy is out of his mind, talented individual. Just so clean whenever we see him in some of these firefights. I mean, we've got Sonics, of course, that we were talking about just a second ago. Uh, let's not even forget as we're moving through this, we've got like Therathon 5 that's inside this lobby. We didn't even get a chance to talk about that. That's a historic roster in and of itself and when it has the capability to bring out. SSG hiding out inside of all of this, just coming <laughs> off of a good qualifier to make the way through this, kind of beating out LG as well as Sonics to just yeah. prove the fact that they deserve it. And yes, guys, you might be like, SSG, friendly fire, don't worry. That's, a, that's how we do things. You win something in America, you get signed, and then hopefully managed to hold it for long enough. Hey, yeah, I mean, look, they earned it, right? They played great yeah. in BAS, so I'm really excited for them. Uh, I, I was really impressed by the way that they were able to kind of put it all together with Pixel and Paige. You know, they said they needed to bring in Paige for that firepower, and then Roth, and that kind of enabled Roth and Sharpshot to step up as well. So I was really, really impressed with the way they handled themselves. And of course, yeah, the day trade. This is that's why the fans are going nuts. Yeah, I mean, we've got we got a couple of biases going on in the audience. That's okay. Everybody's allowed to have some bias. It's allowed. Out. This this is an absolutely stacked venue. There is I don't even see that like I can see like maybe three seats that are available. This is just inside the venue itself. On the outside of it, there's still external seating for people that are watching on screens on the outside of everything. In addition to like all of the activities that we've got going on, this is just full on house full of love for PUBG, and I love to see it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's really awesome. Like, the setup we have here, the fan support, I mean, basically every day, if not every day, I believe, is completely sold out. So we're getting a little bit of a, a group huddle here, some some hype here. Petrogor Road internationally hasn't fared well since the PCS era, uh, so really keen to see if they can start bouncing back. They didn't play that great in the PCL, to be frank, either. I think they got fifth or sixth or something uh, in PCL summer, so it still isn't quite, you know, that 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 Petrico Road that was so explosive that, that Aches left when he came on and seen and everybody's jaws were just on the ground. Yeah, I mean, Petrico Road for lack of, oh, sorry, it's just a bad joke, has not <laughs> necessarily had the best international, and they haven't been able to find, like, that road to success. And it's... It's something you want, right? We've seen the fact that they have like these really big moments, but then it's just so dry after that, where they can just get near on nothing. You, like, so they have a phenomenal game. The curve just goes back and forth on their average points per game. So radical. They can struggle a little bit, I, I feel like, with coordination and communication, and I feel that's like why they've been shifting around IGL players. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of curious to see where that all kind of sits at the end of it, because. And well, anyway, yes. that, that, that's music, and I'm gonna shut up. All right, let's make our way over to Aaron Gal. We've got the plane that is up in the air, taking off right now. Plane pad's gonna be over Kameshki, and then going over Military Base Isle. All right, let's rock and roll. And again, it is new Erangel, guys. So Stalber there looking a little bit different. We've got a new observatory, which I'm a big fan of as a, as a physics guy. I'm happy to see, uh, you know, some of our technical equipment there getting some love. So that's pretty cool. It but makes it easier to see the stars. It, oh, 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 oh yeah. that is so good. <laughs> All right. I missed you. That was good. I missed you too. It has <laughs> been too long this year, basically. <laughs> it really has, my friend. Well, okay, so... I should maybe potentially highlight some hot drops. I don't know, guys. I tried to get these spice. Yeah. People tend to lie to me when, <laughs> when I ask for this information. I think Donawa might be messing around with Cerberus. So this could be a really spicy start near farm. So we'll keep an eye on that, how that is brewing out. Also, remember with the plane path going down to military base, we do have to glance down that direction as circles are going to be popping and see what's going to be going on with them. Um, most of the ship's going to be going over the west, no big surprise given the eastern lean on this plane path. 
T5 getting the easiest drop so far. Is It is going to be a little bit more loot scattered, but that's going to be oh. fine for them to work with what we got happening. So this was actually going on in scrims, so I was curious if this was going to continue. Uh, V7 Fun Pin has been squaring off with Tai Lu, and actually V7's been getting the better of them for the most part. V7 technically, mechanically, is cracked out of their minds. Uh, you know, we talked about Heaven in the pre-show. Avenger did a good job highlighting him, but Glass, a longtime player. Guman and Tosi, absolutely excellent players in their own right as well. Uh, so this is the same. You guys might remember them as Ghibli. This is the same roster. These are the same players. They are still capable of popping off. So V7 has more of the road control, but keep an eye on Glass's position because it is a little bit more high ground. Everybody's familiar with the Rajak hot drop and how that can go. So playing into the north, no big surprise. Tyloo is going to have a bit better vision down into that hillside, but they could have a couple of ways to get out of it. The circle did pop while that was happening, and it looks like it's just going to stay predominantly on the main island itself with this specific area still already being inside the circle. Yeah, exactly. So this doesn't have to kick off. They can take their time kind of figuring this out. We'll see if anybody's going to get uh, what I like to call bury rommed <laughs> where another team uh, shows up and I'm so sad. I'm so sad they're not here. We're in their home country, I so know, I, I suppose they deserve at least one shout out. I do miss them. Uh, but you know, EXO uh, is just kind of uh, look. They, they had moments. I want to. I want to like give EXO a little bit of a shout out. Uh, they're over in Milton Power right now, but they played pretty well at, at PGS One at times. I mean, they weren't. They clearly didn't have the firepower at, then to really match up with some of the top tier teams, uh, but they played pretty well strategically. Insight, the longtime veteran shot caller uh, from OCE, did a great job at least getting them in the spots where they could get points. They, now, they're not gonna blow the doors off of things, but they can, you know, they can defend really, really well. I want to remind everybody, keep your PUBG open because first blood will be sad. Somebody will be our first death of PGC, but you guys at home will be happy because you get a chance at getting 400 G coin for it. So I believe it's 400 G coin. Uh, for first blood <laughs> off of that one. Don't, don't, don't hate me if I got it wrong, guys. I'm just feeding you the information off the top of my memory. But um, uh, one thing to note is, yes, Sonics do have Pachinki inside of their drops. So Ooh. they are going to be pretty centered up. And, oh, that's going to be LZ down. Might be going for the flush here. But I think there's just enough of an angle on this hill for LZ to get back. No, I don't think he can. Oh. He's going to bleed out fast. Yeah, there we go, guys. There is our first blood. And there we go. 400 G coin popped up the top screen. So that is going to be S-Z-Q-E-D-G-V-A-P for D7. Good job. Way to, way to read. Dude, that's, <laughs> way that's to read hard code. for a dyslexic, man. I, I, I know, I know. I feel you. No, no, no. <laughs> it actually is hard to read those. No, I, I, I'm only being a little facetious when I say it. <laughs> I, I mean, I think, I, I tell you what, man, V7 is, is nasty. So um, there was also some interesting stuff here because I think we have a bit of a break in the action, Matt. Mm -hmm. Potentially. We'll see. Shen's kind of stuck back behind that hill. But um, there were some uh, TDMs that were run that were set up by Gunner, and I've gotten permission to uh, talk a little bit about the results of said TDMs. <laughs> oh, yeah. From Gunner. He said everybody else was under an NDA except me. Uh, so, you know, but no, that was clearly not true. But because well, he told me about them. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, an interesting thing here was obviously they were kind of mixing things up and trying different things. Uh -huh. So, they tried one where they basically did the best, like, NA and EU players versus all the Korean players from uh, Donawa and V7. And the Donawan V7 absolutely obliterated them, like 50 to 24. And and Gunnar has like been just praising V7 ever since. Mm -hmm. He said, these guys can frag. They're absolutely nuts. You've got to watch out for them this tournament. And, I mean, we talked about Tai Lu and the strength of the squad. Uh, losing LZ, not necessarily the worst, but whenever you couple it in with now they do have their backs to the zone. They are inside the safe zone, at least. Vehicles are not going to be something that they're going to have the easiest access to. Based off of the way that D7 made that landing, they're going to have the inside track to get all of the good toys. Uh, I think that we did see a bicycle. That was going to be about it. I don't know. I don't, can't remember which side of it that was on. Um, no big real rotations coming in. We have been seeing a lot more of a center meta going on right now with our players and how they're trying to move through. Zhang Yang, though, does hit at least a bit of damage to scare away and say, nope, we're at least going to go this pathing. But do notice that Jiao Yang is playing way more to the west while Shin is playing into the east. Yeah, look at this. Heaven still only with an AUG with a 4X able to do some serious damage from that range. And Tungmu trying to finish what his teammate started onto Glaz, but Glaz think able to get enough behind this hill. Tosi has an SKS. If he can find a head, he could really make this a lot easier for V7. 
This is going to be a hard. This angle path, uh, I mean, you can see the fact that Tai Lu or Tong Mu has like, held down at is going to be the easiest approach angle. So that was a good read coming up from Tai Lu uh, on making sure that they defended up on this. But they're so separated out right now, and it's going to be very, very complicated. It almost feels like they're playing for maybe getting a kill point here or there if they can. But past that, it's more of an almost an anchor play, I would say, that with this big wide spread. I mean, sure, you do control some of the pathing in it, but even then, this is just a fortified defensive line more than anything else. Will be in the money. Damage are coming through. Nate from the other side. Oh the come out. The kills come in. Forever around. Almost gets the second. This is going to be so good. Oh, down down into the blue. They were going to be a bit more aggressive on that, considering their form. But at the moment here, Exalt coming in with some good. Already got himself three on the board. Will he be able to connect with a little bit more here? Yes, they do. Give a quick glance back at how some of our teams made their pathing to make it into this stage. As they're making their pathing, to trying to make inside the circle. Uh, D plus Kia, you can see now making their rotation. They do have to be careful because they have Timba that is up on Everest right now, raining a couple of bullets down on them. But Timba is running a 2 2 split, so with this, it's not going to be like the worst harassment on the face here. It's more about just hitting that lucky bullet here. Exactly. The, uh, oh, making their way out of Mill to Power towards the Lumber Yard there. And uh, Exo, again, going to be taking their time. They don't have a lot of teams in front of them, so they're going to be pretty safe. And uh, that's about it. It's nothing too crazy going on. I'll talk about D-plus maybe a little bit later. And oh, Shen found oh. glass. So this is, this is my concern with V7. Even though they've been doing a really good job uh, in these fights, Matt, Shen individually can win these hot drops by himself. I saw it time and time again against some of the best in the business in Asia that Shen alone can win these fights. Look at this aggression. The moment he hits a couple of shots, he's making the cross straight over to the road. I mean, he has some ranged cover, but even then, it's just stepping right up into these angles. Prepped up. Oh, I thought I saw that cross. But one takes the spray over. Glass is going to go down. Now looking back up that hillside, it's getting easier and easier trying to make this work. Spots over on the other point. Realizes the fact that he has to try to hold. Now oh. while we see the rest of the reposition, Xiao Yang's going for a really long flank back around this. He might be able to try to make something, but he's so far away. I mean, but individually, Shen is out of his mind. He hit a head there as well with only a couple bullets left. Knew it, starts throwing a grenade to the other side as a Panzerfaust in the back pocket to go for something absolutely crazy. And this has opened up some space now for Tai Lu to keep wrapping around. At the very least here, Shen has bought potentially Tai Lu the ability to get a vehicle or something a little bit easier to escape this situation that V7 has created. I've just still got my eyes caught on Zhao Yang. He is creeping over there right now. You can't even see him on the mini-map. He's still just on the opposing side of the hill. Notice over there, whenever you look at where Boat Yard is, see how he's creeping up the hill that's gonna be back behind it. New Circle does pop. Gonna keep it this section inside the playing area, so that means that this fight can continue to brew. Don't need a vehicle if you don't really have to leave yet. No, no. You, you, this fight can now go even longer. And we don't we don't have yes. to go anywhere. And now Shen kind of has this basically unapproachable position. I mean, for V7, I don't expect they want to cross the road anyway unless they get a knock, but with Shen there, for sure, you're going to be think, rethinking it, even if you were to say knock a Tungmu in the back or something like that. You're really going to have to reconsider crossing that road with Shen there because this guy can put down two or three players in a heartbeat. This is one of the reasons I love watching Tai Lu is they realize, okay, we're backs against the wall. There's only real one real way we can make this work, and we have to fight our way out of it. And you saw, again, the moment that Shen just got that damage out, steps directly into their face. That was a, what, probably 150-meter push forward. And now there we go. Xiao Yang back behind this one. Going to spot out some of what's going to be happening. Feed that information over. 
now are we going to see any counter moves? Because uh, Atongmu has moved over into the eastern area to kind of back up Shin, and all the members for V7 have shifted over into the west. So this has kind of put way more pressure on his plate. Yeah, oh, Haisaki going to go down to Corexi back there off screen. But Zhao Yang here, it's going to be interesting. He's a little bit exposed. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, potentially for him to do any serious damage except to open up some space for the rest of his team to maneuver. Gustav already has a Mark 14, so crate weapons being acquired by FaZe so far. And Krexi has an SLR. No bolt. I know I highlighted a little bit earlier that sometimes he does, but it's not typical, and that's a big knock for Gustav. Yeah, FaZe is getting control over Death Road right now in a circle that is going to heavily feature it. So now making their crest up, getting that high ground position, spotting out. So at range, going to go ahead and start to scare them away a bit more. It's Chris, though, kind of caught in a crossfire as a sin. Uh, they are here as well, but I wouldn't say that they're comfortable in their position. I think Falcon should be curious about trying yeah. to fight this because FaZe is kind of out in the open and they should know it. The terrain on top of this hill is pretty exposed and this is something that uh, I think you know, Falcons received a little bit of criticism for during PAS2, and I think rightly so, is that they often didn't take advantage of things. But Gustav's wise to it. I can see him putting some covering fire down to keep the Falcons at bay at least, because right now FaZe is bit off a lot. I don't know if it's more than they can chew yet, but they've certainly oh, no. picked some fights. Faith, though, might have a bit more than he can chew, as he's got a ton of friends around. Realizing the fact that he has to go for the juke around on side of this one. He's on the outside, but looks like it's already a shift up into the second floor. Day Trade's got this area mostly under control, and there are no real friends to be had. I mean, I'm looking out. Uba is, what, a good four, five hundred meters away from this right now on opposing hillside. So Fate just kind of left to his own devices, and yeah, I guess you could say that Fate is in his own hands. No doubt about it. <laughs> Uh, you're already on fire with the puns today. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit sad that I'm not like I, I had to take a moment because I was like, oh, I don't have any good ones in the bag just yet. But uh, uh, give me some time. Give me some time. But I think for Exalt here, coming into the match, one player down. By the way, we'll get into that later. But that was some good Ooh, shots. Cooked. Yeah, oh, oh, beautifully oh. cooked. Oh, Nurins, insane, insane, and that's gonna get the hometown crowd fired up. I mean, Uba's in position to provide some support now, but it took him a while to get over here, and it just comes a bit too late. So Fate is going to go out. Day Trade's going to go ahead and pick up that kill. Still holding down a fairly strong position right on the edge of the zone. Sonics did hear this up that hillside, so they're going to be looking down Potato Hill and might be able to spot out Day Trade making some moves. For sure, for sure. T5 as well, making some moves of their own. They are coming in towards SSG. Now, SSG has, I think it's Roth. I think they got a 2-2 split, if I'm not mistaken. They got two players right on top of each other there. That would be SSG. That's what they do. They're a 2-2 splitter. And uh, let's see if they can hold it down. It could be tough, but there it's on five. So, Generally not that aggressive, right, Matt? Here's my thing, though, that we've sure. got cooking, is the Tiemba positioning. Because remember what was going on in Rajak? Well, these sevens decided they're going to leave. Tiemba holding down school right now. It's already spotted him. Glass is going to get dropped. 7-7 seven, seven lines in, but now Tyloo is going to be coming up that hillside back behind V7, and they're going to be pinched. They realize that they've already just had to make the break down into school, realizing we cannot stay here. Here's those shots coming up from Tyloo, and now it is just a push into the pool house. Yeah, the outskirts of the school are very, very tricky to play around. They're very exposed, so V7 wisely here pushing through, but Glaz probably going to bleed out. He was already at least second knock. And 7-7 seven, seven is going to claim a point for Tianba. Don't sleep on Tianba this event, folks. They are absolutely nuts. The human going to light up with the barrel, not connecting with too much. I liked the idea behind the play. Sing Pow Pow over to the side, see if maybe you can find that flank position. Probably wasn't expecting Tai Lu to still be just kind of walking their way over, but they don't have any options. I mean, they like, talk about no vehicles. They've just got a foot push their way over. Shin already kind of bisecting over. Looks like he's got his eyes set over in the apartments while this fight is brewing. And you can see the circle has shifted away from this position. And now Tiemba is trying to get more of a gatekeeping area right along that like fence on the outside of it to make sure that V7 can't make a shift over. Glad Pow Pow, the second best fragger in the PCL Summer Grand Finals finds another knock here. There's a reason so many people were so high on him for fantasy because he was cheap and he was doing damage yeah. during PCL. So let's see if he can keep it up and seems to be off to a good start. V7 like you're talking about, Matt, in a lot of trouble. You know, you've already mentioned that Tianba has somebody already out ahead of this fight. Well, now you've got potentially another team showing up to this. I mean, V7 basically has to kill like 
potentially four or five people here if they're going to get to the next circle. 7-7 oh, seven, seven says, hell no. Heaven gets dropped. They make the cross on it. It was pretty dangerous, but I mean, this is just complete and utter confidence in your gunplay right now. They just leave these. Stuff. I was worried about Tampa for a second. I was like, the longer this fight goes on, that could spell their doom. And Tampa's like, nah, man, we got this. <laughs> I mean, it's 7-7 seven, seven looks pretty crisp right now. Rip actually going to find it's Chris, so that's going to open them up to FaZe, though. FaZe is still hungry. Four points. Capitan from the Falcons is also getting involved. Corexi has Akita down. XO already in trouble. Ooh. There goes Insight. Yep, Exalt's going to get eliminated. Now Ascend is starting to look like they might not be too much far behind. Yep, they're going to go down. Death Road coming up big for FaZe right now. They're doing a good job on gatekeeping out everything. Falcon's going to be to the north of them, but not going to be inside the next circle as we are shifting straight onto Potato Hillside itself. And due in the middle of all of that is going to be Sonic's up at the top of the hill. Yep, Sonic's just going to be content to control the top of Potato Mountain. Now, that could be tricky. Potato Mountain's pretty wide open. It's got, like, areas where teams can get behind you, can flank you uh, from unexpected angles. So a lot of teams don't like to go to the top of Potato Mountain, but if you can keep it under control, it should be good. And up in the north, I think as long as this fight doesn't happen, if FaZe is just drive right into the Sonics. Oh, Gustav, that's going to be scary. Quick exchange going to go down. James trying to go for something. One HP narrowly makes it away. Gustav presently the only member that's going to be down. Sonics kind of recoiling, wasn't expecting FaZe to just crash into this. But that's just kind of going on everywhere right now. Yeah, this is a great piece of defense actually from the Sonics. It looked like it was about to go real bad real fast. They had a couple knocks from Fex, but they're able to stabilize, win that fight in a very fast manner. So good communication, good teamwork already we're seeing from the Sonics. With this, you can see D-plus Kia being one of these other teams that was going for the crash. Bypassed right next to SSG. They're going to be just south of T5, who's going to be kind of eyeing what's going on with Tyloo, who's now kind of gatekeeping out V7. It's been a shift of position in kind of like one of those like shell games that you would see. It's like, try a track. Who's going to be the <laughs> gatekeeping squad as it is just bouncing back and forth over here in the north? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's a bit of a kind of, um, you know... Test the water, see who's going to make the first mistake, kind of work back and forth. V7, though, found an emergency pickup. Now, this is huge. I talked about how V7 was in a really bad spot. Well, at least there's one hope. There's one player who has a chance to get out potentially. So, yes, it's still not good, but <laughs> it could potentially get them a few placement points. It, it's not bad, but it could be worse. Oh, they're on the hunt, though. Oh, so see. Oh, the great just barely holds it together. Now Tosi's just trying to see if he can get something out. He's going to get at least a knock. No, that's going to be Russell from T5. Remember we talked about them just a second ago. That's going to make it even more complicated as Ty Lu is going to be limping into this. Just Shin, the last one up, and two, potentially three different squads that are going to be eyeing him. That was a beautiful piece of work from Ty Lu, though. That grenade exploded right in Tosi's face. So well cooked. And then somebody to jump across the door to reveal his position to make it easier for the follow-up player to make sure that they can get that knock. So really, really smart stuff there. As Shen, the only one alive, but look, I'm telling you folks, don't count this guy out. He he can do things. Look, if, if you're stuck and you're going to die, see if at least you can get a, get a kill point, take somebody with you, right? Petrichor Road trying to come alive over here next to Danawa. Soul trying to defend up this line as South is going to get much more explosive. Soul is going to go down. Looks like Petrichor Road managed to line those nades up beautifully. New circle has popped, stays on top of Potato Mountain, so this fight not inside the safe zone. All right, well, that's the superstar for Donawa down early in this one. Petricor Road able to time and isolate him very, very nicely. Oh, no. Here go Loki and Anonyx, the duo, the classic duo from Korea. Now on Donawa, Loki oh, always no. has Panzerfaust in the bag. Oh, no, I'm terrified on this one. Which way you go? Day trade on one side, Sonic's on the other. Belmont fired it down. Belmont hits the shot to take him down before he can even leash the Panzerfaust. So with this now getting more and more complicated on this southern hillside. Petrichor Road, Cerberus, we still have Falcons all needing to make moves. Yeah, great stuff there from Day Trade, not even giving Dono an inch, not giving them an opportunity to do any damage. T5 here, looking to see if they can continue to block out Shen. They're really focused on that, so is Tiamba, to be frank. Over on the other side, we have Cerberus keeping an eye on Falcons. Falcons have kind of stayed put. They haven't really been uh, doing too much. Yeah, they have one kill. 
Uh, but they've just been controlling their space, and now that space has left them. They have to go to their west. Cerberus already on the move, but Cerberus does have Petrichor Road on the other side, who are getting <laughs> beaten back by the Sonics. And yeah, Shen is, Shen, I, I think he's gonna go undetected here. I don't think he's oh, gonna dude. get spotted. This is absolutely wild. Creeping up back behind a Petrichor Road, trying to fend up their lines from Cerberus. And that's just gonna be a juke standing out in the open. Does oh. manage to duck down below it. Min can finally get that one. But that took way longer than they wanted, and Shen gets a knock on the squat before going down. Yeah, I mean, Shen doing what he can, making something out of nothing, basically. Summer, again, a longtime IGL, a superstar IGL from China, just gets absolutely brutalized by Tycon. Tycon here, expecting some pressure from the smoke, throws a frag in there, and Petrichor Road is actually down. This is just, this is going to be the name of the game for a while now. There's just going to be teams trying to run up this hillside. Sonic's going to have an open path and looking straight at what's going on with Cerberus. They're going to go down. Now we've got Falcons, we've got Space Station Gaming, we've got T5 all stacked up on top of each other. T5 watching the rotation as SSG oh, trying to come out. Rosin and this says no though. Shuts down every bit of this. My God, he is just dismantling SSG. Nasty stuff from the veteran PUBG player. The IGL for T5 getting it done. Absolutely disgusting. And all Roth can do is prone and try to heal. I mean, he can creep up back behind him, but this is just a wing, a prayer, and a dream at this stage. T5 coming alive over here, but now has drawn the attention of Tienba, who's playing in the north and has pretty much 50% of the circle under control, if you don't count kind of where we can see the, the sight lines down from Day Trade as well as Deep Plus Kia. Falcons, their patience has kind of been paying off. They don't get backstabbed. Roth going to be finished off by 10 at all. If Falcons don't get backstabbed mm. by Sonics, they might be able to potentially do something. It's hard to say, but now... Potato Mountain Control has been seeded to D-plus Kia. Tanadol trying to keep Tianba at bay, but 7-7 has been really feeling it so far. Lin Shu, ZYY, Pow Pow has done some damage, but no kills there yet. I mean, 7-7, man. I don't know what happened inside of this, but he has just been on control and on point for so much of what's going to be going on in their successes in this round already. I mean, that adult doesn't have too much they can move from. He's just full on just cluster held on that position. It does look like Tiamba is going to step away from it, kind of relent. But Falcons, Sonics, they don't have an easy path into this. I mean, they've got they've got Kia that's going to be in front of them, and that's not going to be an easy path to take in and of itself. And then I think that Tiamba might have some sight lines on any alt paths. Oh, great stuff mm. here from DraftKing. Catches h win looking at the other side of things. And now the Falcons may be able to do something, but shrimzy has got one. He's going to find another. Maybe oh! yes, Shrimzy. Shrimzy coming alive when needed. Sonics trying to cling to life over here. He does have h win's going to be down in front of him. DraftKing on the opposing side of it, trying to go for a peek back and forth. Smoke's down. Blue zone is going to be coming in right now, so going to be applying a bit more pressure. Shrimzy, though, going to play out in the blue, take it a bit slower. But keep in mind, T5. Then it looks like he was coming up back behind DraftKing. Looks like he kind of got shoot away from it. Doesn't want to go over that direction. Now Shrimzy is going to finally make the push. Yes, DraftKing is going to read it. Goes for spray. Follows it up. Double up. And now we are already in our top three. Unbelievable stuff there, but kind of mutually assured destruction with everybody fighting out there. D-plus, keen to scoop up some extra points and Jonggu, a young superstar in the making in Korea, making an appearance here at PGC. Is a, he's been really, really good in Korea for quite some time, folks. A guy I've been on very high on uh, for a while. Let's see if he can do something. But I, you know, you got to favor Tianba if they can win this fight against Day Trade. But it's, it's a full on 4v4. Let's see how hot this gets. And this is a really weird fight to be brewing right now, especially with uh, DK going to be moving in. They're kind of the X factor. It does look like they're going to be playing more to the south. It means that Puchils is going to be off by himself, really can't commit in. So this is a 3v4 lineup. But whenever you find a couple of these angles, it starts to open it up. Tiamba in a little bit of trouble trying to step away from right now. They trade starting to find the angles in the control on this. And now it's going to be Kia that hears this and starting to look in that direction. And Puchils is keeping track of D plus Kia because this is going so well. The flush going to be confirmed. But knock here for 7-7. Seven, seven. He is on fire. Dude, he is just holding this together. Every single time there is a push point or a danger for Tiamba, 7-7 seven, seven is just finding it. He's getting back out, getting those knocks, and making sure he gives the rest of his team some breathing space. He's just crazy good. He's so clean right now. Just some disgusting sprays, and that sends Flash packing back to Puchils. <laughs> it sent me back, too. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, dude. And Puchils here just keeping his eyes Onto D plus. I mean, this is a little bit tricky now for Day Trade because their numbers have been thin. T5 
Kiambo looks like they're going to be able to get their res. You know, ideally as day trade, you really need to find a point where you can, you know, take two out of D plus Kia without losing anybody or somehow trick D plus Kia into fighting Tiamba. But right now, D plus is swinging in their direction. I do like this like slower movement coming out from Tiamba, realizing the fact that, okay, there's probably going to be people playing to the south. We just managed to defend up. Day trade should probably step away from us. This is just good meta reading coming out from them, making sure that they can control this northern area. And so now day trade, it has a new team that's going to be in their crosshairs in just one moment. But kind of the underdog is that they are the only squad with two members up against a stack up three, no matter which way they're going to be looking. Problem with it is, if they take the fight into Kia, Kia's been playing a lot more passive. They, that's going to allow Tiemba to make the push down into him. If Day Trade looks up in that northern area, they might get a bit more breathing room as Kia might just try to go for more circle control instead of just directly pouncing behind them. Well, the good, yeah, the good news here for Day Trade is that right now Tiamba is being really patient, and this has kind of been Tiamba's mo in PCL so far this year. Is they play edge, they don't really like to get involved unless they feel like they're really confident they can take a good fight. Obviously, if teams take fights to them, oh yeah, right in the back, but underneath them is Luchos. Just solidly held. Held it for a while, heard the footsteps, let his teammate take those opening shots. And with that, yes, Tiempa is on the move. They're coming right down this direction. D plus Kia has stopped in their tracks, trying to figure out exactly where Puchos is going to be. And so little happening inside the circle right now is D plus Kia is looking like maybe they're going to go back to the east. That really just kind of served to let Tiempa know, oh, that's where day trade went. Yeah, and I think they want to they want to knock day trade out. They might consider them the bigger threats here. I think I might have seen a Groza floating around in day trade's hands as well. So now Damon Kia going to try to go to the low side. Flash doing some serious damage. He's got to hold this line for squad. Puchil's coming up right back behind him. Looks up the hill side. Shots two different angles. Just can't hold it together. Lynch is going to go down. Puchil tries to make it happen. But with this, it's now going to be about how D-plus Kia wants to move in and how much time does Tiamba have to reset. I'd really like to see D-plus kind of put some pressure on a Tiamba since they have a knock with that grows at range. Disgusting. Dude, 7-7. Seven, seven. What on earth are you doing to this lobby right now? That's a 140, 150 meter kill at least there. That is really nasty stuff. I mean, gosh, 624 damage. It feels like it's so much higher because every single bit of that damage has been pivot point fighting. And just a little bit too keen to get information, get on the high ground is DK. Again, DK at a moment. Uh, uh, look, okay, again, guys, Jonggu, absolutely nuts. Widely considered to be one of the best up-and-coming talents in Korea right now. But this is a really tricky task. I mean, he's got to get that Groza out of the hands of 7-7, seven, seven, I think, if he has any hope of winning this fight. Now, how are we going to see this come out? Looks like he is eyeing back down to the south. Uh, I mean, that's no surprise given where the firefighting has been happening at. Hillside itself also going to provide some of the pathing options as we're going to be looking through. Keep in mind, we are in phase eight, so is this going to be collapsing down? We're not going to, we're not quite to the end zone where everybody's being forced out yet, but we might end up getting into that stage. It looks like Tiamba doesn't want to just step directly on top of a snake and lose a member. Well, I think Jonggu's going to try to play this little hill he has over there. When Tiamba's forced to come this way, he's at least got this rock uh, for some protection and can try to make it, you know, with his side of the circle, either just for, you know, force it to the point where he knows he can't win, you know, see if Tiamba may, maybe makes a mistake. Maybe Tiamba wraps too far to the north or the south or something, and he can get a pick. Uh, otherwise, if Tiamba plays it too safe and he's just kind of stuck behind this rock, he can, he can eventually just uh, go down to the blue and not give the point over to Tiamba. Yeah, I, it's he's hoping for a technical error to come out from Tiamba's side, and they're just not giving it. They're backs right up against the blue zone, realizing the fact that, okay, we've got the numbers advantage. Don't spoil it. Wait next couple of seconds, figure out where we're going to be looking at, see how we're going to be wanting to navigate it. But you can see it's just ammo getting a bit lower on 7-7. Looks like we are Ducey Lynch who's sitting a bit better in regards to that. So uh, in-game firefighting is going to be the option, or do you think, it, do you go for the kill? Do you go for one more KP at this stage if you were D-plus Kia, or do you think you go to blue like you're talking about? I'd, I'd rather see him go for it at this point. I mean, we're early. Who cares if you give him an extra point in this this win? I mean, it's probably not going to make a huge difference. I think the, ri the, the risk-reward factor here, the reward is really worth it for D+, Plus, who didn't really... Yeah you know, put up a huge, you know, kill game or anything like that. Yeah, the second place is nice, but if you could sneak this first place away, that could be a huge swing for you, not only giving you individual, like, confidence and momentum, but potentially it could be a game that swings you into that winner's bracket directly. 
This has just been an absolute banger of a start looking at everything. Tiemba still playing slow. I mean, they've managed to move out, I'd say, what, maybe 20, 30 meters from where they, we talked about just a second ago. No big need to separate out. Wanting to lean into that wolf pack mentality is it's paid off for them right now, making their way up this hillside. It's it's been a dangerous trek to get here. And let's be honest, Tiemba, I thought, probably could have gone out two or three times. How many times did we see them getting caught up in just some serious gatekeeping firefights? And they have just fought tooth and nail to get to this stage. And uh oh, position is revealed, and that means all the wolf pack is now moving forward. Yeah, and there's this hill that I was talking about that Jangu has to work with. He's gonna try to smoke it up, but Linju isn't gonna give him time. Oh, Jangu! Oh, tries to go to war, but no! With this Tiemba! Gonna go ahead and pick up our first game of PGC. 7 7 0 oh, oh, not any, not gonna be 7 7 oo oh, oh, man. It's <laughs> too strong, too He's strong. Too good for that. Uh, he's absolutely the hero here for Tiamba. Uh, just a really solid start for this team that I think a lot of people, you know, frankly, we just didn't have too much time to talk about them necessarily, but I really am high on this team because of the fact that you still always have Lin Shu, who's always been a phenomenal play caller, has won a PCS, uh, led a team to victory that way, and he's got some players who are really stepping up behind him. We just saw 7-7, Seven -Seven. we saw Pow Pow yeah. in PCL Summer. These guys are patient. And that's the name of the game here for Tiamba in this one. In, to, to, oh, I, I, I say patient, but my God, man, they were caught in so many of those firefights. Remember, they start off in that school with that driveway. What a game number one is done, and it is going to be a masterful win as Tiamba comes away with 10 kills. But I do want to give a shout out to Jangu for fighting to the bitter end. Yeah, fantastic. My name is Avi, I'm joined by Avenger. This is the highlights, and that was how you want to start PGC. Yeah, great start, great fights as well through the end, and that Ovo turn on right. him, and that was disgusting. Also, some interesting things happening throughout the game, of course. Some questionable, some interesting in yeah. terms of uh, well played. Uh, and of course, it was wild. And again, on this kind of open hill, high ground, yeah. potato hill, of course, called often, uh, it's hard. Like, you have so many open spaces and you kind of have to control an edge and have to control your side of that circle. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to get third party or shot from the different angles and sides that you're not expecting. Absolutely. That's what you see. The potato got awfully loaded. His face pushed in there and hurt the Sonics initially, set them on sort of a downward run. But we saw a wonderful moment as Day Trade, a hometown heroes team, almost pulled it off with a chicken dinner in their first game. It was not meant to be Tiamba, a team that is storied. It has a legacy behind it. It has strong players on it, comes out, it sets the tone for PGC 2023. An excellent win and a great way to get going. Yeah, honestly, I gotta say this this game here and the start to it is just kind of ex exactly yeah. what we expected, right? It's, it's a lot of edge heavy plays, yeah. a lot of kind of slow plays. There's some fights for some territory and terrain that we're kind of expecting. Of course, the Russia was a, a sta kind of yeah. standout one that, that took a little bit longer than it made it futile. Honestly, with the exception of the Razak showdown, uh, for those of you who were not, maybe got here a little later, it was Tyloo versus V7 Funpin. Everyone else was playing what I would honestly call sort of top eight PUBG, because right. that's the goal of the groups, right? Just get to the top eight, get to that winner's bracket. And we saw a little bit of safety coming out from these teams trying to avoid that happening. Uh, that said, it was still a lot of fun. We got to see a lot of interesting things. We saw that uh, moment by Fate as he was just hunted down on top of that house. Uba came to help a little bit. There wasn't much you could do, but I gotta nope. give him credit. He survived longer than I expected. Yeah, he did. A little bit of a, a little bit of a vault jump yep. onto the top. You know, it's a little bit of fun here and there. But then again, when you're alone and you have you know three or four day trade players looking at, it's gonna be in a rough situation for there. But yeah, again, Potato Hill ending here and. Uh, in a situation where, you know, Sonics, they were looking good, yes. but the face kind of drive by into them. They lost the player, and but Shrimsy played well. Six kills for him. Gee. Happy for your fantasy team for that, of course. I'm very happy for my fantasy team off the back of that Shrimsy uh, performance. But I do think Sonics will have a test here. This is Kickstarts new to the roster. That was yep. a situation that I think they will be as surprised as we were to see FaZe kind of coming into them and, and making that play and catching one of their players and getting that flush. Yeah, I feel like they were like, okay, that kind of shelf area yep. that might not have any players there they maybe thought that Sonic was over by kind of the bunker trenches or whatever you want to call them on the southern side of Potato Hill so yeah they had an edge free but they were like okay we can go in deeper there might be yeah. only one or two players let's drive by them take them out kind of a confidence push yeah. so I like to see that from face but yeah they got some kills they got some some good pushes on top of that kind of on, on the road as well so that's good to see really good fun opening game here in general yeah but excited to get more 
Honestly, though, I do think part of that that game was really big on the gunfights. The amount of skill that we saw, a lot of teams sort of flexing their muscles. It's been a little while that they've been off. Uh, they've been scrimming and trying to warm up here, but they've been here for about a week. For sure. So that's what we see. We see it's kind of the, the dust falling off of these teams. And that was a great map to do it and a great circle, right? How often do we get to start PGC with a dead center circle that really makes it fair for everybody? For sure. That's a, another case, right? It was a little bit of an eastern plane, so yeah. we had a little bit... Uh, kind of open space mm -hmm. to the west, but again, yeah, easy, easy opening up. I love when we started the the kind of game where you know you see the map and they're like where we, some of the you know kind of usual drops we see. There are some changes, there are some hot drops of course, uh, and there are some spaces can some teams that are you know kind of broadening their yeah. shoulders a little bit, taking a little bit more space than they might uh, they might kind of want led yeah. on to. So especially face around the the military, they take a lot of farm as well. Okay. Kind of pushes in Donawa and Cerberus mm -hmm. into a, a little bit of a fight there too. I did notice that Donawa Cerberus. It's a very I mean that farm line road is not big. There's not no. tons of places to loot, and it was very congested. Two teams that we know have some of the best shooters in the world there being forced to loot so close together has to be worrying. Now let's take a look at the top four teams from match number one. Obviously, Tiamba going to come in at number one with a whopping 1,700 damage, followed by the Sonics at number two with 11 kills, and of course, Day Trade. I love seeing a Thai team starting so strong at PGC Thailand. Yeah, honestly, I gotta say, Day Trade is such a good team as well. Yeah. Like Flash and these two guys, they're so good. To see them come in here and get five kills in a third place, it's great for them. Going to be able to get in and on the on the ten point mark. Sonics though and Falcons. Yeah. Good to see some Americas representation. Americas, here. and you know I, I'm glad to see Falcons up here. I think sure. sometimes they get a bit of a raw deal when it comes to coverage. People kind of write them off. They say, oh, you were picked up for the Gamers Eight. Maybe you are kind of put together the old KPI roster from back in the day. But these guys have a lot of skill and they have a lot of experience. They've been they in PGC before and they've performed when doing it. Let's take a look back at some of the bigger moments, a little bit of a recap from match number one, sort of looking at the plays that got our top four teams to this position. Yeah, for sure, yeah, with the top four. And a little bit of a focus here, the off angles we saw from yeah. day trade in general, a little bit of a highlights towards the end again, how it got closed out. I gotta say though, Tianba, you have a three versus one yeah. advantage, right? It's just gonna be a little bit of a standoff until you can see Django maybe take Maybe get another point to yeah. kind of close it out, right? But yeah, it is going to be Tianba that is going to be able to clutch out 20 points for them. Lin Xu and Ovo, four apiece. Lin Xu almost 1k club in the first right. game, though, Toffees. That's that's pretty cool. Well, you know, I like Pao. Pao Pao's on my fantasy team, as he is with almost everyone who's playing fantasy right now. That's like 5% pick or so, right? It so, is a 5%. Yeah. So 34 points in damage. But you know what? He does a good job of absorbing the damage for his team. He stops everyone <laughs> else from getting hit. He's, He's a tank. Tanking, yeah. You gotta have a tank. But you also gotta have a man of the match. That is gonna be Lin Xu, no question. Nice. Four kills, 939 damage. Uh, Tiamba, I mean, really did do that as a team effort. Yeah, for sure. This, you know, you come into this here, you see Ovo popping off the way they kind of fart and in the beginning of the game, you have this kind of the school situation where yeah. it's delaying them kind of un unnecessarily a little bit. So them to be able to stay three guys alive all the way to the yeah. end here, take that on with Django and yeah, finish out with 20 points. That's a fantastic start. And again, you want to beat top eight here. Yes. Obviously in the group. A and Group B once we're in our group stages. Yep. 20 points to go with that. It's going to be a long way. It's only 12 games. It is only 12 games. So that 20 points to start is a very big deal. Match leaderboard for match number one. Also your overall leaderboard if you want to look at it that way right now. Sonics hit 13. Day Trade and Falcons pulling up the 10. As you said, it is 12 games. You need to have a strong points per game to make sure you make it to that top eight. Do you have an implication of what you think the cutoff might be? What are the teams targeting? Oh. Time to get back into the action. Game number two, Aaron Gell going to be kicking off in just one second. Thank you so much to the analyst desk and all the great insights that they're providing, breaking down all the stats, because, man, that was a wild first game. It was absolutely insane, and, and I really like that the analyst desk was highlighting, like, that a lot of that game came down to just individual skill. I mean, we saw yeah. it early with FaZe hitting some good shots, uh, but they kind of, again, I was I was worried about it from the beginning. It took a little bit longer than maybe I thought for it to kind of culminate, but they bit off a little more than they could chew, then they made a mad dash at the Sonics, got torn apart there, and then, you know, Tiamba 7-7 and others just really just showcasing uh, how talented they and their region are. Dude, gatekeeping was strong inside that last one. I mean, don't let social media know it, but apparently that was the way to win the last time around because, <laughs> Lord, that was just, it felt like a brick wall in some cases that teams were just having to slam into, like you were talking about with FaZe and how they had to make that rotation right into Sonics. But 
again, the aggression for a game one. Sometimes we see a lot more of a passive game one where everybody's like, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to play too risky. I, I want to make sure that I get like my placement points. Not this game one. This game one was, <laughs> hey, there was somebody shooting over there. I can go kill them. Let's go like shift over 100 meters. Let's pick it up, man. I love it. And it started off with Tyloo unrelenting off of a hot drop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it looked like maybe V7 was going to get the better of Tyloo, but Tyloo was able to kind of weather the storm, sneak some players around, get some damage in. Uh, you know, Shen there really highlighting again why he's such a feared player, especially in hot drops, why often teams that Shen is on do not relent in their hot drop spots. I mean, again, going back to SGD, some of the teams he was on a long time ago, Shen would go up against the likes of Gen G, against the likes of 17 Gaming, and routinely beat them. You know, with the help of his other teammates, of course, but his teams would beat teams in Pachinki and Picado uh, consistently and to the point where other teams just stopped fighting them in those spots because they were sick of dealing with them. I mean, it's just like, say what you will, but it just felt like the Shin just magically teleported right where he needed to be to provide some support to his teammates. I feel like I've heard of that happening somewhere before. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, it's just such a pleasure to watch, and I love the fact that we're already getting kicked off with such a good performance in it. I know that a couple of teams... Uh, it, you can't really take too much away from that one, given the way that circles came through. But I did like what the desk was talking about, getting a very centered start. I mean, that was a potato hillside ending. I can't remember the last time we've seen that on the international stage, let alone on a game one. That's about as comfortable of a start as you could have, but it didn't feel comfortable in the slightest. No, not at all. No, no, no. It wasn't comfortable. <laughs> like, it's, it's weird, because the first game is just all, I never know what to expect. I'm yeah. not comfortable. The players aren't comfortable. Because I don't know if teams are going to go crazy at each other or if they're going to play ultra safe. But this one was a little bit more kind of chaotic than I was expecting. So that's a lot of fun. Sonic's there. Kind of tried to hold the top of Potato Hill and sort of went okay. Well, let's make our way back into Eric Gale. Plane path going to be back over that Kameshki area yet again, but avoiding Military Base Island as it's going to end up next to Promorsk. Plane up, active, and let's see how we're going to be moving into game number two. Game number one was a feast, so I'm hoping we're going to get seconds. <laughs> For sure. Why not second air go? Well, we get it anyway. So, really looking forward to this. And I have to make a correction here. I did look this up. Someone mentioned this. It Actually, Uba isn't the only player to compete at every international event. Jeems as well has actually done it. He competed at, I think if my research here is correct, somebody mentioned it and I thought, you know, that might be right. As far as I could tell, both those players have competed at every international that I can find. So. Really exciting to see both of them still here, still kicking. Jeems again, such a great IGL. Uh, you know, now for FaZe, I think that game, yeah, maybe could have gone a little bit better, but I like that FaZe is out there trying to take some fights, trying to get into it, trying to get heated up a little bit. I really like what FaZe was doing there, getting control over Death Row. Sure. In that circle, whenever we saw it at that stage, if it shifted into the east, it would have given you control over the entirety of the game, right? That is a power win position that you can play from. And it just kept going back over to Potato Hillside instead and left them kind of trailing back in after getting involved in so many smaller firefights. Absolutely. It's just, oh. that crash almost worked on the Sonics too. Bajok is done, by the way. No, I know. I didn't. Oh, well, I, this is the other one I was worried about. Yeah. yeah. Well, Donawa was telling me that, you know, they don't really want to give up too much territory because Day Trade as well is also kind of leaning in this direction. You know, there's only so many compounds here south of Potato Mountain. And the loot is not bad, but you know you need enough compounds under your control that you can make the loot work. And there's some ego plays to be had. Well, hey, guess what? Let's go ahead and go Georgia for Zarki's inside the circle. There's a chance for a Zarki ending. All right, we've got the dinner plate going active, taking a couple of shots. Cerberus just kind of shooing away. But Danua, where are you going to? I mean, they do have kind of like shark fin that they can play and whatnot. But FaZe saw that on their land. You can see the way that FaZe landed on the map feed, that they just specifically were looking over here, waiting to see if this fight was going to break out more. Oh, there's all four teams within a kilometer of each other, which is we're close. Farm. Yeah. yeah, exactly, which is relatively close in PUBG terms. So there, there could be a lot that goes down. Now, Heaven's already got a Dragonov. Tosi with a Tommy gun, a Dragonov over there for Jogging, but he's knocked. So again, it's going to be early damage done by V7 Funpin. Let's see if they can capitalize a little bit more this time. I mean, Tyloo, you know, once that flush oh. came through, it was full-on retreat. Well, this is also a bit of a different setup, right? Last time we saw that it was going to be Tyloo that was playing way more to the north, and it was V7 that got more of this hillside road that they were kind of working with. We've shifted this position around, and now we have Shin and Atongmu that are going to be playing over into the east of this. 
So with the knock, we're not seeing the same level of Shin aggression. Remember the last time, Shin pushed the road near on an instant. This time, V7 is wanting to be a little bit slower. The knock happened earlier, so really haven't managed to get loot in the best of positions. And that's allowing Tai Lu to get the time to reset. But I mean, they really haven't looted either. So I mean, they need the time to at least get something in their pockets. Oh no, an Onyx, not like this. Gustav, one more bullet. Oh, can't find it. I thought an Onyx was done, dude. Yeah, uh, I mean, what? He's he's sitting. Hey, he found a helmet. Yeah. If it wasn't for that helmet, man. I was just about to say that. <laughs> you read my brain. Dude, not a, not a body armor. Just dream a prayer. He does at least manage to get over here. Uh, pathing into the circle though is going to suck. And with all of these hot drops going on, I don't even want to say hot drops. I guess mixed skirmishes. Um, it's really messing up the looting phase and what is a very northwestern circle for these squads to try to contend with. Yeah, I, and this is kind of interesting. I mean, Donawa kind of has a rough situation in this event. They changed out of their drop spot from Yasnaya, oh. first of all, their old one, into the south farm, if people haven't been paying attention. But this is an area of the map that's really popular for a lot of these teams because it's really flexible. It, there's enough vehicles here that you can kind of get what you need. Uh, there's enough loot you can get what you need. Uh, but Donawa really likes access to that ferry pier, that mini ferry pier. That's something they really utilize often, and a lot of teams want access to that spot. Because you have so much, again, there's boats down here, so if it goes milly, there's all kinds of different directions that you can relatively easily rotate from this spot. And that's why, again, all these teams are congested in this area. I want to point out, Petrichor Road just committed into grabbing vehicles and predominantly is just shifting into the circle. They're committed into getting center control quite early inside of this one, not really leaning into much loot at all. Already cut a path over there. They're in that hillside just to the east of George Pole itself. Day Trade kind of doing the same thing. I mean, it, it's... That they managed to pick up a bit more loot, I believe, and now cutting in. Uh, we have Ace that's going to be playing over under the west. But then there's just kind of that farm area, right? Like Danawa over here, Cerberus over here, FaZe. It's all kind of gotten a bit... I, I wouldn't say... Like, FaZe is probably the most comfortable out of all of them, as it's just they were the ones that were choosing if they wanted to aggress or not. Yeah, it, that's kind of the nice part for FaZe because they're on the the edge of this entire situation by Milta, they can kind of decide if they get involved or not. Like, they, they can fish for some kills, and they almost got one. They almost, you know, got a, a fish on their line, but it wasn't quite there. So, Nanawa here just has to, I mean, Cerberus, guys, we all know this. We've been watching them for years now. They are not afraid to take fights. It doesn't matter what the situation is. They want it. They want this loot location for themselves. Well, I mean, Loki's stuck here. Uh, we've got Anonix that's playing around Milta. Then we've got Salute and Soul, who've gone down to Military Base Island to get some loot. I mean, I guess that's a good call, given the fact you have to assume it's open with the plane pathing and everything like that. Then they can maybe come into the West Bridge after they pick up some stuff, but this is scavenging bad, and yep, you were talking about it, Cerberus. They want this. They want control of this area, and it looks like Hisaki's going to have to be very, very careful on this approach. Well, Loki, the trickster god, continuously lives up to his name. He is one of the best in the business when it comes to creativity in PUBG Esports. There are few who have done it better, but he's got a tough one. Ooh, do they, they have to know. They have had to have seen some of the loot be scattered down below this one. Creeping up, walks right into it. Loki picks that one up easy. Now revealed. What is the rest of Serpus going to do? They're already inside a vehicle. He's now going to take some shit. Oh, shots at range. Don't really connect the way that they want to, so that's fine. Loki just trying to scare him away. That's all he wants. I thought Loki might have an opportunity there Same. with that motorcycle. Now they're going to turn their attention back towards Loki, and Loki does have some backup a bit far away is his teammate. But <laughs> I, I would put a big It's an like, Onyx, yeah. I, I, I don't know. An Onyx I might not want to get too involved inside of this one. Cerberus has a, just a full-on push <laughs> down there, and I feel like Loki's left to his own devices, as a Loki should be. <laughs> I mean, he's incredible. Uh, there's so much I can talk about with Loki, and there's a lot I want to talk about with Loki in this event because... Oh, what a shot, though, mm. from Salalzi. What are we going to do? Anonix looks like he's at least going to come over to provide some type of support, but I don't know. The building might provide enough cover, as we can see Salalzi being far enough away that, yep, yeah, he's going to get a break point. And Danua, somehow, man, somehow manages to come out of that. I can't wait for them to try to regroup with the guys over on Military Base Island and somehow bump into phase after all of that. You know, that's just how PUBG feels like sometimes. Yeah, I mean, PUBG is, it's such a great game because of that. It's just, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. SSG up on the north side of the river. There was a crate in front of him. I don't know if they're going to have access to this or if somebody already picked it up. I'm not exactly sure. We've been watching so much of that Cerberus and Donawa fight. I didn't able, wasn't really able to track. 
that particular crate individually. Sonics pretty much just controlling the area around uh, Everest. I really like this. Oh, there's an PNC interview. Hold on. And uh, I got to do all the really fun things that Bangkok has to offer. You know, just more focused on the game and being able to, you know, grind with the team and enjoy this tournament. So that's what we're focused on right now. Kickstarter has a lot of strong traits, but by far his best one, I think, is how verbal he is late game. He provides a lot of information for us, and we can make a lot of really good plays based off of it. So expect our late games to be really clean and very good at the end of the game. So, of course, chemistry is going to take a lot of time, uh, but we've been putting in a lot of work and grinding together as a team. So, you know, don't worry about us. We'll be fine, and, you know, expect the Sonics that you should always expect. Thank you guys so much for um, watching us and supporting us. We really appreciate it. From everyone from the Sonics, we, we appreciate you guys so much. So thank you. Keep watching, and stay tuned for PDC 2023. Right up from the Sonics, and we're going to get instead a ton of phase action. They just pushed right up on top of Cerberus. Danua, they are lucky they left that neighborhood, because, man, that is not the place you want to be, is poor Moss just running for his life. Yeah, it's uh, FaZe there coming in and, you know, they have to eventually make a move somewhere and uh, Cerberus was kind of taking their sweet time, licking their wounds after losing one player and FaZe is going to make them pay the price. So great stuff here. I mean, FaZe, I like the aggression I'm seeing. I love yeah. the confidence that I'm seeing from FaZe today. Truly, I'm really impressed and I was impressed with them uh, in the PEC. So great to see that they're able to keep this up. Meanwhile, Donawa actually sent players all the way down to the military island yep. to make rotations through the blue, but they're going to be coming up on the south side, which is wide open, very empty, so at least for now, they'll be safe. Daytrade going to control the top of the Himalayas, and I was going to talk about this earlier, but Sonic's interview, Shrimzy, I get it. You got to talk. That's, that's fine. I like you, so you're allowed. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. Oh, oh more highlights. <laughs> The quest to regroup with your friends. <laughs> one day, one day. Separated at birth, right at the beginning of the round. They may one day <laughs> find each other. <laughs> the long lost Donawa family, yeah. Uh, with the power of friendship. Going to come back and do something in this game. I mean, if they can get more than a couple of points out of this game, it'll be pretty good. Um, you know, it's a tough start. I mean, again, even though you got that one point, if you go, you got that kill, you put yourself in a position where you're very late coming into these rotations. The circle um, is awesome. In, in my opinion, the players might not like it so much, but I really like this because this still has a chance to go north. There is a lot to be talked about inside this one. We still have Everest. Most of George Pole is going to be in play. The bay itself is going to be there. The bridge to the west and George Pole is still going to be an active feature. Hillside's up to the northeast. We still even have the island that's just going to be the west of Rajok. That's a function inside of this one that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, teams that are going to have vision on is going to be day trade up on top of it. Sonics did have one member up here, but they're going to go ahead and extricate themselves down that hillside that's going to be down to the southeast. Now, with this, it looks like it is fairly settled in position for high ground control, but there's a couple of small rotations coming out, and Falcons, I think, yep, they sniffed that this was not going to go their way, turned back around, and that was a narrow miss on Catastrophe. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, they're a little bit lucky there that some of those shots from Ascend didn't connect. I mean, that's that's not the hardest shots in the world there for Micah. Uh, and I don't know, man. It's going to be really interesting now for the Falcons. I mean, frankly, I think they should just stay on the north side, dude, because... Look, it could still go up here. And if you can control maybe, you know, that that bridge over there that's just between, like, the the containers in that North George part, I don't know. Well, there's a lot to look at because we still have the river. We still have the base. So whenever we look at how the circles could be shifting, nothing is good or right, right? You know, there's still way too much water inside yeah. this. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the circle decides to act off of the behaviors with it. Uh, most of our teams that were kind of on the outside starting to creep their way in now. Uh, you can see that to the north, Exo is going to be having to contend up against D plus Kia. Tai Lu is going to be on the opposing side of Exo all the way over into the east. FaZe is starting to make their approach down in the south. They're going to be kind of eyeing where that Sonic's line is going to be. But uh, oddly enough, for what was a 
a, a pretty big, oh, hey, this is why we haven't seen Danawa together. They're together. They managed to find a way to fly to safety. Yeah, they got an emergency pickup, and uh, immediately. Safety. <laughs> are you serious? 7-7. Seven, seven. He's bonkers today. He gets another <laughs> one. Oh, wow. He is just unloading from that position right now. Danawa thought that they had it landed safe. Are we going to be able to see a shift over? Day tries up on top of this. They don't want the aggression just quite yet. They couldn't get there, and that is fortunate for Danawa. Well, Salute has to get over there to make sure that Daytrade doesn't try to steal those knocks because it's going to take a while to get both those players back up. That's really, really devastating there for Danawa. 7-7 seven, seven is clearly on one right now, so hopefully we can get some more first-person views of him. Now, Rezes have been able to come through, so Salute able to kind of peacock his way to keeping Daytrade on the other side of this mountain. That is the most PUBG thing I've seen in a while. You kind of get hot dropped. You have to separate. You send a couple of guys over to Military Base Island. You manage to find emergency pickup. You land. You think that you're safe. And the moment your feet touch the ground, it's like, nope, knocks come out, lose one of your members. But it does look like they're at least trying to defend up this. They're realizing the fact that, okay, yeah, somebody's probably up here. They probably saw a day trade on their land coming in. And, oh, circle of shifts. We're keeping Everest and Georgia Pole. Mm -mm -mm. I like it. Absolutely. Belmoth going to be watching down on top of Donova. Donova really can't do much peeking because Tiamba's making them pay any time uh, that they show their heads. Exo just really controlling the northern area, but that is going to be leaving the next circle as Phase 3 has shifted down to the Himalayas, so we will be going south of the river for this next one. And Exo does have Tyloo. Tyloo also similar to Tiamba in some ways. Um, Tyloo also very edge heavy, uh, very much playing for late game circles, but likes to come in and try to control space. But that's going to be tough. I, I think Avenger hit a really good point on the desk at the beginning of the show today that this is going to be a very edge heavy lobby because a lot of these teams in here, that's the way they like to play regionally. A lot of teams are going to do what works for them regionally here because it's what got you here. So, you know, don't you know, don't break what's, you know, already working. I mean, whenever you kind of come to Thailand, I mean, you got to make sure that you're playing for some type of edging, right? I mean, it's it's the, the strongest way to try to perform right now. Is it's the APAC, have, you know, it is APAC, so you got That's true. Yeah. I mean, so we, we do have a phase that's going to be coming in south on it. Tyloo catching some air. Going to try to hump, skip and jump over what looks like it's going to be XO. Uh, these seven going to have a difficult path in front of it. Don't not forget, Moss is still alive, too. <laughs> yes, I mean, one of the best oh players in the no. world this year. This is Tyler, right on top of him. This ain't free, bro. This oh ain't no. free. Landing right on top. Ace is already over here. T5's on the outside of it. Are they going to be able to make landfall? They do somehow rolling into some form of safety. Ty Lu, what? Now, here's the thing. I I'd love to know how many frag grenades Kilyakai has because potentially you could get a couple in here and do some pretty decent damage. There's more people in the air. Ty Lu's turn potentially to do some damage to the Falcons who are screaming across and they are going to not want to do anything there. They're going to go for the mountain. They might be going right for Donawa. They're going to have to go south. Okay. Uh, what? Maybe go for that dip just on the outskirts of it. Make sure that they can deny some sight line on it. But that's not going to be too comfortable. So remember, this is where Tiemba was just absolute lighting. Look at that mini map right now. There is just bullets coming from everywhere. Falcons just scrambling on that landing. Do at least manage to make landfall, but it is not going to be comfortable for a while now is what we still have T5 and Tiemba both just lighting them up. There they you nailed it, dude. There's a lot of people looking at this, and Anonix is going to be the first one to scoop up a point off of it. Another player was knocked for the Falcon, so Sills and DraftKing still in the smoke, still trying to cling to some kind of space in here, but there's just not enough of the northern part of the circle cut out yet that you can play uh, these scratch marks in the side of the Himalayas uh, safely just yet. V7 going to try to make a move here. Now, they had a little bit of space on the edge, but with the Sonics there, with SSG, uh, in the ruins area. They're going to try to go a little bit deeper. I don't know exactly where they think they're going, though, Matt. There is not a lot of space here. Oh, Everest stays in. My God. This is just going to get more and more compacted. SSG, Sonics, V7, all going to have to fight. Petrichor Road already trying to hold them back. You can see V7 trying to make that pathing. They're going to run right up next to where D plus Kia is going to be. Tiemba, it's too many targets, man. If you want to shoot everybody and there's like 30 people driving by, which one do you pick? Not sure, but... Uh, a classic thing is happening in the kill feed, NA on NA action, but a grenade up and over from Glads finds Americano. So V7 here trying to find some space to breathe, and it's going to be their Korean brethren on the other side who are suffering. Now some grenades from 
D plus trying to find the mark, doing a little bit of damage, but not finding any knocks but, themselves. But nobody can peek. They keep hitting like something with a nade, and you want to go over and go for the flush, but it's gonna be Tiemba at range that has them held down. Danawa wants to look this direction, but they're having to contend up what's going on with Petrichor Rogue. They're looking back down at T5. There's just bullets flying over the entirety of this firefight that is essentially just happening in the shade of all of the overhead stuff that's just going on. And we've still got 15 teams left in this lobby, so there it just is four. I know. There just isn't much to work with, dude. They are able to get the res on the glass here, but like you were saying, nobody can really poke up when Overventus is trying, and he's taking damage from like four different players. What do you do? Like, you, you've got an opponent a grand total of five meters away. Finally, Glass steps up. He's manages to get something out of this catastrophe before he goes down. And now, just down to two members, D plus Kia, at least you got some breathing room. Well, I mean, you do still technically have Ubo just a couple of meters away. That's that savvy veteran play from Glass. By the way, it used to be called Nefiex. Nefiex, if you were a fan of the BWS. Sozin just putting some shots into SSG, took some damage oh from the God. Sonics earlier. Now they're going to crash right into XO, Matt. This is going to be uh, wild. Is, what do you even do? SSG's just trying to run up the hillside because there are no options. Roth clinging to life, crests up that hill, jumps out, manages to find something. This exact same thing is happening back behind. Now Petrichor Road's going to be running up where Dana was going to be on the opposing part of this hillside. That's the only reason this is slowed down for just one second. And Roth even managed to get in position. Nades out coming for Petrichor Road, and they are just lobbing up the side of that. Everest and connecting. Yeah, Loki down first. Now Anonix going to be throwing one. Aches left pretty weak. If that's on the money, he's got a knock coming. Summer's down from Salute as well. And there's Ming going down. Salute traded quickly by Aches left. It is just chaos everywhere. You're having to fight for every scrap of land, and it's all going to be vertical. Nox trying to cling to life, looking for every single angle that he can to try to protect, but he is going to go down. Danawa eliminated Petrichor Road. Five kills, clinging to life, but guess what? Tiamba now making a shift into this exact same position. Beautiful timing here from Tiamba. This is a very easy potential couple points. They're going to be able to scoop up. The Sonics are also trying to figure out exactly where this was, or maybe trying to get ahead of Tiamba's rotation, one or the other there. Pow Pow going to be letting oh. loose with the grenade. 7-7 seven, seven as well, letting them fly. And actually, 7-7 seven, seven and Pow Pow both finding the mark. This is just so chaotic up on this hillside. And you got to fight for Everest because this is going to be moving into a no man's land in the northern part of Everest. Falcons are going to get eliminated. Tiemba realizing, okay, we're still defended up. We've got Sonics on one side of us. It is just a cluster of teams held up over here. Petrichor Road trying to make their way in. 7-7 seven, seven does go down. Finally, something coming up in the way of these teams trying to contend up against what Tiemba's trying to do up here. Yeah, exactly. Tiggleton saving the life of the Sonics, at least for now, but I don't know how easy it is going to be to get these reses because these members of the Sonics are more towards Tiamba than he is, so it's going to have to be a hero play from the superstar for the Sonics. And even then, day trade back behind this so much to have to contend with Tiamba creeping through, wanting to make sure that they can get every bit of these kills that they can. Tickleton does have the high ground to work with, but Belmont's going to be back behind him, has got to be so, so cautious. Yes, he still does have one member, but what do you even do? You know it's a three-man squad coming after you in this extremely rocky section of what we're looking at with Everest, and you still have day trade in front. Maybe just try to sneak down, play that southern area of it, try to, like, sneak away and ride it out for a second. Maybe you can try to find something Woo. happening over here, but Belmont shuts that down on Tiamba's push. Yeah, exactly. This is, you know, really smart here by Tiggleton because he knows that there's there's kind of this dead zone between him and day, uh, day trade where day trade can't really see him. So he can use that to funnel Tianba into day trade sight lines, give them the ability to do some damage to Tiamba, to at least give Tiggleton the ability to get deeper into this game, uh, potentially get placement points, maybe get a few kills, who knows. Day Trade, you know, you can see they're they're fully watching this edge. They're not going to push over that hill, because as soon as they start coming down that hill, that gives the advantage to Tiamba potentially in a firefight, so they have to stay put, and Tiggleton knows it. There's three different areas of conflict that we're looking at right now. The top of Everest and what's kind of going on over here. Then there's the ones that are hiding just in the north in the, the rock recesses of what's happening in Everest. And then Crates still has... Ace, it has Tyloo, it has T5 over there. There's a lot to be keeping an eye on, but the Everest fight is going to dictate a lot of the control in this open area. So whoever ends up being king of the mountain, king of the hill, whatever you want to call it over here, is going to have the vision to work with and what's going to be happening inside of this next circle. So that's why this is oh so pivotal for these teams to try to navigate as cleanly as possible. And yes, now look, Tiampa has stepped away, and that means that Tickleton is safe for now.
yeah, I mean, he made a really smart move. Uh, you know, this is kind of that veteran savvy play that you expect from a player of Tiggleton's caliber who's, you know, just grinds like nobody's business. I mean, one of the hardest workers in PUBG Esports, and that's why he's been one of the top fraggers through just about everything he's played in this year and in, in a lot of other events as well. The guy is absolutely incredible. XO still kicking, man. I'm excited to see what they can do. DK just kind of stuck in two different Ooh. divots there on the Ooh. other side. And yeah, this is going into that area you were just talking about a little bit ago, Matt. There's not a lot to play for in this circle. There's a few trees here and there, a few rocks, but you know, other than what's left of the mountainside itself, everything's pretty flat. Game one, Potato Hill. Game two, Everest. What is this? We're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to make our way over to Stolberman. It has just been popping off on these verticality fights as now all of our crates teams are going to have to leave. Our Everest teams are going to have to shift down a bit. You can see Flash going to be coming over here, but Corexi's already waiting for it. Just steps right into the spray. Corexi, though, does take a pretty decent amount of damage. Has to be careful. Here comes oh, the oh, 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 oh. oh, just jumps down the hillside. Does get the knock, does get the flush. Needs to make sure that he's moving down very, very aggressively into this. I love that play from Boochills. Knew he had him super weak, gets another one. Gustav down as well. Pow Pow finds a double on the XO on the back side of all this, Puchils gets taken down super low. It's just Fex left for FaZe. And it just like that, it turned on its head. Day trade now getting control over this high ground area. And what, oh, what are you going to do, Fex? You're, luckily, Kreitz is getting left out, so he has at least some safety for his back at the time. And looks like he's trying to crest through this one. A well-cooked nade right now. Could be big. Does get the knock on to one. Puchils can't quite find the angle. Step up into it. Can Fex exploit this? Does manage to pick up one before he goes down. Nice piece of work there from Fex. Really keeping day trade from potentially running away with this game. And by the way, Exal doing some things, <laughs> oh taking God. down the hometown favorites of T5. Exal able to get all four players here. I was a little bit worried about them. There's potentially a player who was a, a little bit sick, but Patapong gonna take down Jangu. D plus out in eighth place. At least they get a placement point. All right, Ace making their move across, realizing they don't want to be out in the open, so they're just going to send it across. Exalto lining them up. Chris at least managed to take down Uba, but it came at a massive cost, man. Just trying to pick up whatever you can inside of this absolute mess along the sides of Everest, man. This is just crazy. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Art, the only one left now for Exalt. Oh, I take it back. He's dead. That's the IGL. Patapong <laughs> going down himself. Tiggleton striking. Lurking from the shadows, finally springing to life, and Pow Pow from downtown just knocks Zhao Yang back to the lobby. Pow Pow putting out that pew pew right now, just absolutely demolishing people as now. What are you going to do, Ty Lee? You've got a tree and a couple more to work with and some smokes. It's going to be about utility. Luckily, a lot of this fighting has been happening inside of lot crevices, stuff like that. So a decent amount of utility should be held by these teams to contend with how open this next set of circles are going to be. Yeah, and oh my god, pow pow, oh. what is that? Oh. What is that spray from that range? A grenade there, just not able to quite get enough underneath that car to do damage over the top of the hill. Another one's bouncing in. I think that's just a, a, a flash or something in there. And well, it's a blue zone, excuse me. That's right, the, whi the white ones are the blue zones. The blue lines are the flash oh, grenades. The and Molotov. that's a great molly from ZYY. Finishes them both. 13 kills after what they did in game one. Tiemba, man, are absolutely cooking. And they have control over the circle. They're the only, okay, they have one player inside the circle, but they're the only team that has one player inside the circle. They might win back to back to start this thing. I mean, what a what a great entry into this event for them. But Daytrade might have something to say about this. If they could get a win, that'd be huge. Pow Pow just absolutely mm. obliterates Ty Lu. I mean, they weren't in a great spot. They were stuck on a tree. It wasn't too hard for Pow Pow, for a player of his caliber, uh, to find those two players right next to each other. But still, nice piece of work from him. And this is why we've been highlighting this guy, why we've been talking about him as a huge fantasy pickup. Seven kills now in this game. But look at this, 15 kills for Tiamba. They now have circle control. They use the vehicle, shifted down that hillside. Everybody else is fighting on Everest. So, well, I say everybody else. It's day trade in Tiggleton. Uh, he's got the high ground that he's working with right now. And what can he do with it? It's going to be ZYY that's at least pushing into that position. 
But anything that Tig manages to accomplish here is just going to make Tiemba's job that much easier to close this out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I think Daytrade knows it. They catch him out. Oh, oh Tig! Tig! Oh, he only got one, but he got he got so beat up there from the grenades and the shots that he's not able to do any more damage. I think if he's got about 50 or 60 more HP there, he might be able to pull off the double, but instead, Daytrade is going to go for the res, and look at this Tiamba, so proactive. That knock yeah. may have just cost Daytrade the game. And I mean, ZYY coming up right back behind him. Knows exactly what to look at. Going to hit some shots into Belmont. At least scare him away. Daytrade, they have nowhere to go. They're already pinched. They're stuck on the side of Everest. They've got a down member in their hands just trying to figure out where they can go, and Pow Pow, who's absolutely been lighting people up, is just holding down the center, waiting for something to show its face. And I mean, Puchils, you can't. I mean, you can't get him at this stage. It, it's just you're just trying to stay ahead of the blue zone. Yeah, the, the, the mechanical display, display, <laughs> oh, display. That's like me combining spraying with display. Hey, a good spray <laughs> is a display. I there like you go. That. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Tickleton is going to get a kill there. Find his fifth in the match. Belmont has Pow Pow. Oh, that just opened up this game. Can Daytrade turn it back around? Now using this position, they've got the low ground. They've got the circle control. And now DIY has to fight his way down in the open. Hits the shots. And with this, we're in a 1v1 flash one side of Creep it up. Oh. No! Deny Tiamba again! Back to back win for Tiamba! Tenacious, insane, gifted mechanically. Holy. Oh, this is just. They are on fire right now. This is an astounding performance from them to kick this off. Dude, I am blown away with Tiamba. I. There's nothing else to say. They are on one. Every player on that team is cracked right now. Uh, yeah. That. What else? Can, the fact that they managed to fight back. Pow Pow had that circle on lock, man. And they hit some crucial shots onto him, opened it up, and then just pulled everything apart. Let's go ahead and throw it over the analyst's desk to break down so much of that match. We're back, game number two is done, and Tiamba shows us they came to play. Everyone on the team firing all cylinders. In fact, at the end of the last game, we had a little bit of fun with Pow Pow's numbers, and he took that personally. He yeah. came out on this one to show that he himself is a superstar. As we go over the highlights, a big shout out to ZYY. Also, this is a player who Huge doesn't clutch. have a lot of quote unquote S tier experience, and he's clutching it out. Yeah, that's crazy. Really good play by him, of course, to be able to take the one versus two on, even though he took a hit shot. But yeah, super well executed here, and I gotta say, a back to back from Tianba on Grube, I did not expect that. I did not see that coming, but Guffies. It's just coming. I mean, they came to play. There are some folks who are maybe playing a little slower on the gas. Tianba is not interested. They have been putting up the fights, they have been taking them, and they have been winning them. And every single move that we've seen them make has been strong. By the same token, you're seeing it here. Day Trade has also had two incredible games back to back, third place and second, respectively. They came to play. I mean, I don't know if that's the hometown squad pumping them up in the background, but exactly. man, these guys are on fire. Yeah, Tianbao, you can see super big mm -hmm. celebrations here coming on from Tianbao. Good to see. And <laughs> Pao Pao almost got left hanging, but he was like, oh, give it give it to me. Oh, saved, uh, saved, uh, saved him saved at the end. Uh, saved it just like in the game. Yeah. Saved him at the end. Exactly there. Good <laughs> to see Pao Pao <laughs> popping off. And yeah, mm -hmm. huge fantasy pick. And a little bit sad now after two games that I didn't uh, end, up, end up going with him as well. But yeah. yeah, he's definitely a huge pick. And I had to differentiate a little bit, a little bit. To, 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 you know, not pick that. To, to make sure you can see if you can get ahead of some of the other you guys. But yeah, you're happy. You're happy for him. I am. Welcome back to the desk. My name's Tavis. I'm joined by Avenger here. We're talking about that struggle with sort of when you talk about fantasy, who do you pick on the bottom or sort of the cheaper players? Pow Pow was, I think, underpriced. And that's oh, yeah, what we saw sure. here in this game is he has that clutch potential. He knows how to make those plays. And I mean, honestly, his team seems like they are playing on another level. Now, my question is, there is a lot of PUBG ahead. We've played our first two games. Will they keep it going? I hope so, but we don't really know. It doesn't matter. They've got so many points right now. They got so many points already. Like the morale boost and the confidence boost, just off that alone, is literally. I'm like, okay, they're going to they're going to win this bracket. Like, yeah. I feel like that's already at this point here. Like, if you're starting that strong. <laughs> 
There's no way you're going to throw it. Right. It's only 10 more games. I mean, 40 points. To start, I mean, literally, 20, 20 points is considered a, a great game in PUBG, and that's what they're averaging you know, 27 per game right this now. game. There's 47 wow. in two games. Like, that's just wild. Wow. 2,000 damage. Good to see here. Got a good amount of utility coming in. But yeah, they trade, as you said here, second place after their third of the previous run, right? Good, good run for them for an, the home turf team here. So good to see. But yeah, still, it was a, it was a game that they could potentially have a... They could potentially have the, the done a little bit better with. Absolutely. I mean, again, 17 kills is absolutely crazy. Remember, only 64 players jump out of airplanes. Four of them are on your team, and you can't <laughs> kill them. That means 17 of 60 possible kills went the way of this team. Pow Pow comes Impressive. out so strong. I'm sure once we get to man of the match, he is going to be featured on that. 778 damage. Still making sure that he plays the tank role, though. 434 taken. Pow Pow out there in front when he needs to be. But I do want to give a shout to ZYY. He is the guy that has been added to this roster, has stepped up, and like you said, if you go over, if you, I encourage you right now, go over to the internet, look up what he's played for before. He's always sort of been a filler on rosters, a substitute, and he's blowing us out of out of the park. Here it is, though, man of the match, Pow Pow, well deserved. Yeah, exactly. Good to see Pow Pow here coming in, popping off. You know, seven kills and 700 plus damage, almost 800. So yeah, again, clutch situation for him here. Good to see CYY come in and, and clutching it up in a run versus two situation with day trade like that's just that's just gonna put so much more points on the board for you of course and, and a clutch for them yep you can hear the crowd cheering though that was uh that was a day trade win in the crowd's heart that's for sure oh absolutely i mean if you're a fan who lives here in thailand and you're coming to visit you're gonna be pretty happy with day trade's performance yeah. there's the match leaderboard for you guys to take a look at right 47 now 47 points for tian but i cannot believe it 27 for this one here yep. 20 from the last one that's just incredible Good to see day trade yep. out there, of course. 15 for them. Sonic's 10, another, another good game. game for them, yeah. So again, there's uh, a it, lot of uh, double dippers here. And in Therathon, these. Therathon 5 got fourth. I mean, the other yep. hometown team to make a comeback here and get themselves 15 points is going to be very exciting for everyone. I think a lot of fans were not so happy when those two teams in the region ended up in the same group. Also, a shock on the bottom. Yeah, Cerberus and Danua, again, having a rough go of things. Yeah, two first games, of course, in a, in a hot drop situation, of course, a little bit unfortunate. So, yeah, good to... Uh, Hopefully, aren't good for them that they're gonna be. We're gonna be jumping over to another map now, so yeah, we're gonna true. see. We're gonna see that they kind of a little bit of a mental reset, and mm -hmm. of course. Hopefully not uh, be in a contested situation. Otherwise, Absolutely. you're not making it out of the group stage in the winners break. And now's where we switch it up, right? We head to those two maps that have been added recently. Right, Their first right. time this year, Vikendi and Tego in rotation. Vikendi has proven challenging for some teams to adjust. Maybe polar bears haven't been as impactful as we people thought they would be initially. But the storm, things like that, it's have, more an annoyance. It is an annoyance. I think Vikendi is a map of annoyances in some ways, and players have to learn to deal with that. But I do think it gives a chance for teams like maybe Cerberus to do a hard reset, to say maybe we're not contested here. Maybe we can sort of say, you know what, Orangle's done for the day. Let's look at something else. I think what I like the most about Tega and Candy is that you come into these two new new maps in a situation where you are not as prepared as you are in Orangle Miramar. You don't know the map as well. You're gonna you're gonna be driving around, you're gonna be seeing new stuff, and you're gonna be having new tendencies with the circle. You're gonna see circles they didn't expect kind of coming at you. So yeah. that's one thing that I'm really excited to see like at the very highest level at PGC you're gonna have some situations where like teams are gonna do stuff that other teams have never seen before like mm -hmm. there's a guy on top of this hill or whatever it's gonna be crazy we'll be back after this break with game number three Unleash my shopping spree. Duty free from big brands. At all King Power stores. And King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions, and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Autobots forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their car. With my magic, the night will turn. Enemies beware, my era is coming for you.
ยื่นหนึ่งมันไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทำแค่ตั้งใจและสนุกกับมันเท่าแก่น้อยตอบโจทย์ทุกไลฟ์สไตล์แบรนด์สาหร่ายยอดขายอันดับหนึ่งถ้าสาหร่ายต้องเท่าแก่น้อยไม่ต้องกลัวSaying the fact that it was going to be a wild start to everything, but I was not expecting Tiemba to just absolutely be demolishing the group of death. I feel like I'm back in uh, like early PCS days for Asia right now. I mean, this is what we saw at times back in those early like PCS Charity Showdown, PCS One mm -hmm. days for Tiemba, where they would just come in and slam teams. And uh, you know, this is really interesting for a whole lot of reasons. Obviously, Lin Shu. One of the all-time great shot callers, one of the all-time great players we have in PUBG Esports history. Now he's got like some players, you know, they've been kind of shifting things around. Longsker uh, wasn't even brought here to this event, uh, a player who's been really, really strong for them. But you can see that bringing in ZYY a couple months ago into this roster, a brand new player, never played in an international event before, and he clutches that chicken dinner. I mean, on top of that, we just have to realize we're now done with Arangel for the day and we're on our way to Vikindi. So it's a, it's got to now do the next evolution. Like what have these teams been saving in the couple of times that they've been playing around in Vikindi? What new strategies might they try to bring out? We were going to have storms that we're going to have to contend with. There is a whole new level of just 
strategy that's going to have to evolve at this stage. Yeah, and this is still a map that teams have told me they're still trying to figure out exactly. They, they're, they're trying to get kind of a feel for it. They're trying to get the pulse of it. You know, does it play more like Erangel? Does it play more like Miramar? Those are kind of the, always the baselines of what teams compare these things <laughs> yeah. to. It's kind of like a mix of both in a lot of ways. There's a fair amount of foliage uh, on Vikendi, and there's a fair amount of kind of terrain to work with, but it's not as... The thing about it that isn't nearly as similar to Miramar is it's a lot more drivable off-road than Miramar is. Like, that's the complaint that a lot of people have about Miramar is it's hard to drive. But the thing that makes Miramar so good is that because it's hard to drive, it's also a lot more fun in the late game because there's a lot more hills and crap to work with. So that's like kind of the, the double-edged sword of Miramar that Vikendi is a little bit more forgiving on. Well, we also do have like the more open sight lines that Erangel can sometimes exactly. provide. But that's mitigated by the storm coming in at different stages of what's going to be going on in the action is we've seen that in a lot of the qualifier rounds moving into this that the storm coming in in that mid-stage whenever usually you'd be going for more ranged harassment and start trying to do the attrition war and kick that off, you're denied that. And instead, it turns into a lot more of a, a foot fire fight where people are like peeking yeah. over right next to him to try to get control over the territory before they have to make the next rotation. Exactly, Matt. And the other thing to keep in mind is that it's easier to see into the storm than out of it. So if you're in the storm, you're actually kind of doubly in trouble because mm -hmm. teams outside of it can actually see you much better than you can see them. In a lot of cases, you can't even see outside the storm. So that's kind of the, the, the real potential issue that you have. FaZe has come out swinging in the early parts of the game, haven't been able to translate it into super successful late parts of the game. Now, that being said, some really nice stuff individually we've seen from them. Fex, we know these guys are cracked. We know what they can do. Donawa has been caught up uh, in early game hot dropping, so they haven't been able to put stuff together. And you can see Lin Shu giving us the glasses because this guy's got the big brain. He is absolutely the, you know, the main character of this story right now. Well, a core component to what we're seeing be success for teams that are climbing on the leaderboard right now is kill points because it has just been so chaotic in the later stages. Sure, scrapping here or there and being able to get a placement point is going to do you good. Like Tig managing to survive with that really smart counter move that he made yeah. on top of Everest that did buy them stuff. But in comparison to the 16 kills that they've got versus their seven placement points, you can see that the lion's share of that is going to be, yes, okay, we've got to be killing early. And, I mean, again, as we're looking across this, what, we're looking at phase you mentioned just a second ago, no placement points right now, but presently inside of seventh place, just off of kills. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's all you need to do in this phase of the tournament. You just need to get yourself in that top eight, get into that bracket. So, you know, how you do it doesn't matter. As long as you've got the points, who cares? Uh, what's really interesting here, just kind of filtering through some of the stats I'm looking through on Twire, right now, three out of the top four top rated Twire players Artiampa, number well, one. I mean, number yeah. one, ZYY. Number two, seven seven. Number three, Lin Shu. And then Tiggleton at fourth with a really nice, uh, you know, couple games for himself there individually for the Sonic. So finally, I picked Tiggleton at the group stage. Every PGC. And let's be honest, Sonics don't always do me the best in the group stage. Finally, he manages to do it. See, I was a believer. That's good. You should be. I, I, I think you should be a believer in the Sonics. I think a lot of people's tier list coming into this event didn't have Sonics in their S tier, and I kind of, I, I sort of get why people are doing that, but I kind of didn't agree. I thought, you know, they've had enough time with Kickstart now that they should be able to do it. A lot of cheers coming through for day trade as you expect. Yeah. Almost able to get that win. I thought Flash had ZYY dead to rights underneath it, but somehow ZYY was able to turn on him. Man, this has been a mechanics ending for so many of these. Like, the, we, we search, sure. Whenever we get to PGC, you're supposed to see top tier mechanics. But how fast we've seen some flicks come into play, the scrappiness and the, the uh, unrelenting desire to want to give up has just been a core component for so many of these team successes that we're seeing in the top eight. And like you said, we're looking at points per game right now. This is the group stage. So just being able to scrap together three, four points on a game that's just going terribly is a huge win moving forward. Exactly. That's that's the name of the game a lot of times is, is just making when, you know, because not every game can go your way. There's just too much going on in PUBG. So it's making the most out of those situations when the points aren't necessarily going to be going in your favor. So Exalt did get all four players here. I didn't really get a lot of time to talk about it, but Art was not feeling well. But he was able to kind of power through and get through. Now, Matrum, time for some Vikendi. Let's go, baby. Oh, we heading into the snow, and it's about to be fun. I've been really enjoying these Vikendi games. We'll be making our way through all the action. Plane path is going to be pretty far down at South Center and going to be moving up to the northeast. So get a bit of everything on this plane path is, uh, I mean, 
I have to say, I, I, I've got you here. Yeah. Tanawa's performance has been the one that's the most startling as it has been a struggle for them to kind of find their way in all of the chaos. Yeah, and we haven't really seen them be able to put on that mechanical god tier display that I kind of hinted at uh, earlier with the TDM matches that I didn't really fully get to explain because things have just been so freaking nuts <laughs> uh, to start this. Uh, but. You might need to recap that. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't so, know if they, I don't know if they caught you. There were some TDM matches that were played, some fun ones that Gunnar set up, the coach for Sonics. They did one where it was the two two Korean teams put together, Dono on V7. They smoked everybody. Uh, Soul and Heaven and those guys were all just clapping. Um, so, like, the rest of the, like, regions and the teams were really scared all of a sudden because they're like, geez, these Koreans play so, so well. We, they, like, we have to split them up because we can't just play against them uh, on their own. But... Really, again, Donawa is going to be competing for a lot of drop spots here in all the maps, is what I've been told. And look, master strategy is coming out from TDM practice, yeah. making sure to split up Danawa and force them not to be able to land and go into 2-2 right off the get-go. Aha! That's going to be how it goes to Un. Oh, well, I guess oh. that's going to be how we start this one off. Oh. Ah. So, and that's going to be correct. So going to go ahead and be sent down, uh, flushed out by cars, and is that going to be an... Oh, I don't know. Vex? Vex has got some goals, Wait, it looks like. There's someone in here with him. Yep. He's got a yep. He's got a player from the other team with him. He's just kind of watching he's this go. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, unofficial. Well, I mean, look. Right? Is that right? Is there? I see different colors on the map. I can't quite yeah, no, tell. No, no, no. You're it right. Is, I Ming am is okay. Driving, I'm not crazy. It is Vex Ming. is in the car. Okay. What uh, is happening? PGC. And let's keep in mind, this now circle is all the way down to the southeast. We'll deal with that in a second. Um, all right. At this point, this Uber is not really going where FX wants it to. I'd say it's at least one star, maybe two. He, I mean, his friend already just was a casualty of the driving situation. Oh, doesn't even let FX out. <laughs> That's okay, FX. You won in my heart. I don't even understand. This has been a, just a very wild day. Is every game just game six scrims? Is that what's going on right now? I mean, Patrick or Road, every right to do what they did. I mean, Correxy was out there, couldn't win the drop for the vehicle, and they tried to save him by, you know, ramming the other vehicle out of the way before it ran him over, but it was just too little too late, so Faze there, we've been singing their praises, but they lose two players early here on Vikendi. Uh, yeah, I mean, now let's deal with the circle, because as you can see, Faze is just barely inside the circle, and that's going to be Gustav, as Jeems is not inside the circle. This is about, I don't know, a third the way down Vikendi to the south. As a good, I would say a good 25% of the circle looks like it's water, eh, maybe closer to like 20. But it, it's going to mean the fact that Sonics are going to have key position at the start. Day trade, T5, a lot of our early fragging squads are going to be in a comfortable position and territory control going into this. Yeah, I'm actually really happy about this circle, Matt, because I have only gotten to cast three Vikendis so far because... I did PNC, and uh, we had three Vikendis there. That was it. <laughs> so that was the only three I've gotten. All three of them were, like, dead center, like, right around, like, that, that middle grassy valley. And now I finally get to see something different. So personally, I'm very excited about this circle. should be really interesting. Uh, you know, the castle here offers you some kind of, you know, high ground and protection early, potentially. Day trade's going to be fanning out for what looks like kind of a, 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 a split. But I think we got a highlight coming up here. Set up the pathing on how some of our squads managed to make it into the stage. So it's, I think, get an eye on what how Sonic's managed to get here. Players spray down trips. He already done the half HP. Now it's all the Tiggleton show once again. Find themselves in the center. Shrimsy now going for the play. He will find the knock. Only he will check in with the uh, the weatherman as we proceed here. Kickstart will find Poonage. Shark shot is going to be spotted out. He's going to go down. So elevate can't make landfall after their reposition. H one. All right, picking up a couple of kills from the Sonics and how they managed to make their way through. They also have a nearby friend in Falcons that's getting pretty close to them, T5. Going to be a bit more to the northeast from their position, about, what, six, 700 meters away, somewhere in that range. But we're starting to get into, again, center meta strong. Everybody kind of gets into this position, turns out, looks at everybody that's going to be coming in, and it's just going to be a wave of gate-kept points. Now, the circle does provide more options for gatekeeping as we do have the water, we do have those roads along the outsides of it, a lot more options. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, again, the driving off-road isn't as bad as Miramar, but it's still, it can be a little tricky. The snow can be, you know, a little bit unforgiving at times, but for the most part, 
the teams aren't I, they, they don't complain to me about this map with the driving. I'll put it that way Look, uh, compared to Miramar. I'm so. from Texas, man. Yeah. Anytime I see driving on ice, I get a little bit nervous. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can't handle that stuff. Meanwhile, I'm just like, ice, yeah, let's go. Like We do this on a, a day that ends in Y in Wisconsin, my friend. <laughs> Truth. So we'll see Petrocore Road making their rotations in. They are going to have Danawa, who uh, we just mentioned a second ago, having some struggles in the early game. And it looks like Petrocore Road going to try to continue. Almost a bit targeted in this as now Danaway is going to have to shift to the south. We do have a couple of storms also showing up as our eye in the sky going to have, it looks like, a couple of different options moving out. But nothing looks like it's going to be threatening the circle too much. Yeah, th those, uh, those storms fortunately aren't really impacting any of the teams uh, in this stage of the game. Petrocore Road uh, just going to be lo loading up, you know, kind of switching around. It's really important these days, by the way, uh, to make sure that you're loading up your vehicles with extra supplies, whether that be mortars, whether that be Panzerfaust, uh, whether that be extra like level two helmets and vests that you find along the way, uh, to make sure that you can kind of extend your fights potentially if you can keep your vehicles alive into the game. So that's actually made vehicles even more important with the added ability to carry uh, capacity inside of them. Uh, so that's something that a lot of players are really keen about, something that uh, that Trevor, the coach for LG, was really stressing to me that he likes about Mime coming over to the team was that Mime is really proactive about making sure that the vehicles are topped off with like extra gear, extra utility, all these things that mm -hmm. kind of extend your life in games. Now they're not here right now, but that was somebody who at least like mentioned that to me that I thought that was really interesting that, you know, it's something you may not see a lot yeah. on the screen. You guys aren't seeing it because we just can't show it. It's There's just too much action going on. Sorry, we can't. Way too much. And not necessarily fun to watch somebody run over there and open a trunk, but it is going on. Uh, if you want to have a better chance of actually catching that, as keep in mind, we do have the map feed that's going. Of course, the main program that we've got happening right here. But if you go over to PUBGesports.com, we've got Sonics, Danua, Date Trade, Tiemba, Petrichor Road, and Tyloo that you can go watch their perspective all the way through. So if I. I might be tempted to go there and see what's going on. Too. Imagine if you're watching Tiamba today. Yeah, what a what a treat you're getting. Uh, yeah, I mean you can pick up a couple of those, but the problem with it is, is whenever you're watching Tiamba right now, it's like, oh, that's a great move if I could hit those shots. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if only. Uh, Maladuct has been playing really well, by the way. I've been hearing a lot of th good mm -hmm. things about him. He had a couple of big uh, kills in that previous game for Exalt. So glad they're up to all four players again. Art was able to get here today. There was an early situation with him in the first game where he was still trying to recover uh, to get himself here. It was able to do so. That's awesome. I'm very happy for Exalt. I love to see them at all four up and running, especially with Uva in there. We are, we're going to talk about that a lot, rightly so. And over by Decamesto, you've got a couple different teams around here. you got Petrogor Road kind of sandwiched between the Korean squads, the D-plus Kia and Donawa, but right now uh, they are not really super close to each other. It looks closer on the map than it really is, but nobody really flirting with any danger there. It's Ty Lu going to be coming in late as usual. Again, a very edge team, but so is Tiamba, and they could potentially be vying for some of that space up on the northern side. Yeah, uh, again, center meta continues as it's just going to be a, a plenty easy pathing to get on that. We don't even have anybody that's playing around the castle line, and that's no big surprise. Uh, our latecomers into this circle are going to be a sin that's going to be over into the east. We've got Tyloo that's going to be coming in pretty much due north, and Cerberus that's going to be coming over next to Deca. So that's mostly what we're going to be trying to keep an eye on. But Tiamba playing that kind of northeastern area, as we can see them making their rotation right now. So with Tiamba kind of coming over here, they might bump into Tyloo or Ace, depending on how that path comes out for them. Yeah, that's a good point. Now that they kind of wrap the other way, and now every, like a lot of teams are going onto that eastern road, and Exalt is actually sort of pseudo camping. Talking, about, You were talking about it earlier, those rotation traps that teams will set up on those roads. Uh, Exalt, I don't know if they're necessarily doing that, but by default, they're going to be doing that with their position. Donawa still scoping out what's going on uh, Ooh, with Petrichor well, Road. Yeah, Ace and Tyloo look like they're about to bump into each other, and depending on how the, that path is going to be happening right next to that city, so that could lead to some small skirmishes. Service making their approach, and yep, there we go. It's, it's going to be Tyloo that's just a bit ahead, but Ace not wanting to get too involved in no surprise blue zone fight. Shin has stopped out and is kind of eyeing what's going on over here. But uh, those shots are going to connect, and now it's going to be he's going to be in a touch of trouble. He's going to go ahead and get flushed out, and Ty Lu rewarded for some perseverance and trying to stick through the city fight. Yeah, Mika going to pay the price again. We talked about Ty Lu Tiambo. Oh my God! Ooh. 
That is a hard shift. That is hellacious. I mean, we had some water in this. Now this is mostly water. Falcons, Cerberus, SSG, Sonics, heavy beneficiaries from this. Hey, you're welcome, Sonics. That is a yeah. really nice circle for them. They should be able to kind of coalesce into the four-man as I see them doing that. Oh, great response here from It's Chris for Ascend. Finds Shen out in the open. That's a powerhouse player for Ty Lu potentially down. He's out on his own, so not much he can do. Jeems maybe going to go for the last player. Oh, the second to last player for V7. Still another car for V7 trailing here. It's Glass as the anchor point of this convoy. And now I think V7, though, should be a okay. Jeems not really able to find any damage. And so now, uh, yeah, I was a bit worried there for a second, given the fact of how cars have been so far is... Um, been a, a bit of a thorn in the side of phase so far in this game, but brave to take those shots. And well, Roth's going to go ahead and find Heaven, take him out. And this is going to be the continuance of just being able to get position early. The rest of the squad for V7 is kind of making their pathing right into the rest of Space Station Gaming. It's already entrenched over here. Those Ooh, shots are at least going to discourage them away, but now it's going to lead them right back into T5. V7 just now, oh, sharp, saving V7 there. Dude, he hit a player on V7 in the chest with that, that M24, and then he's going to find a knock with it as well. Really nice stuff from Sharp with that bolt. <laughs> V7 just trying to find something of safety, just anything that they can get would be great, and I think maybe they'll be able to wrap around Kranich here and find something, but it has not been easy. It, it, Tiamba took advantage of that fight between Tai Lu and Ascend to take this early southern position uh, ahead of those teams. So now V7 just going to be potentially bu butting heads. This is the one team you don't want to see right now. And uh, I do want to point out, Pace is going to be the, probably the most eluded duo ever as we did see them buying uh, all of those crates. Now Sonic's going to have to contend against a emergency pickup that did land over into this position. Good re a shift out away from it. Nades are looking like they're connecting for some damage, but not as much as Shrimzy is going to want. Ooh. Well, never mind. That one does. What are they wanting to do from here? Just look at how low Petrichor Road is, but uh, Sonic has to be careful. They don't want to commit too much into this because there's still a couple of teams circling around. Kickstart's going to make it a lot easier as Ming is going to go down as well, and now it's just a matter of letting the rest of the dominoes fall. I think that Molly might have hit. Kick, yeah, it did. Yeah. Kick hit a great shot from afar. Tiggleton going to scoop up a couple points here, or finish off a couple. And it's going to be a kill for H win, a kill for Shrimsy, a kill for Kickstart to start for the Sonic. Summer still they in know. the smoke. Uh, they're backing off, and he gets two in oh it. Oh my God! Now he's just trying to run up, can he get the Molotov off, and it is going to land right on top of him. Kick! What are you going to make for the choice? Two members of Sonics going down off of a big play from Summer. Beautifully. Beautifully executed from Summer. That's that veteran wily presence you love to see. Just baiting the Sonics into thinking he maybe had gone around the corner or something. And instead, he nails them both with a perfectly placed, perfectly timed grenade with the Molotov to follow. Disgusting. That absolutely just has to be heartbreaking for the Sonics. There's still a ton of water in this circle. Now, it's going to have to remove it next circle, but Matt, that is still not a lot of playable terrain. I don't see this part of Vikendi almost ever. I know. This is absolutely crazy. Watch it play out. Ace going to go ahead and use an emergency pickup. They're going to probably drop themselves on the coastline. Exo's going to spot out. Zolt is there making their rotation. Going to go ahead and connect on Dope. And it's going to be Uba down, out, and flush. It's going to be Akita that goes ahead and finishes him off. It's like, no. I'm going to make sure to take him out with the vehicle. Look at this. Now the pathing for this is going to get more complicated. It's all going to be about popping over over here into the east. I like what XO did there. Well, there goes Tai Lu eventually to Tiamba in the long well run. There. That fight happened. But I like what Akita did there. He was like driving around his teammate, acting as like a mobile, like flush confirmer, <laughs> like able to just run people over if his, if his uh, teammate can find the kills. So nice stuff there. Exalt only loses Uba. That's obviously a big loss, but these guys still quite, quite good in their own right. And also another important thing for Exalt is Art is calling the shots. He is IGLing oh. for them. And we do have Jeems that's managed to sneak his way over here. Remember, pretty kitted. It's going to be SSG trying to run over here right next to Sonics, who are quite weakened. And so now uh, SSG do manage to find a spot to control from, but they have some, I, I guess, hungry, angry teams right next <gasps> to them that want to get just any point that they can. Sharp shot has an AWM. Mm -mm -mm. He must survive. <laughs> I need that in my life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all I want. I, it's no bias towards Sharp, but I just I, it's bias towards AWM. Day Trade making a mad dash here towards T5, Matt. Oh, coast isn't open. 
Oh, this is this is scary town. Be careful. They're going to stop right over here next to him. That little bit of a dip going to be enough to buy him time for and now. Coastline property is popping off right now. That's where everybody's wanting to make their way to. That's It's the hot spot in Vikendi right now, to say the least. Yeah, but it's not quite as safe as, say, oh, James is actually going to find Pixel. So now SSG is aware to this lurking player. It's actually h from the Sonics who gets some damage in there. Grenade right at his face. He was done yeah. anyway. Sharp able to find the knock. And SSG just kind of been a beneficiary of this. Gustav was on his way over here to provide some support the moment his teammate died. Now I'm going to have to stop off in the distance. He's being harassed by Exo. We've got uh, Tiamba as well that's going to be creeping in right along the path and where Gustav is going to be. So coastline fighting up into the hill where the road's going to be, where we just saw the SSG positioning. And now it's looking like there's at least a bit more space for people to work with until V7 decide that they're going to do an emergency pickup and land in the thick of it as phase gets eliminated. This is this is a little bit tricky. The coast here is interesting. It's you know, a bunch of crates just drop in the water. Uh, but <laughs> I just like I just saw it off screen, and now you can see it from ZYY's perspective. But the the coast on on Vikendi isn't quite as forgiving as say Tego. Tego has a lot of playable coast, like a lot of coast that's really oh. defendable, really easy to work with. Paper, dude, I just yeah. now saw it. Go the ahead. storm coming into the east. Oh no! It, this is circle three. This is going to cover near on everything because of the way that the waters come in. Now we have the. The drops coming in as well. Do manage to land right over here. What? It's still 50% water? Oh what my the God. hell, man? This is going to end right by the coast. This is, this like, with this much water still in, like, you have to be thinking as a player right now that this is very likely to end almost on the coast within probably 100 meters of the coast. I know that we do have some firefights going on, but yes, the storm is also going to be coming into the east where most of our teams are going to be trying to path. So there's probably going to be a lot of foot firefighting happening inside of that as teams are going to try to use that opportunity to try to sneak into the zone. This is going to be nuts. This is going to be absolute insanity. I mean, you have to play for coast now. And every, yeah. every team's going to be diving past. Fate, Molodok, going to combine to get Emmy. Falcons trying to do what they can to get through. H1 helping out, gets the knock. I mean, it's just a wing and a prayer. you got to do what you can. Send it early because the longer you wait just means the fact that there's even less of a chance that you're going to be able to make it through. Yep. Falcons do lose one in this, but they're just completely getting decimated on different angles. Damage is coming out everywhere for them. V7 going to spot out Cerberus and make sure to do some more damage into him. So they do manage to control their area. Cerberus going to have to limp away from that one. Danima are going to be up on top of all of this, trying to referee some of it, but they don't have the cleanest sight lines into anything that's going on on this coastline. And this is a – this is – if you can get into this coast, this is a – a mechanical god's playground. This is where you have some space to work with. You have a little bit of cover, and you've got some open area to punish these other teams. T5 is going to punish Day Trade. They have Tiamba potentially to contend with next. We'll see if that fight does come to fruition, but over here, T5 has some knocks, and here come oh. these grenades, and they're huge! <laughs> that is just all she Those Molotovs to follow up were just absolutely on point. Now, Tiamba can't really use the opportunity to try to creep their way in on this one. They had one of their members go down, and it's just going to be on Akita, just holding this angle very thoroughly, making sure to defend out his teammates very separated away from him, but that's the perfect thing. If he can sacrifice himself, even if he can't regroup, oh. just to force all of this out, it's going to be massive. Bro, what a nade from Akita! I think I don't know if he could hear Pow Pow's footsteps, but he figured that puzzle out quite quickly. Now he's going to try to go for the flush, and he's got cover from his teammates. This is really, really nice from XO. We're finally seeing something stop out what's going on with Tiamba. So with this, they're at least going to be able to take out something with getting the down onto Akita, but it's still not a clean path thing for them to work with. We still have the rest of EXO that's going to be gatekeeping over here, and then it's going to be SSG back behind them. We still do have one of the members up. Monty trying to see if maybe he can harass something, but I think the team has kind of realized it. There's no clean path, so you just take what you can. They're just going to run and gun their way through it. Monty Ooh. denies it. Ooh. Yo, let's go. That is some sick stuff from XO, man. Really nice setup, really good execution. I thought it might be Tiamba fighting T5, but instead it was XO defending against Tiamba incredibly well, and then T5 just got wrecked by their nades earlier. So now ZYY left alone for Tiamba. Once again, let's see if he can salvage some more points. Okay, uh, I mean, Circle, you gotta go to the north, yeah. so it is gonna go pretty much where everybody was expecting. Uh, Dano would kind of beneficiary of getting into this position pretty early. They've got one of the compounds to work with and is going to be D plus Kia that's just going to be to the west of them. Those both stay in play. And the fight that's going on in the east going to have to continue as SSG, uh, last member up for Tiamba, going to have to creep in, T5. And then we also do have those two members of the Sonics. They're going to have to figure out how they're going to want to make an approach into this. 
Yeah, I, I like the fact that Sharp has a AWM here. He could really do some damage. That is a heck of a grenade there. Just came up short, though, hit the edge of that rock and didn't bounce as far as it could have. If that had been maybe another, like, foot to the right for Silzen, he might have been able to do some serious damage to Sharp, but Sharp going to be turning his attention to these teams that are lurking on the eastern outskirts. This is a big game for all of these teams. Tiamba finally taking some casualties early means the fact that while they've been, sp like, sponging up all of these points to try to contend with, the rest of the leaderboard is fairly compacted, so you can see SSG managing to pick up just a couple of kills right now, moving themselves into a decent point to start assaulting up the leaderboard, because if you look, I mean, 11th all the way up into 13th is only a five-point spread. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really close. It's really, really close right now because Tiamba's been soaking up so many points. Sonics, I'm not sure if they would benefit from a storm on top of them right now. Dano is trying to end this issue before it starts. Grenade's pretty good. H1 should be knocked. Yep, that's a nice one from Loki. The follow-ups towards kick, and they're good. Tiamba going down. Finally, the rest of the lobby can breathe a breath of fresh air. Sonic's down. Day trade out. So T5 Falcons all having opportunities to work with as Danawa with that stretch out. SSG as well. They're going to kind of be the ones to control this area as this is just phase number five and 17 alive, Vapor. <laughs> yeah, this circle's just so, so horrific. I mean, it's so much water in it for so long going all the way in. You know, even in phase five, there's still probably about a fifth of the circle that's that's water. So this is tricky. And now a storm to make things worse for these teams on the east. And the good news for the teams on the east is they're separated enough and there's not too many threats other than Tanadol from Theraton 5 to really punish this storm so far. So everybody else, I think, just content to kind of hold their territory. I think we're hitting a, a lull here for just a bit. I think basically everybody's inside of the circle as far as I can tell. And now we kind of just wait and see where phase six is going. How, is there going to be more water in phase six? Like I said, it could potentially end close to the coast. Maybe it will shift away from that. But because because now it doesn't have to remove water, it mm -hmm. can shift back towards the water, actually. And giving you guys a heads up, the storm is moving into the east, so it is leaving the circle. So we just got that bit of an area over there where it spelled Sonic's Doom and then gave some breathing space for Danawa and SSG to separate. And yeah, this is the calm. I mean, it has been just absolute chaos for these teams to go with. It's just been a cacophony of firefighting everywhere. So, I mean, just trying to track that is going to be so hard for so many of these IGLs to work with. We do keep some of the water that you were talking about paper, but leaving most of the compounds behind us, Dano, yeah, okay, they have like a wall, but they're probably not going to stay for just that wall. <laughs> Well, it, it, it is Danua, maybe. Yeah, it, well, I don't think, I think they might leave one player there, potentially. I, I think they might just leave, like, you know, Loki or Salute or something uh, to kind of lock down that back line because it is a safety a safety anchor position, I suppose. But, yeah, no, no, no. You're, you don't want to keep your full forces there. And as we can see, they're already starting to get some info there using Loki as a spearhead. But Sharp Shot, again, he's great with those bolts. And now he's got the best one in the game in his hands, and he puts a knock into Donos. So it's going to slow him down a bit. V7 going to just use this opportunity to gain this edge. V7, we haven't got to talk about him a lot, but they've gotten some huge kills out on this western edge to keep this space, keep this coastline in their favor, and bye-bye, mm. Thanadol. He did at least manage to get a knock onto Sharp, but uh, that, if anything, that just alerted the Falcons on, hey, here's a threat that's going to be approaching into the east, so they're just kind of shifting over, waiting for that one. V7 still keeping an eye on what's going to be going on with D plus Kia. D plus Kia is going to have to make, a, I, I wouldn't say a scary rotation, but I wouldn't also call it very comfortable. They've got Loki as well as Solzy and V7 that are going to be eyeing them. So I don't know. Their utility should be fine. It looks like they even have a vehicle. Bringing a vehicle into this just for cover might not be the worst. Oh, yeah, man. I'd love to have a vehicle here that I could park up against a rock or cut off an angle on a hill. That'd be super, super nice. And DK trying to pass their driver's test successfully. Congrats. You got your license. Good job, D+. And uh, two members left, Jango and Ventus, going to have a little bit of room here on the north. I think they can get to this hill. It's just how much vision so, does V7 have on this? Well, but there's like a couple of shacks, I believe, that are right over there. Yeah, they're just going to stop at the hill, get there. It looks like they were kind of eyeing that sight line and where Loki's already kind of fortified in at. I think that this is about as far as you can comfortably go, though. Is That's not even comfortable. Look, that car is the only thing that's keeping them alive from Glass. Yeah, Glass is being patient. I think he's going to wait and maybe see if Yumi can get an angle. Now he's had enough. He got a good enough shot. Actually, an Onyx got that knock at the same time, turning his attention to someone else. And Onyx actually getting up on the roof here, start harassing some of these teams that are out on this flat ground before the coast dips down towards the ocean. Twinson 
Doing some decent damage there, and now Donawa wants DK out. Yeah, and no surprise on this one. Nate's going to just roll in there easy, dude. The throwables have just been so on point today. Like, the follow-up Molotovs after throwing and being like, we already know this is going to get the knock. Let's just go ahead and get the flush to follow suit. It's just been so clean. Cerberus is going to go ahead and backstab right on top of what's going on with Falcons, but it's going to be followed up by Loki getting a backstab on a high Saki. And now the dominoes are starting to fall. It's going to be Danawa up to the north getting a lot of attention from all these teams that are playing along the coast. Is SSG using this opportunity just to creep past everybody? Yeah, if Sharpshot can find a big knock, open up some space for them potentially towards V7. Capitan just sitting behind that tire well, just hoping that he can hide for a bit longer. Sharp looking for someone to stick their face out, but V7 so far doing a good job keeping themselves obscured, busy with dealing with kind of Donawa's pressure, but Donawa in a decent position to win this game potentially, Matt. They've got downhill action. If they can get down to that next kind of you know, divot that's in between them and V7. They've got a really good opportunity to not only control this circle, but control like some of the best terrain that I think I can see in this circle. Ooh, oh, there it is. Shot. There it is. There you go. That's that's the key to getting control of that coast. That is a beautiful shot, but they still have Capitan that's going to be back behind them. They've got to be careful. Backstab at that moment could be absolute catastrophe for them. And now it's going to be Danaway using the opportunity, using that hillside. They're just going to run right into it. And Capitan does get a focus in, does get the knock on to Roth. But I think there should be enough time to reset on this one. Is with the shots that came out from SSG, V7 is going to have to take a second to reset as well. Yeah. Now, the real question for V7 is how much pressure can you put on Donawa to keep them from getting much further? Because, frankly, I don't think it doesn't matter too much. Now that I look at it, Donawa's just kind of like got what, that, what I said they needed to do. They took this divot in between them and V7. SSG is stuck on the other side of this circle, and they've got kind of better sight lines on each other, do V7 and SSG, so they're more likely to do damage here. Donawa just kind of needs to play defense, and they're pretty darn good at it. Well, they're getting center control right now. It looks like it's going to be Salute that's going to have to flank over into the east while the rest of the squad's kind of focused in on where V7 is going to be positioned at. So love this bringing up. Drops even the deployable shield just to go ahead and get control into this position right now, saying, okay, nope, this is ours. I want the center of this circle. But this has kind of allowed SSG a bit more maneuvering room along this coastline. It looks like they're kind of trying to prod different angles and figure out what there's going to be their approach. Page already has an idea on where V7 is going to be. So it's really on the other members to figure out how they want to kick this one off. And a lot of that's going to hinge on Salute and what he spots. That's a good point. Yeah, Salute out there. He's got to be careful, though, with Sharp potentially going to be the one who sees him first. Sharp's got a pretty good advantage in that fight with that mm. AWM. Here we go. V7 going to try to push down this hill. Page proned. When is he going to be spotted? Well, it looks like they're pushing right over into this. They're thinking with the nade that went off, it's going to be a firefight, and Paige just steps right into him. Gets the down, gets the flush, and now V7 has to instantly stop. Preps up the nades. Ooh. Looks like that could be lined up pretty well. Paige is going to lose about half of his life. Follow-up also going to hit. Looks like it's going to go a bit wide, but now Space Station Gaming going to need to provide some type of reinforcements as Dano and Anonix did even leave the shield, but he doesn't want to overstep that position. Yeah, Roth is now getting close to Salute's territory. Salute, he should see that head. Roth is going to wait. Page trying to hold on. Salute, though, quick to react to Roth. Roth going to be backed off. And this is all just about trying to survive. SSG is just trying to hold down the different planks onto it. And with this, Page is going to go down. He's going to get flushed, but the cost was high as V7 taking some casualties as well. Space Station Gaming is going to get eliminated. And now Danawa, nine kills, looking down, about to be 10. But oh, let's not count out V7 just quite yet. You mean could do some damage here. Danawa scrambling to recover, trying to get their teammate back up. So Anonix and Soul just trying to spot Gumi out. I think Salute may or may, uh, may or may not have gotten a spot of him, but they have to have a pretty good idea. He's in some of these smokes somewhere. So a phase a number eight, as it is going to be coming in right now. Blue Zone going to be biting on the tails of the last member for V7. What, oh, what are you going to do? Try to pick up one more point or maybe try to see if you can get something. He doesn't have good nade range. It's all uphill. He's already been spotted out. Here comes Danawa taking the shots into it. How long can he survive? Nade's going to be landing down next to him. He can't really counter this at the time. He's just trying to play inside the smoke, see if maybe somebody peeks for it. Soul is already going to be pushing down into it, but it's just too much utility landing right in his face. It's going to be Danawa that picks up game number three. Patience pays dividends for Donawa, and now that they're not involved in a hot drop, it is a win for them. <laughs> Think about that. The True. game where they're not hot dropping, where they're not scuffling for territory is their first win.
I mean, there is a lot to be said about just the control that they manage to influence in later stages of it. Sometimes we see teams that can get a bit too lethargic inside of a compound whenever they've had it for a while and not really just step out. They realize the moment whenever they heard the firefighting that was happening, this is our time to step out, get control over the circle, start executing off of it. And then they manage to just hold down some very good angles just to punish anybody that steps into their territory. Yeah, saw some good things from XO, B7, SSG yeah. in that game too, so exciting one. All right, let's not forget the, the nice nade into Molly that managed to drop right on top of Sonics. It's, uh, uh, we even managed to see a, uh, I guess, oh, an Uber drive. Well, let's take a look at the highlights as we celebrate as Donna won that game resoundingly well. What a match. And it does, you know, you heard Paper Thin say at the end of that, Martin, it's interesting how they finally stop getting themselves into some tight drop situations and they come out and they get a victory right oh, away. This shot from Shopko, we've got to point it out again. Right. But yeah, for sure, Sonic situation with Pedro Road too. Mm -hmm. um, well played oh, by no. Summer. Well played by Summer, the dominate and follow up with the Molotov there. That's a, that's a good amount of points secured for them, but still. It, uh, it was a salted earth play. Yeah, you know, he, knew he if, was going down. If Sonics had four guys on that northern push on that rish, they could have easily have taken on Danawa and they could have made a whole different game. But Danawa, yeah, for sure, in this case here, they're able to stay up to the case. They're able to come out and stay strong, stay along, like yeah. alive with a, long, a lot of players there in the end. It's just so important. But yeah, Space Station Gaming try to make a run for it. Shop yeah. with a nice few. Uh, headshots yeah. and knocks here. I love to see the bold action in play, and especially Shop Shot's hand there. Good nature from Soul taking out. The Kia boys. We saw some great arm shots, we saw some great plays, but the MVPs of this game, besides Donoa getting the win, was throwables. Like the grenade usage by Donoa yeah. to clear space in a very difficult map. Let's call it spade a spade. This may be some of the worst circles we're going to see at PGC in terms of hard choices for the players to make. I mean, those shifts to the south over and over and over again were brutal. Had that storm not shifted away, it could have covered literally every ounce of playable space in that circle. It could. And also, another case, you know, fourth circle mm -hmm. could have gone even more into land right yeah. we had a really really rough kind of edge ending where we have so much water side kind of a yeah. play there was only two compounds left to be played so everyone had to just you know emergency pick up and try to kind of get in one of those open spaces i gotta say though the area and the terrain in general mm -hmm. it could accommodate quite a lot of players compared yeah. to it was only phase five it was, and I mean, we did see some people manage to last to the end. We saw sort of uh, Paige hunker down in yeah. SSG and hold some ground. We saw uh, Therathon also have a player sort of warning sure. to the end there. The thing was, that game, it's hard for me to, I don't want to say not take it seriously, but to say, like, I can judge a team for not doing well in this one, right? right? Sure. Maybe I can give FaZe a Faze? hard time. <laughs> FaZe I can give a hard time to. Uh, it says something. It's when, just when Fix. <laughs> when Fix is literally sitting in his chair like this as the game is still going yeah. on, he knows what he knows what's going to happen. I'm just a passenger, guys. Right? Let's take take me for a joyride. Let's see what happens. Let's, it, let's good. It made the Petricor fans here in the stadium very, very happy. Oh, yeah. We'll leave that was it crazy. at that. Let's look at the top four teams on what may be the wildest game I've seen in a very long time. Donawa comes out in first 10 kills to speak of in a very difficult match. 14,000 damage. And then we see V7 Funpin coming in in second. SSG at eight. I said they need to have a good start today. This is at least going to give them some points. And EXO coming in with eight kills as well. Now, I had a chance to talk to EXO before the matches today. Yeah. And Top they, sa they said they, they're excited. They're happy to be here. But they said we have to start strong. We need to have a big day one if we're going to kind of move forward on this thing. Yeah, for sure. That The momentum and the, the confidence confidence yep. you're able to get here, especially when it's a two-day group stage only. It's just super important. Yeah. But yeah, interesting. Towards the end here, of course, Danawa stay four guys strong. Yeah. Not hot dropping, not contesting Petrico Road as we may to expect a little bit. But yeah, them to pop in like this and be able to, to step up to the case here. Very even in terms of the kills, 3-3-2-2, three, three, two, two, but still good to see them come in and yeah. get the points here because they needed this. Like if they were halfway through the day yep. and they had like, you know, single, single digit points, then it would be a whole different case for this. It absolutely is. And it's good to see them playing well. Like you said, they're uncontested. They did their thing. They've changed their caller. They yeah. really sort of changed from like Soul to Ionix. And I saw, of course, huge personality, yep. huge experience, of course. So it's good to see him come. Also being able to frag out and yep. kind of put him into these positions here. Of course, it's going to be the man of the match on Onyx too. So, yeah, I, it's huge for him. Yeah. Stepping up to this situation here where you're both an IGL, you're a leader, you're kind yes. of the mall booster, but you're also able to frag out. Of course, the type of IGL that, you know, 
either you're the IGL that kind of supports right. the, your team, or you're the IGL that puts yourself into these positions yeah. and enables you to frag out. Like we've no PO is, for example. True. It is great to see Anonix there salute. I think playing a little more comfortable with his position. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the match leaderboard right now. Donald comes away with 20, 20 total points off the back of that one. V7 Funbin is going to be very happy to pick up 14. Uh, Space Age Gaming XO, we also mentioned them. And we see a bit of a change up as Donawa climbs. We saw Tiamba go out a little bit early. Wow. That doesn't hurt them. They've still got 50 wow. points. So we look at the overall leaderboard. Damn. Sonic's at 29, Day Trade 25. And Donawa going from the dead, up pretty much the bottom. They were struggling to fourth place off the back of that game. It tells you it's only three in. Yeah, it's uh, again, when you have the sponges at the top here, especially yep. as you see currently our top four, top five, it's. It's so even, like, you have, you can be Cerberus right now, you can be like, oh, guys, we got single-digit points, we got yep. seven, right? One good game, you're straight into the top six, so it's still very open. Again, no yep. changes from, you could be first, you can be eighth, there's no changes. Maybe you sit, yep. uh, like, closer to the crowd or further away from the crowd, <laughs> that's the only kind of change we're going to see. But, yeah, beautiful scene here, beautiful yep. stage, and, yeah, let's see. And speaking of the crowd, here Halfway we are the in Thailand, and two of the teams, the Thai teams here in the group, are in the top five. I mean, beautiful. if you're coming out here... And these guys, we came in at 10.45 for a little ceremony here at the stadium. There were people already sitting in line oh, yeah, to get their seats because they wanted to see these two teams play. They got in and they are being rewarded for that tenacity because their teams have stepped up. And I can tell you, we had the big reveal. We had some press come in to look at the, you know, meet the players before the event today. The crowds around those two teams in particular show just how supported they are by uh, their countrymen here. That's yeah, beautiful. Petro, a lot of fans in the crowd too. And to talk in kind of a little bit of a cutoff, yeah. if we look at last year, around the 75 to 85 point mark is okay. where we're looking off for the, the top eight cutoff. Uh, a little bit interesting last year, we had a little bit of a difference from, from the two groups, but yeah, 75 to 85 points. If you're an 85 plus, I feel like you're comfortable. Yeah. So, Chiamba, Chiamba. you're already 67% <laughs> wow. way through to that, so that's beautiful. Yeah, good to see from them, of course. But yeah, T5 here and Space Station Gaming on screen. Yep. Good to see Space Station Gaming here on weekend. They made the most of it. They, they lost did. the guy early, unfortunately, but getting, got a good, good amount of points where it, in a situation where you have Danawa that's third partying you and another team that's already fighting in terms right. of B7, it's just a rough situation for them. And we're going to pivot in just a second as we get ready to head over to take over. Kennedy is done. We'll see it again tomorrow. It's a one time a day sort of deal, but it is another new map, another challenge for these teams. In fact, let's head it over to our casters to get kicked off. It's time for Tago, baby. Let's get it done. Man, I love whenever we make our way through this midsection of it. I'm used to getting my dessert after the meal, man. But it's Not like in the middle. <laughs> we, we get like all the tasty ice cream and spicy food right in the middle of the meal. Yeah, man, I, I love I love me some Korean food. I've lived there for gosh, more than seven years now. I've been living in South Korea, so I always love coming over this map. We got the great the great sign there. Uh, with our I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Famous Korean actor, I should know, and I, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself that I can't remember. But anyway. The dude it, from Eternals. Yes. That's the way I always remember. There you go. Uh, anyway, we're heading out. Another kind of fair plane path. I mean, the Vikendi one wasn't super great. The circle was even worse. Uh, but this one, much like Aaron Gell, Matt, just kind of down the center. I mean, whenever we look at, like, specifically Vikendi and Tego, it feels like even a, flat, a bad plane path is a decent enough plane path, right? And because we don't see too many of our teams that are like hitting the hard walls off to the east or west too often. Specifically on this map, like playing airport and whatnot just feels highly uncommon for our players. Uh, we, have, we are in a centered meta, but there's also just your back against a wall over there with all those hills around just feels so trapped. So this playing path is pretty much center for what the players actually want. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. There's really not much that players are really interested in dropping at like airport and shipyard. A lot of teams are claiming that as their landmark. So you know, whatever. Everything's kind of in fair play. Again, looking at hot drops, so nobody's messing with Donawa. V7 seems to have gold off all to themselves. Petricor Road seems to be messing with FaZe again early, but I think Summer's just gonna leave, so I don't think we're gonna have any repeats of teammates in cars with people who aren't actually their teammates. Oh, North Ooh. Island, well, no, okay. an, no ambiguity about that. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that should make it pretty easy. And let's not forget that uh, with pathing into this one, uh, emergency pickups could be a thing that a lot of teams can try to use to circumvent the, the, the canal channel, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be right along the uh, main island itself leading into this one. So should make it a bit easier for these teams to try to navigate. And as yes, 
It is going to be heavily rewarded for V7 and Danua both. Absolutely. Oh. And Tiamba. Yeah. They are inside the circle as well. I don't know if they care as much. I mean, like, they, they like to play edge, so how I'm curious you, to see what they're going to do. How do you kill people from that spot? I don't understand. It's too safe. It's, it's, yeah, that's too easy. Like, that's... They, they've been so good on the edges. And, uh... All right, well, the... The truck there, the Porter, that's a great vehicle to get some stuff, but the turning radius on the Porter, not so good. Anybody I, who's driven it knows. I think that we broke the audience. This is the quietest that we've seen them this whole time. They were they were fired up, man. Um, yeah, I mean, the games have been providing it, so no surprise right now, but everybody just kind of like bated breath, watching everything kind of get set up and moved in. So once we finish these leading phases, it's going to pop off because you know bridge camps are going to be a thing. No doubt about it. <laughs> at that window. <laughs> at that window. I love that. He, he found another pan. Might as well just eat the other one. Who, you don't need it. <laughs> oh, okay. That just made my day. That's so good. It's just out of the frying pan into another one. Yep. There you go. Get enough of them. I mean, that's just the game, right? What else are you going to yeah. do with it? And you know, like, at some point, one of his teammates can be like, hey, you know what? I haven't found a pan yet. Anybody found one? And you'll be like, nope. Uh, nope. Yeah, I no, saw I nah. never saw nah. one. Now, nah. nah. totally. Just <laughs> I've never done that to Poro before. What? Nope. I mean, well, I I mean, I troll Poro on purpose, so I don't know what you're talking about. I, oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, no, I never have done that. In fairness, he does it to us, too. Yes. So uh, now looking out, uh, most of our teams looking like they're, they're in no rush. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, our later teams, ah. keep in mind as we're watching this, Teams that are making earlier rotations are probably the ones that didn't get the emergency pickups. The teams that look like they're just committed into trying to pick up everything they can find probably did. So yeah. as you're eyeing everything on the map, it looks like we should also be keeping an eye on what's going on with Brex as he's got a lot of friends. This is the most Ascend thing ever. Just a player on their own. Now, it's Chris is kind of coming to help, but Ascend is a very uh, self-sufficient team. And that's, that's part of their op modus operandi is they're kind of allowed to make calls for themselves and you know, ask for help, and it may or may not come, but Chris, it's Chris, uh, is going to be slowly working us up way here. I think trying to cut his engine uh, soon enough that DK does not hear it's Chris coming, uh, and uh, he is going to get in here, and I think they're going to try to set up some kind of, like, double trap, trying to cut off some of the angles here of DK. I'm really curious to see where it's Chris wants to set up shop. So, yep, and now we're getting more of just an entrenchment coming in. All the members for us, and now... Moving in, waiting to see how... Looks like all the information is getting fed. Look at this line that's being set. Chris on one side of it in case a rotation comes up from there. Now starting to hop into the vehicle. Can the rest of the members get there in time? It's just going to be narrowly missed as not going to have the cleanest sight lines to work with and really just going to have to let that one go. It, what, I would say about five seconds would have made a massive difference there. I would have loved to have seen that from DK's perspective because I, I, I suspect something alerted them that yeah. there was a trap there. Like some, some piece of, you know utility on the ground or I mean ammo on the ground that was picked up then there was an empty gun or something that they didn't expect with that you know that should have been picked up so all right we got another interview curious to see what this one's about looks like I'm going to take a wild stab and say it's going to be Petricor Road maybe getting everything set up oh no probably Dano given the fact that they just had such a great performance inside that last game so let's go ahead and get a listen in on what they've got going on as it does look like we're going to get Dano 세계 대회인 만큼 되게 기대되고 설레고 일단 이번 대회에서 얻을 수 있는 상금이 크다 보니까 아주 열심히 이말 각오가 되어 있습니다. 제가 차를 좀 사고 싶은데 제가 아직 면허가 없거든요. <웃음> 어, 바로 면허를 따지 않을까 진짜 1등을 하면 일단 1위는 물론 저고요. 2위는 SQ, 3위는 딱히 생각이 나진 않은데 그래도 한국 팀 젠지한테 한표 던지겠습니다. 불만을 가진 선수들은 못 봤는데 일단 제가 불만이고요. 아 제가 이제 대회를 두번못 나왔다고 제가 굉장히 낮았거든요. 근데 이번 대회로 제가 1등을 해보고 싶은 마음이 있습니다. 조금 배알못? 뭔가 상품을 타고 싶은 분들인데 어떻게 저희를 안 뽑을 수 있는지 조금 의아하긴 합니다. 제가 진짜 간만에 세계 대회를 나왔는데 좋은 모습 보여드리고 한국 꼭 돌아가도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 응원 감사합니다. All right, respect to Loki because he actually admits that he cares about his price in fantasy. All the other players try to say that they don't. Now, though, um, Petrico Road might have to be a bit worried about their prices as it's getting a bit scary inside this firefight. Summer, last one up. Absolutely. I, I'd, I'd really love to delve deep into Loki because I think he's a player who has a chance to do something really interesting at this event. 
a lot of interesting things. Uh, first of all, be a, a first repeat PGC winner. Nobody yeah. else has done it. And he could be the first because he, well, he was on Gen G in 2019. You know, he, he, he is a player to me that I, I really think, like, let's say Donawa wins this thing. Let's mm -hmm. say, and he's been basically kind of the number two player. But hold on, I'm going to hold that thought. I think there's uh, another highlight coming, and then we'll get back to it. Anyway, Petrogor Road showing some highlights. They're very, very good. Individually talented team. Aix left really, really good. But I really want to talk about Loki because, all right, Matt, I'm going to go on a bit of a, a bit of a, a tear here. So forgive me. I give you until somebody starts shooting. All You're right. allowed. What the? Well, that's not going to take long. Probably <laughs> <laughs> this is PUBG, bro. Uh, no, I think like you could say that Loki potentially here. Like, let's say Donawa wins this thing, could be like maybe the goat. Because he's won two titles, nobody else is going to have that. Oh boy, you opening up that can of worms conversation. And he's always been the second best player on those teams. Like he'll probably can be considered the second best to soul in this. He was definitely considered the second best to PO, 2019. So he's like the Scottie Pippen of PUBG Esports potentially. We'll see. That's what I'm. He could be. He could be like you know the Scottie Pippen and the Michael Jordans. You know this this great all star, so smart, so heady player who still gets it done, who can still put up points, who can still put up kills, but is just really just brilliant at the game. I mean, I think back at PNC and he did some stuff that I just thought was brilliant. He took a he took a glider to use it to get to his drop spot because there were no cars. So he just got a glider and used it basically as a pseudo car, just drove it down the road essentially. Uh, he, he loves the Panzers and the Mortars. He's brilliant with those. He's always making sure that he's got those and he's using them to full effect. He's always been a player who's so tricky. He's so smart. He's so able to find these kills in these moments that you don't expect as opponents. So. I'm a big Loki fan is what I'm saying, and I think there, if, if Donawa wins this, there could be an argument to be made that Loki would be the GOAT. If. I mean, there is a lot that could be stacked up into there. Is I feel like there's a lot riding on. That, like This PGC is going to set up a lot of history. We started off the show looking at like the impacts of Uba and his career and how it's moved through. Right. Looking at Loki, I mean, the history of what we can see going on with Tickleton is now presently Sonics yes. in second place. There's a lot of stakes, I guess, in the history of PUBG Esports that are riding on this that can really cement your position or just be that moment of getting oh so close and now you've got to wait for next year again. Precisely, Matt. I, I'm really liking the way you're talking about this because it's you're really putting down what I've been thinking about. And I mean, Mika's going to take some damage there. This is a little precarious. Oh, yeah. Soul's going to run over there. Not going to step over too much more. And hey, look, Tyloo's going to come in and provide some support onto it. Nate's going to roll down. And hey, nice reposition to get away from it. Circle's going to pop. And no surprise, it's just mostly Godot. Well, I think Mika's pretty much in trouble. Tycon going to watch the rest of Ascend drive by. Now, the real question here for Ascend is, what's the plan here? It's Chris is just kind of posting up towards the edge of the circle. Looks like he's going to try to kind of wrap around the edges of Cerberus's lines. Brex is trying to get his way back to Mika, but he must not going to allow it. Going to use the grows on a drive by to flush that point. And Ascend here trying to scramble, trying to recover, trying to figure something out. And it looks like this... I think they should and just peel off, to be yeah, honest. This is right on the edge of the zone. You have to assume some people are going to be rotating over here. You're so close to that other bridge. Just kind of let this one go. Just try to regroup, maybe try to shift more into the north, because also we have to keep an eye on Godok, because that's about to get a lot more heavy. As yes, phased advantage used emergency pickup. They're going to land right in the center of it and say, hey, center circle, center of town, best life choices I could possibly make right now. And V7 has a huge 2-2 split, so it's just Heaven and Gumin here in Godok. The other two way out on the southeast road, so not a lot of pressure actually from them, but T5 is the other thing. T5, all four members in this northwestern quadrant of Godok, and they are going to be potentially a bigger threat, but I say that, but T5 is a, a pretty passive team generally in the early parts of the game. They look for position. They look for emergency pickups. They're the team that is trying to outlast you. Nobody can shoot you out of a car if you take the emergency pickup. See, FaZe figured out what was wrong. <laughs> you just got to avoid the cars entirely, jump exactly where you need to go. Life's going to be good. 
talking about it. Uh, I, we're not seeing a big compress in. Specifically, looking at those first three games, it was just pretty much K-Go, right? At, right as soon as everybody was landing, we were already in the thick of firefights. This circle is actually providing a lot more safety for our teams to play, specifically if we like look down to the south where we do see like Tai Lu playing, there's a hill line that they're being able to play from. With Godok also being kind of the center of this with those four roads, it just kind of creates its own four different quadrants that we're going to be looking at different teams trying to control sections of. Yeah, exactly. Like It's kind of interesting. You know, Godok is sort of the, the four corners, the middle of those four corners that you're talking about. So really interesting to see where the circle wants to wants to take us around that because everybody has a lot of space to work with. You know, the northern part, some people tell me that this this part of the map, parts of it kind of play like Sandhawk. So it's a little bit more like lending itself to up close and personal mm -hmm. fights. There's a lot of foliage up here. There's a lot of hills, uh, bigger hills in some areas. Now, this part of the map, that is not the case, but you know, other parts of it, more towards the north, north, in between like Wolfsong and the army base and that kind yeah. of thing, is in that feature. So I I'm really, really kind of curious to see how this one works out. And if well, it goes like right towards Goduck, there's like a lot of fields around it, so it's really wild. That's actually what I was going to say is if we look where the Falcons are at right now, there's a very heavy northern shift in the hillsides that we can be looking at with army base in that area. Yeah, the road's going to pass through there. But then whenever we look back down to the southwest, the opposing side of those hills, we still have the fields that are going to be in play over there. It's a lot more open flatlands, minimal cover to try to work around. D plus Kia right now, they're kind of navigating a bit more on that western area. They do have Ace that's going to be around them, but nothing too scary right now. It doesn't look like Aces want to get too much more involved. They don't just, well, I say that. If that opportunity presents itself naturally, you're going to take it. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just so interesting the way that Ascend plays. Like, Rex goes out here on his own, just absolutely ruining DK's round. He's got another one, Americano down as well. The rest of Ascend is nowhere near this, and they're not even trying to get into vehicles really to come. I they, mean, they're just trusting Brex. That's just patience and traps right there on both accounts. So well played, Ace. You're going to go ahead and pick that one up. Uh, circle did shift, and we are looking at an urban ending. Let's be honest. This is going to keep Godocking it in some fashion. Now, the southeast is a bit more open, and that means the fact that everybody is hopping inside of vehicles, shifting in, trying to get some more control, but also a lot of commitments coming out from vehicles just to try to get into Godock itself. Well, this is kind of interesting. I, I I can't say I've really seen too many circles end inside of Goduck in my own games. Yeah, I played quite a bit of Tango, but it doesn't come down to it very much. DK taking a whole bunch oh. of damage from Cerberus, Ooh. and Salazi with that last bullet finds the headshot. And it's just going to continue, man. There is nowhere to stop that is going to be safe. Like, you know, like Nade's going to be prepped up. Just, dude, where do you even go? You get, go past them. Now you've got Tyloo. Now you've got Tiamba. That's just going to be all she wrote. I mean, off the start, what happened with Ace, it was just going to be a domino effect until they got in that position. Now, Ace, what are they going to be doing? Looks like they're going to be coming in from the west. And I do want to point out, Tiamba has not gone into Godok itself. They're playing just down to the south and kind of refereeing everything that's going on in rotations around their area. They own a huge chunk of the circle. They do. And it seems like that's kind of, you know, Tianba here, as we've been talking about, they were, they typically were more of an edge team, at least in the PCL, but, and they were have been in the Erangel games, but here today with the way this circle started, where they were already in it in the beginning, one of the few teams, like four or five teams that were on the Northern Island, uh, they got priority on some stuff and they were able to really take good advantage of it. I mean, I really like this spot here for Tianba. If this circle starts shifting away from Godok, They've got a really powerful position to keep everybody stuck inside that city because there's nothing but fields between them and the city. Now, the reverse is true, of course. If the circle goes into Godok, they're in a world of trouble. I'm sure they have some vehicles, but as we saw, even getting vehicles into this city is tricky. I will say that we did pop in on Tyloo there for just one second. 14th place, and yes, we did talk about the compacted leaderboard, the nature of the beast, just getting a couple of kills and how big that is. I would almost think that Ty Lu is one of those teams that would thrive in the chaos of these first couple of games. Yeah. But it's just, it feels like they're one of the first teams that's getting caught in these firefights, and they just haven't been able to get their feet underneath of them to really kick off this event yet. I fully agree with you. I think Ty Lu is a team that should be good at scrapping, and they were pretty decent at it in PCL. Uh, but I think the interesting thing that surprised me about them was they were really risk adverse in the early parts of the game. Um, in the PCL, so they're the, like on paper, those players. I think they can they can ball like they yeah. can absolutely go toe to toe with anybody. But uh, they 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 were rather risk averse, and I think to their detriment mm. here in this lobby, this is half Godok, half 
you know, the other eastern half. And, oh, there's a knock from Fade onto Loki. Donna in trouble. Yeah, and this is just going to be right on the edge of the zone. Sonics do hear this, but they don't want to get involved. They're just going to try to extricate themselves. They're going to go down south, wrap around what looks to be V7. So now more and more nades come in. Uba does manage to get some vision in, but it's going to be a quick pickup and retreat. But, Ooh. I mean, what do you do? Arts are going to be up looking down into this one, and it's just going to be a continual cascade as Dana. Well, I don't I don't even know what you do Soul's got to leave. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no hope now. This is I, – I don't think Donawa was expecting somebody to be here because Soul's really far away, and he was on the other end of this hill – to the, he was looking in different directions. It felt more like to me that Soul was, to, and I could be wrong, but that Soul was the point of a fight, of a reconnaissance mission to maneuver themselves towards the north side of the circle, and they got caught oh, no. kind of flat-footed there. Oh no, Ace, this is exactly what you just forced who you were fighting to do. They're having to roll right through this one, but they're navigating, look at this, everybody's playing out on the edges right now, expecting somebody to shift in. This is beautifully red. I love this rotation and how they just snuck that one through playing the walls. So good. This is this is the only team that can do this kind of stuff is Ascend. I mean, they're such a interesting team to watch. And I mean this with a lot of love because they don't play PUBG like anybody else. And I've said this a, a lot of times this year that I've been very fond of their play style. And the moments like that, Matt, it just endears me to them. It's just stuff that should not work that does because they find great timings. They do great reconnaissance. They're so trusting in each other, and they're so individually talented that it's just incredible. I love Oops. The... I jinxed them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. The, Still, I, they got there. That yeah, was impressive yeah. in and of itself. That's one of the things I love about PUBG is that, yes, there is a meta, there is all this other stuff, but if your play style fits you better than the meta does, you can still use that to try to get some successes. Is, they yeah, do okay. die. They did get in position. The fact that they even they, got they there. They did drive by, like, I don't know, 30 people, and knew, everybody knew exactly where they were. Yeah. But um, I, I still just getting that position was astounding to me. Now, uh, whenever we're looking at the lay of the land, most of our teams are now starting to impress in more towards that eastern side. No surprise, given the way that the circle is going to go. But... This is a very interesting situation. We've got Sonics out to the east, Space Station Gaming kind of, I don't know, a third the way into the circle with them, and then everybody else is kind of Godok or Hillside around it. Summer, last player alive for Pero, and it is uh, not, not very fun in that blue right now. He doesn't have a blue zone bag even to kind of give him a little bit of extra breathing room. XO going to be able to get up ahead of him, yeah, but they've got Tiamba looming, so Summer... I didn't catch how many first aids he had left in that bag. I didn't quite look, but he's going to need a few more to make this work. It is Circle 4 going into Circle 5 as we do keep in a good chunk of Godok, but we also bring in a huge amount of the fields being our focus point as pretty much there is going to be the urban environment in Godok, then there's going to be SSG's location, and then it's there's it's flat but not really flat. It's more like that rice paddy styling of hills in this area. Yes, it is flat, but then there's also the recesses and it leads into the roads, so there's kind of like more of a ridge line to work with. Precisely. Yeah, it, it, I like... I like the fields in the, in a way, but they're really challenging to play in. Glass under pressure here from Diamond oh. instantly shut down ZYY man. This this kid is playing out of his mind for the first time in an international event, as far as we're aware, has been really damn good. And Diamond scouted this for a long time. They were watching, trying to figure out exactly the way that they wanted to rotate through. And yes, Tylo can Tylo can't find a rotation as well as they, it looks like they're going to be running a bit more of a split rotation into this to see if maybe they can find the right path in with one of their squads. But Shin now going to be right up on top of B7 trying to provide some type of support, but not going to be enough. The rest of his members just getting picked to pieces on this approach. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is kind of V7's territory. And now taking that fight from Erangel over to Tago here against Tai Lu. Doing some serious damage. Shen able to get into the stairwell of this apartment building, but up above is Gumin. And he's kind of checking, but Shen managed to scoop up the Saiga. So he's got that really, really powerful close range weapon. And it's even got a six second and Dude, a silencer on it. Let's go. I know. I mean, that is kidded. He is ready <laughs> for this firefight. He's got the aim down. Summer not oh, quite no. done yet. Going to spot out Exo's insight. And Exo was kind of having to contend up against Sonics. Them losing a member there is going to make it a bit more bold for the Sonics to try to make their approach. And unfortunately, those shots that were going on to Exo weren't anywhere near where Sonics were rotating. And somewhere out in the middle of all this, the Sonics were able to find a run over onto somebody from XO. Now Tiggleton, the only one on his feet. 
for the Sonics, trying to find the angle onto Rip. Uh, but now he's going to wait for Rip to get out of the car, and then it's actually going to be ZYY, of course. Who else? Of course it is. Yeah, but okay, Tig steals the point. All right, now, Gita, what are you going to do? There's not too much that you can really work around. All of SSG is also looking into this. It's just a matter of can you make sure to secure some points, maybe try to sneak your way in. You can see that B7 still also trying to fend up, realizing the fact on how Sonics are going to try to creep their way into this one is some are actually just bisected past all of this and got near on center circle. He did reveal himself, but something to keep in mind. How did he do that? That's insanity. He kills a player from XO and then just scoots by this fight between the Sonics and, and XO into near darn center of the circle. I mean, Summer talking about brilliant veteran plays. That's one right there. I mean, that's that's a play that may get placement points for Patrick Road out of a game where they literally had zero, where Summer was sitting out in the phase four blue, chunking through it, having to chew through first aid kits. Wow. <laughs> also want to point out wow. H1 trying to slowly crawl his way over to TIG. I don't know how well that one's going to go down. So uh, now at least we managed to cut out most of those fields, right? Urban ending for certain. Yep. This is urban. I have no idea what to expect oh. here. Oh, no. See, this is why those Amazing. fields can be scary and bad. Amazing. There's enough of a hill line there that you can hide behind it. Just enough. Not much longer, though. But they've got it for now. I mean... If they can spring the trap here on a server, a service is kind of split 2-2, two -two, so they're kind of busy. You well, might be able to bust them open. The problem with it is the fact that day trade someone's going to have to move, right? Is it's Cerberus that are just, yeah, okay, they already spotted him. Here comes the sprays out. Yeah, it's going to be a hard road to cross. That being said, Solzy's having to step back and be like, okay, that might have been a few more people than I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be like one rat over there. This is crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, Nuren Zapuchil is trying to cut on through, but... Not being getting any hope, and high sack with the flank and the vomis, almost wiping him out. I mean, it is just full on destruction over here. Everybody's just trying to limp their way across it. FaZe also gets a vision on this from the outside, oh. trying to assist in. They're starting to turn this one back around. Nuren's clinging to life right on the edge of the zone. By the way, that's Nuren's parents down in the bottom left-hand corner giving us a little bit of show of their feelings in this fight. Tycon's grenade going to come up short. Puchil's trying to go over there as Nuren's pulls off. Oh, now let's see how the follow-ups are going to come out. Next day's going to be very, very close. Jeem's just watching it all at range, waiting to see whatever the angle's going to present itself. And Nuren somehow just clinging to life in a most desperate situation. Masterful stuff. I mean, that blue zone came out, and he knew he was donezo if he sticks around so he's at least able to survive for a potential another fight. I mean, he's got three frags thinking that maybe Tycon had pushed forward, expecting some aggression out of this notably aggressive player, but instead Tycon wisely backs off. All right, SSG's got to make their rotation. They do have X members that are going to be in front of them. Uba's just going to be to the north, not the cleanest angle to work around. Instead, it's just going to be running gun your way right up into the thick of it, playing around the train pieces. It's going to be Paige that's trying to lead the way through. Roth, charge shot already down. Uba's going to be coming in from the flank back behind it. Oh, turns away at the wrong moment. Now just one member up for Space Station Gaming, clinging to life. and. This is not going to be easy to contend in with. It looks like Uba doesn't have to deal with too much more of this. He's going to roll right by him, and Pixel is going to read it and pick him up at least. Yeah, pretty good stuff here from SSG. Pixel the last one up. If he can get Molodoc, this won't be too bad at all. He's got the point. He needs one oh. more bullet. Does he know where he is? The fire is blocking up oh. so much of the vision. It's going to be Tig from across the road that spots him out and takes him down. That Tig just inadvertently saving the bacon there. Tig, by the way, has been the majority oh. of the points, Scott. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, what is going on in this game? I'm just cursing everybody. But Sonic's, by the way, having a really, really good lobby, despite not being maybe as explosive as this team. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard, though. The fact that you can even compete and get close to their amount of points whenever they're eating as much as they are is absolutely insane. T5, Tiamba also in great positions. Uh, Tycon also pretty close to the zone. Nuren's going to have to be making a move. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Faye's going to have to make a big shift in. But remember that Tyloo V7 Falcon situation? That one's still brewing, so we'll keep an eye on that. As Nuren's, do you know? Do you know where Tycon is? See, here's the footsteps. He's oh. just waiting. Gonna step around. Oh! The pre-fire from Tycon gonna give it all away. That was really nice reaction there from Nurens, and it instantly just backs off. Doesn't want any of it. Needs to reposition, needs to rethink. And FaZe in the meanwhile is just watching this, like licking their lips, like, please, we want these points. Please, 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 please. So please. a few times wrapping your hand wrapping the bandages around your hands is actually where the bullets hit. Right? 
Oh, uh, Naldurans, what are you going to do, man? Uh, he's FaZe is getting aggressive on this. They've shifted, what, about 150? They crossed the road to come over here trying to see if they could pick up a couple of kills off of it. But the way Nurens is moving, he's just not opening an angle for him. This FaZe is going to split now. They're looking to try to just say, okay, there's only two over here. Let's pick up the point. Nurin's parents watching <laughs> with excitement, I'm sure. Ooh. Oh, he's baiting it out. He's managing to jump from position to position. Tycon's still reading it. Great job on that. Every single peak just narrowly missing. I mean, he's going full on Neo, just dodging those out. Finding the perfect opportunities, but it's going to be T5 on the side of it. Doing a lot of damage, putting in the work. Now it's just going to be peaking back and forth. Faze also wanting to move closer into this one, but it's going to be an error burst right on top of him. T5 picks up the kill. What a wise move there from Nurin's to explain load that gas can that prevented Tycon from pushing him now of course we we know that no matter what he was in trouble but at least kept that fight potentially safe for himself T5 has exposed themselves to Tiamba they're taking some damage as they're trying to keep track of Tycon phase as well hungry for this point on the Cerberus fragger let's see what Tycon wants to do I mean, you don't have a lot of good options to work with. You can see down bottom, Tai Lu trying to fight their way through. Gonna have to run right through that Molotov, and then Tiamba's gonna have vision on him. That's not gonna go too well for them. And now Tycon looking at a similar situation as he's gonna have FaZe on one side, T5 on the other. And that's a three-man versus a four-man squad, and you're just poor old Tycon by yourself. Not fun. Not fun at all, but somehow Tycon's still managing to make it work as FaZe losing Gustav here. T5 able to get their res off of their knock. So now FaZe has turned their attention to Patapong. They want to block him inside of this house. They know there's only a couple exits. So look at these blue zones covering every oh. door of a Tycon. Reads it, gets the knock onto Jeems. Can't quite get the flush. Here comes all of the utility. He's already made the read into it. Making a step into the smoke. Gets the spray. Oh. Almost manages to take down Vex. Narrowly claiming to life. But FaZe now takes some casualties, reveals themselves, and T5 knows exactly what they need to be watching for. I thought Tycon had him. Pow, pow. Out with Molodoc. Oh, Molodoc. Hello, what a grenade! Whoa. Two more to go! Oh, he's out there on top of him, though. Yeah. He's in trouble. Oh. And with this space, are they going to be able to commit back in? It looks like they might be able to get a ZYY bare minimum. They're going to be 7 7, just going to be providing some covering support. But I mean, T5 got their focus in what's going on with FaZe right now, so this could provide enough time for Tiamba to make something happen. Yeah, I think these reses should come through for them. Uh, unless there's some miracle grenade from T5. T5, in the meantime, just shredding Jeems, trying to get across the street. I mean, FaZe is outside of this next circle, mat, So they, not only do they have to cross the street, you know, the circle is going to force the issue here really soon. But that's some good shooting from Fax. Now they've got to cross. And yes, it's just that small little bit of a fence that they're trying to work with. You can see good smokes, very aggressive in their setup. Correct, going to have to lead the way. Just him and Fex trying to see if they can make something. But Rostid going for a flank, going back across the road. Fathapon going to go ahead and get down, flush onto it. And it's just going to be on the outside of this one. Fex trying to make something happen. But Fathapon already knows. Going to step around. Read it. Goes for the spray. And now T5's got control of the circle. But let's not forget good old Tiamba now back up. Four members, they're pushing strong. And they know there's a knock. They know they have huge numbers advantage. So here come the grenades. T5 completely pinned behind this compound, Matt. They are in trouble. What is going on? Tiamba is just absolutely rocking this zombie right now. It's going to be Pow Pow trying to see if he can push in. Gets blinded. Has to stop on that one. Now just going to slow down. Get the face set up. Good read coming out from T5. Can they step up against the Tiamba Giants? Unbelievable stuff here. Tenacious play from T5. And now you've got Padampong going down to Lin Shu. Tanadol going to claim a point on the Pow Pow. Still two players kicking. I think Terraton 5 might be able to do this if they can get the oh. kill, but it goes CYY again. Just beautiful hold on to that. Now it's just going to be that's what last one up. He's severely outnumbered, knows it. Looks like he might just be thinking about feeding it over the blue. And that's not a bad idea because who the hell is going to be catching up to Tiamba right now? That is their third win, is it not? Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. They've won three out of four games, Matt. They are they are literally going to the winner's bracket. Just forget it. It's actually done. They're just, going to the winner's bracket. Just let it go. Like I had to stop for a second. I like <laughs> I was like, I know that they've won three, but is that really what's yeah, happening yeah, right now? He had to like process wait, how many games have we played? It, it, it's not week two? <laughs> it's yeah, what, yeah, exactly. It's not even day two. My god, this is <laughs> uh I They're can't crazy. really call it an underdog story with no. what's going on with Tiamba. It's just excellence right now. They are just 
playing everything so clean. They're reading everything. They, yeah, there are a couple of hiccups that happen here and there, but outside of that, this is a massive amount of points they've managed to pick up, as I know the analyst desk is just winged up feast on this last game. I'll tell you who feasted on the last game is the team that's been feasting on chicken all day today. Four matches played and three go the way of Tiamba. They're teaching us a master's class and how to show up, put up, and play in group stages. Martin, are they qualified at this point? It's some of the most crazy day one performance out of a group stage for PGC I've ever seen. Yeah, I would say as the guys called out as well during the cast, Tianba, they are going to the winner's bracket as the first team confirmed wow. here. It's just too many points. It's just, they're unstoppable at this point here. We're talking about the 75 to 85 point cutoff, yeah. right? If you have 75 points up four games, Woo. then you're just insane, right? Like crazy. Yeah. I think they're going to hit around the 70-ish points mark at that point. And we'll keep tracking them. Obviously, they've got a lot more games ahead of them. There are 12 games to play for this group. We've only got four done. It just yeah. so happens to be that Tiamba's soaking up the points. But I guess that's kind of good news for a lot of the folks on the bottom, like, say, a Cerberus, who's off to a slow start. Because with all of those points going to Tiamba so quickly, it really does leave it wide open for a lot of other teams to get in the mix. Exactly. And now we're going to Miramar with two games to go, right? Mm -hmm. It's very likely that's going to be uncontested in Montenuevo, right? right. I mean, if you have that alone, at, as Tianba, I feel like it's just impossible not to get like at least 10, 15, maybe 20 more points today here. So crazy performance coming out of Tianba. What a day for them. Welcome back. We are four games into PGC 2023. My name's Toppies. I'm joined by Avenger here on the desk. And it has been a wild event. While the Erangel maps, the circles were regular, which is something I feel is unique lately. But Kendi and Tego have been a little bit of a different story. The Godok circle was tough. I mean, that was a hard way to play. Yeah, for sure. In this situation here, go, go dark. Would you have like an urban inning where you're not guaranteed mm -hmm. where it kind of where? Of course, it went in, right. and you're guaranteed. You had most of your teams that are already there. Like you have 12, 12, 10 to twelve teams that's already committing, right, to an urban inning. If they had to go out, if they yeah. had to go like far out on the rice field on the eastern edge, it would be hugely different there. But yeah, it was good to see T5 locked it in early. Tianba on another fantastic run for them right. here. And that was it. I mean, there was a point where I thought for sure T5, this is yeah. their game. They have that compound. Tiamba but it's a big, I feel like it's too big to call, right? It's it one was, of these yes. situations where like you have wall all the way around, mm -hmm. so the teams can kind of encroach on it quite easily. And they have to hold like these big houses yes. one by one or like it's almost like a, a barn size one. You have to hold it one by one or mm -hmm. at least two, two, right? You can't cover every single angle. And I think the chaos that was happening on sure. that side with the sort of the phase imposing on this weird, this sort of like chess match we ended up with yeah, between yeah. Tycon and Norens that sort of kept that running that fight beautiful. going over on that side. That was. Honestly, I thought I thought Norens was done for. We actually got to see his parents on the camera for yeah, a second. Beautiful. And then he survived and drew out to be what was honestly one of my best 1v1s that I've seen in a very long time. That was beautiful. Yeah, I like to see also you know, like him focusing a little bit on jumping in. Yep. A few shots of the gas can as well to kind of mm -hmm. close that area off. But he got hit and he got third putting them from the side as well. Unfortunate for him. I'd like to see a, a win for him when he's a solo player against mm -hmm. Tycon, another great player with his parents watching live in the crowd. Yeah. That's just something you can't really get much as a player here. Well, for. I mean, that moment alone where we saw Tycon sort of holding the corner and pre-fired as Nurens yeah. came running and Nurens knew it was going to happen and juked back the other way. It was just two players who you know play an insane amount, are masters of their craft, going head to head. And a lot of it almost felt like the rest of the lobby yeah, to a yeah. certain extent was just watching it. Like they stopped throwing grenades for a minute and just let uh, them do their thing. Exactly. But let's talk about the winners. Oh this is the team that took home the victory. Tiamba yet again, ZYY. Lin Shu, Pow Pow, and 7 7 just coming through once again. Such a strong lineup. Yeah, super insane from these guys again. CYY, you know, mm -hmm. a, a player that's coming into this, you know, coming into PCL in, in the last season for them and then just absolutely dropping bombs yeah. on everyone here. And they continue to do so into PGC. Good to see. Huge clutch frame right now. And the man of the match, good to see here for CYY. And that's what I love to see. I mean, okay, if you go over and you look at his player history, he was a development player yeah. until he joined this roster for the last grouping in, in the regionals. And now look at him carrying the team right now. He is playing out of his mind. I will give a short shout to Pow Pow for the third time in a row. It's he's just because he's of, giving you points. Well, no, 400 damage taken. This uh, man absorbs more tank. bullets than anybody else I've seen and still manages to he's going in we saw that with that push he went first he made sure that he got all the information on T5 and let his team get that win let's look at the match leaderboard Tiamba 19 total points Crazy. again wow it's insane fantastic to see you for Tiamba and also see a young player you know 20, yeah. 20 years old at this point here 
good to see him be able to step up to the case for PTC mm -hmm. 2023 and, and frag out like this. T5, another good game for them. They're going to be ending on a good amount of decent yep. total points too. They, we've, we've seen them and followed them. They've been kind of steadily in there, so good to see another double digit. And actually, they're going to be able to take a tight second spot wow. here, Top Eels, with Sonics, 34 points, but 69 at Jamba. Right, it's very nice. And I will say part of that <laughs> is why T5 is able to make the jump. Right, why right. Donald made the jump last time. Because of the fact that so much has gone right, on top right. of that board, it's wide open for some of these teams. Cerberus, again, just like Danawa in the last right, game, right. they were able to sort of put some points up, start that climb. So, again, good news for teams that struggled at the start to see Tiamba doing so well. This is the group stages. We just need top eight. If you are a team, if you are a fan watching these teams and you're saying, my guys are off to a slow start, don't freak out. Get some popcorn, relax a little bit because there's more games to play and Tiamba has made it anybody's. And even if you're ascending last place right now with eight points, there's right. only 20 points up up to day trade. That's true. On fourth place. That's insane. It's so, mm -hmm. so close because we have the tops that are just sponging up all the points. Absolutely. So we are going to be moving over to Miramar in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Unleash my shopping spree. Duty free from big brands. At all King Power stores. And King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions, and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Anuman's forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their guard. With my magic, the night will turn. Please beware, Mayara is coming for you. ไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทำแค่ตั้งใจและสนุกกับมันถ้าสาหร่ายต้องเท่าแก่น้อยเช้าเช้าเช้าเช้าเช้าเช้าเช้าเช้
You know, Paper, a lot of the times whenever we come into the day, I think I have an idea on how it's going to go. <laughs> Today is not that day. Aaron Gell was like just, I'm sorry, I don't have another way to say it, was just completely wild ass. Then we make our way over into Vikendi and Tego and their, yeah, okay, urban innings and stuff like that, but much calmer than Aaron Gell. Okay. At least, yeah, for like the duration of the game. Yeah, and now yeah. we're making our way over to Miramar, and I have no idea what's about to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because they've been wild in different ways, right? Like, Aaron yeah. Gell is just start, start to finish action, and then you get weird, weird circles on Vikendi and Tego. So, mm -hmm. hey, I mean, from a viewership perspective, today's been a lot of fun. If you're a Tiamba fan, you've been having even more fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, welcome to, you know, the PUBG Global Championship Tiamba edition today. Like, yeah. this has just been, it was so funny. I was talking to Gunner back on here, and I go, Hey, you guys are playing really good today. Or good today, and he's like, "Yeah, can we? Can someone else win a game? Like, this is a fair." <laughs> hey, like, somebody else did win one. Yeah, game that's true. So far out of four. Yeah, that's uh. But hey, you know, there's no consistency in PUBG esports, and yeah, no, 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 that's just you know, not like, true. No, we no, know no that's good, not true. good players, good teams can accomplish stuff. Today is a great example of that because yeah. you cannot deny it is skill that's getting them into the end game. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always pretty high on Tianba in a lot of ways. I think a lot of yeah. people sleep on them because. They do have a lot of potential to pop off. Now, like, in a way, you got to be kind of wondering, like, like can Tiamba really keep this up? Like, is this is this true? Is this another Navi in the making? Like, I, we don't know. You know, that's yet to be seen, but that's why we play the games. But, I mean, look, regardless, you're going to be feeling really confident as Tiamba is through the rest of this event because you can always look back on this and say, look, we've already done this. We've already won three out of four games in a scenario. Like, if they're in a pressure situation like let's say they're in the grand finals and it comes down to it and they need to put up a ton of points you know coming into that last day or something you can always have that to rely on and to think about i mean right now tiamba is twice the amount of points of t5 and sonics that are in second place tied that's bonkers, man. That's just absolutely bonkers. That is just an insane start. But now we make our way over to Miramar, and I cannot wait to see what the desert is going to be bringing for us because there is so much to unpack. Are we going to see Tiamba continue this absolutely rampant run or T5, Sonics, Daytrade? I don't Danawa, can somebody else find a way to stop it? I don't know, man. They're just, they're on one. And, and then, again, ZYY, I, I can't sing this kid's praises enough because he's new to the squad, just joined in September. That's only two months ago, folks, and he is popping the heck off for them. He has been absolutely stellar. He's the best performing player in the tournament so far. So you got to love what you're seeing for Tiamba. They clearly knew what they were doing when they picked this kid up, and it has been absolutely amazing. So plane is out. Ascend is via Delmar. They, they claim it's the best drop spot on Miramar. I'm not so sure. But anyway, I'll be interested to see if Day Trade is going to mess with Donawa now. Donawa seemed unsure if Chumacero is going to be free for them or not, but Day Trade looks to be kind of flanking out more towards the eastern side of Chuma, whereas Donawa is Chuma proper. Otherwise, any more hot drops that come, I'm not sure. Uh, again, sometimes my information is faulty coming into this. Sometimes the scrims aren't always in indicative of what's possible. See, but we don't ever get a chance to talk about how the players lie to us about what they're planning in their drops, just oh, so that way we can bring something else. It's kind of one of the fun parts about this, is there's so many options for these teams to work around, then you have to look into all the secondary factors. I mean, we also did see somebody end up stuck in a car with some like an opposing team in an yep. earlier game. So it, it can be chaotic for everybody involved. Um, looking out, I mean, right now everything's going to be pretty comfortable for everybody looking through this one. So. Altogether, it looks like it is just going to be a V7 picking up a vehicle. Do it. Hi, Saki. Do it. Ooh, uh, I wanted it. I wanted it. I wanted it. I was just thinking, like, Cerberus doesn't like it when people drop close to their drop spot. Like, we saw this with Howl uh, all the time <laughs> at PGS1. So I was just like, are they going to fight for this? Like, is V7 actually doing this? Or are they just grabbing the vehicle and running? They grabbed the vehicle and they barely got out. Falcons has been a consistent squad in a lot of all of this chaos. It's just been mm. real quiet. They're one of the few teams that are kind of like they're still picking up their kills, they're still doing it, but a lot of their positioning is coming out a lot of their positioning on the leaderboard is coming out of positioning off of placements. One of the few teams that's managing to consistently at least find something in that regard. Yeah, it's it's kind of the Falcons MO and it's it's working for them right now where we talked about this earlier and it was a big point of, uh, you know, uh, discussion during the PAS that the Falcons are a little bit passive uh, and to their benefit this time. And so, you know, reading the lobby well are the Falcons. I'll say that uh, they, they seem to have found a decent groove. I think a lot of teams that 
we haven't talked about a ton are actually having pretty good performances. I mean, FaZe, even though they've gotten it, some unfortunate early game situations, they're sitting right in eighth, man. But see, that's the whole thing, is it's just the leaderboard. Because of what Tiamba is doing and how they're eating up everything, the leaderboard is so stacked together, it is absolutely insane. We often talk about the fact that one good game, you know, pick up your points for the win and, you know, get eight kills or something else like that. That's a very solid trajectory for you. If a squad like, I don't know, SSG were to do that and the other squads don't pick up near on any points that are above them, they could climb all the way up into that, like, fourth place position in one game. It's still that tight. Exactly. You know, Loki, I talked about him a lot earlier. I forgot to mention his PNC win. How could I forget? So not only does he have... PGC, uh, yeah. he's got a PNC now uh, because Korea did win PNC this year. But another player that I think you could start making an argument for being uh, a potential GOAT if they win this tournament is Tiggleton. If the Sonics win this, I think you really got to consider Tiggleton maybe the GOAT. I mean, he's going to have a PGIS. He's going to have a PGS. He's got two international titles. And if he could top that off with a PGC, you got to be really be thinking about this guy who's consistently one of the top fraggers in events through everything, but anyway, let's take a look at a highlight. Oh, wait, hold on, the highlight's coming, guys. I promise there is actually a highlight. Here it is. <laughs> a very, very solid performance coming out from the casters as well as Danawa inside those clips. Is, it looks like Danawa in a good position. Chumacera did do them pretty well with the circle. Yeah, this is a map they thrive on. This is a map that they read really well, and because of their individual talents, you know, in terms of especially their assault rifling, but also their DMRing, that they, they can control a lot of space on this map, and they're really, really good at it. They read the map really well. They understand circle theory uh, incredibly well on this map, so they, they, they read everything so, so good. So this is the map definitely where I consider Donawa to be better uh, than a lot uh, is Miramar. I think it's their better map. There's the Tiggleton, the guy I was just talking about a bit ago, is a, a potential potential goat in the making. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I think there's some players that, if they can win this PGC, we're going to be talking about them as contending with our current best player of all, or, you know, who most of us consider the best player of all time, Uba. And Silzen, a guy who's been to almost every, he's, he's one of those guys who's almost there for every international. He just missed one. And I mean, especially if you count the fact that it has been harder for him to qualify from his region, that's a statement in and of itself. He yeah, absolutely. He hasn't always had the easiest path to get in there. Uh, if you're a favorite team, you don't feel like you're getting enough chance to watch, do not forget about the fact that we also do have the PUBG Esports.com that you can go to to watch Sonics, Danawa, Day Trade, Tiamba, Petricor Road, and Tyloo all play. Phase, who has control in this position right Ooh. now, takes some shots back into T5, but Adol is going to be able to make it away. And also, we will have the first team, after the first team is wiped in this game, Yep. we get a code. You guys get a code, and you can get some GP from that code. It's anywhere from, what was it, 800 to 5,000 potentially? Yeah, this is a good one. So you want to yeah. make sure that you have uh, your game open, ready to go ahead and drop that in there. Uh, depending on how the action, we'll try to point it out as much as we can. But, you know, it could just happen whenever, I don't know, five teams all die at the same time. So we will try to help you guys out. But trust me, we will point it out to you guys as it is available. Right now, we're getting a much calmer start than we have been seeing on a lot of these other games. Is a Miramar can kind of be want to provide that in the earlier sections. It's the mid game where everything starts to get dicey. Yep, this one, you know, it's Miramar. It's not a, you know, a, an island potential circle or a southern island potential circle. So this one has a lot more room to breathe for these teams. And sure, you'll see some potential rotation traps or something like that from time to time. I don't see anybody really setting up for one in particular. I mean, Donawa kind of has a 2-2 split on Monte Nuevo or a 1-3 split, excuse me. But no, nobody else is really gunning for something that I would consider a trap. Petrichor Road has power grid because we don't have we don't have uh, Twisted Minds in here in this lobby. So a few potential future hot drops are not formulating because of the way these groups have been laid out. And this is one of those circles that has a lot of, I guess, known contenders for where it could end up, right? We still have Power Grid that's in play. We still got the Hacienda Hillside and San Martin. We still got the Pozo Fields. There's a lot of different things that these players are trying to contend with. So we're not seeing the same 
hardcore desire and centering that we've been seeing on the other maps. This one, it feels like just due to how the circle's set up, more people are wanting to play for vision and information and just go, okay, where are we going to make our next leapfrog location to? And who can we potentially exploit depending on how this is going to go? Is This is probably the most split or wide open I've seen a phase one circle today, I believe. <laughs> it feels like it, right? And, and the interesting thing about this is to build on what you're saying, well, hold the phone, rip! Just takes Loki, rips him out of the lobby. Nice shots there, Rip just catching Donawa off guard. I mean, this has been a problem for Donawa here today uh, in a lot of their games, other than the one they won, is that they're they're trying to go for these early splits, and sometimes they're getting punished where they're not they're cut, caught off guard. We saw it against Exalt in the previous game. They're not quite ready for it. But I want to build on the point you're talking about, because I think it's a good one, Matt, that like this circle is a little tough to read because there's a lot of that land ratio stuff going on in here uh, where we don't know for sure where the circle's going to go. It's tough to read exactly which direction uh, it's going to head, so a lot of teams are doing exactly what you're doing, playing spread out, looking for information, and Donald was going to get punished for it. I mean, a great example of this is if you have the map feed up, Petrichor Road is playing both the north and the south of, I guess, the raised plateau that's going to be over there where Power Grid's at, just so that way they can have options and information whichever way this goes. And a lot of teams are kind of leaning into some variation of a 2-2 split. Tiamba's doing it. Uh, I mean... The Sonics are doing it to some degree with uh, taking the rest, looking down into Picado, while we, they have their other members that are going to be playing into Power Grid itself. This is a, a lot of, I guess, safety plays coming in. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like Petrichor Road, for example, because this could just center up, right? It could yeah. just go, like, west of San Martin and center up on top of them, or it could hard shift. If it hard shifts south, like if Circle 2 goes south, then it's very likely to end up south of those Power Grid mountains. So then, you know, they've got a position of beachhead potentially to work from from there. So, yeah, exactly. this is, you know, teams really understanding the fact that this is not a guaranteed thing. This is a tough circle to read. Um, you know, hard shifts are always a, a possibility no matter what. But this, this one is particularly difficult for these teams to, so far, get a good judgment on where they could potentially be looking to set up where there's a likely kind of hmm. area that the circle will end. We have Rip, I believe, that is right on top of Danawa at the time that is having a sandstorm He's that still there, also huh? kind of passed through it. I couldn't tell if he moved closer whenever that was going on or not. Speaking of teams that normally do 2-2 splits, we've actually got Space Station Gaming. It looks like mostly together. Ah, uh, there's why. Okay, yep. Go ahead and prep the emergency pickup. Circle is going to go up to the north, so it looks like we've got Pozo Fields being a key component inside of it. It's going to be interesting here for SSG. What do they want to do? They have this northern part of the circle all to themselves. Are they just going to pass it up? Yeah. Don't take it. Yeah. No, right. this, is, they, they, this is great. This yep. is a, like the way that they hedge their bets here, Matt, so smart. If this hard shifts down to the south, they've got an option. They've got the vehicles. They can go to where they want in the north. If any team has learned some quality lessons from emergency pickups, I feel it is Space Station Gaming. Everybody can remember back into uh, PGS2 whenever they had made that jump on the Tago right early to get inside the circle, and then it shifted over into Shipyard. This this is a squad that you know is like, okay, we've thought this went through about five or six more times about how we're going to use this stuff. Yeah, so they do end up sending Roth up into it. Uh, and he just gets some high ground for some information. Exalt fighting a couple different teams and doing well on both fronts, getting some knocks. They're at on five there. Potampong all out on his own. So Rossita Jr. trying to see what he can do, trying to see if he can see anything. Meanwhile, Donawa continues to get torn apart piece by piece, soul down as well now. So the two top fraggers for Donawa in the PWS phase two are already out of this one. Yeah, um, just kind of clinging to life over here in what is going to be a very clustered section of the map that already has SSG, Phase, Petrichor Road, EX, T5, EXO coming in from the west. It's just getting to be, this is the party. This is the pop-off point right here. Oddly enough, though, due to how vertical and just how many recessed sections of the hillside are, a lot of these teams can continue to hang out here. I wouldn't say it's going to be comfy, but they can kind of cling to life in this position. Certainly. It's it's there's enough stuff you you can hide in here, and there's enough angles where other teams can punish the teams that try to punish you that you might be able to survive. Now those grenades could potentially hit Roth, but I think they're coming up just short. And Page Pixel stuck sharp shot with a dragon off, trying to do what he can to keep some pressure off of the two P's of SSG. I'm curious about. Okay, good thing we jumped over with Roth. I was curious if he had any more like uh, I guess damaging utility and like nades or Molotovs. Looks like he is entirely out. Uh, this is one of those situations where you don't know if you want to hold them for later or if you want to use them early. Looks like he did go for the use them early and not going to find too much out of it. Jeemus does try to go for a bit more of an outside angle, see if maybe he can hit something into it. But you can see that 
Look at that mini map right now. I mean, within what, 200 meters, there's three, four teams? Yep. And they, because they know that there's a pretty decent chance that this circle's gonna end up going this way because the Hook Mountain, <laughs> here come the mortars too. It's Be fine. Yeah, because the Hook Mountain to their west is land ratioed, so it, it, it tends to pivot around that mountain, uh, the circle does, so. They're, they're gambling that this is going to go east, and if it does go east, circles like to end in this vicinity. How cruel of a mistress is PUBG? Because if we see a hard shift into the west, or specifically into the northwest, everything in this map is going to fall apart. If, uh -oh. we, if we look into that crater field's pozo direction, it shouldn't go that way. But, but we know. like chaos, so... Chaos Let's 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 pray for uh, that. I, I want to put an ampersand on, or like I want to put a note on this notation. Okay. I like cruel circles every once in a while because uh -huh. I whenever we have the best of the best in the world, I want to see how they navigate. I want to see them <laughs> earn it whenever because I don't want anybody to be like, oh well, they just got circle luck or whatever. I want to see somebody have to figure out how to absolutely pull apart a terrible situation and then walk away from it feeling like an absolute beast. And well, circle does go north. It's close to what you wanted. Yeah. It's pretty close, to be honest. I mean, now this is very likely to keep going north, and Zhao Yang going to secure it in Nurin, so no more heroics from the hometown hero for Day Trade. Although Day Trade and T5 both having really solid days, second and fourth place respectively. So, look, the hometown crowd, I know it hasn't been exactly what they wanted, but they should be feeling really, really good uh, with the way that these tied teams have been performing so far. I'm just curious to see how the cluster of all the teams that are on the outside are going to navigate this. We presently have Falcons, Sonics, Cerberus, Diamba, Day Trade, Tyloo, Ace, all needing to figure out how they're going to approach what is a very vertical and honestly not the easiest to traverse a circle. If you're trying to get into the northern area, which is the more open one, it's going to have a good section of like the factory and crater fields in there, which is not the easiest just to drive up. So. If you're going to be pathing over here, you have to make sure that you're making a very smart decision, getting the information beforehand, and coming into it a bit slower than a run-and-gun approach that you would probably want to do with 59 still alive. Oh, and this I was, is why. Yep, I was going to say, Tiamba's just about to cross Tai Lu territory, but this time around, Tai Lu's getting a little revenge for how things have been going so far today, and I think Tai Lu was uh, thinking about trying to wrap around the wide side, go more towards Monte, but now they're going to have to pivot and potentially stop to take a fight here, try to keep Tai Lu at bay. It's hard to get those tires spinning enough, at least it's the Bronco, and that's the best reason there, or the big reason that Zhao Yang's able to get up that hill. Most other vehicles might not be able to get up there as quickly. I'm just gonna be content with ZYY's gun meta for right now, and uh, keep an eye on what's gonna be going on with that one, because if anything, we know that he can hit his shots with those. Now, Lin Chu gonna go for a bit more of flank position, but let's not forget that Ace is also over here, so even getting into this kind of more high ground to look back on the Tai Lu, I mean, he doesn't even have an angle for that, really. This is gonna be more of just a stall to see if maybe he can find pathing. Is this more of an anchor play and the rest of the team is gonna go just try to cut right into the thick of all the other teams? Yeah, I mean, I think they're just basically splitting and trying to play for late game points. I mean, at this point, frankly, Tiamba's fine. They can do whatever they want. And it, they're, they're in the winner's bracket. I mean, like, yeah. there's not too much else. But basically, Lin Shu is where I think the rest of Tiamba wanted to be eventually. And they might be able to do that. They're getting cut off by Cerberus. Teraton 5 watching V7 slam into the eastern crater field, the, the refinery or whatever that is going on inside or the military base, whatever, um, that's inside of that field, but right now V7 is just going to have to stop up, try to find places to keep those vehicles safe. Falcons turning their attention towards T5 after T5 made some noise. Hey, you remember that whole situation where we had like Roth that was right on top of Phase and it was really weird? Yeah. Um, don't worry, we also still have Petrocore Road that's now getting closer to that situation, and on top of it, uh, let's go ahead and add in Sonics, too, as this is kind of what's going on in Tiamba's lifestyle is um, they went to the east, it didn't work out, and so they decided to go to the west, and now Lynch was like, no, nope, I don't want anything to do with this, is yes, we're going to go straight up into where SSG is centered up, and V7 has got themselves a factory to play from. Yeah, Ty Lu getting wiped out, so there's the code, Matt. You want to read it? Oh, it is going to be 6Q29DWX4PJZH. As now, Sonic's going to make landfall right in front of X. And with that, they managed, X doesn't want to have too much to do with this. But keep in mind, this is not in safe zone. No, it is not. And, you know, Exalt has already made this spot pretty difficult for some of the other teams. But it's actually Silzen from downtown who gets the knock on a Baldock. Corexi with that Dragonov trying to pop some shots down into this res, but the smokes are going to come down. Uba 
going to be able to stick that. It looks like Petrichor Road on motorcycles driving past. Dangerous run here. Summer is going to get knocked by Monty. I mean, if you're going to traverse this area of the map, this is what you would want, right? Look, you buy so much more space with it. Oh, if he'd managed to get up there, that would have been so nice for later stages. Yeah, that... I'm not sure if well, this is intentional maybe. or not. SSG could have had a bit of an angle. Onto yeah, it. SSG and potentially Dono if they drive too far. Now, finally, Falcons. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but they're at on five. Falcons tried to push down into him, and they're paying the price. And this is what I was talking about. There's just not good pathing options. There's like, what, three or four roads that you can take to get into this, or you're going to use motorcycles, I mean, emergency pickup or something. I don't know. Nothing is going to be clean on this one. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of teams might stop on the outside and try to foot push their way into this one, most notably, like, Raw, Phase. We can see Exo maybe thinking something they're already gatekeeping out. It looks like I believe that Ace did manage to go ahead and get an emergency pickup. They're going to be flying in in just one moment to try to regroup, as I think that Chris is already up in the air. Yep. D plus Kia going to go ahead and find themselves with some friends of their own side going to be making the push into X at roughly the same time. This is a fight that needs to finish real quick. Yeah, and Tickleton knows it. He's already got the knock, so blood in the Holy water. Mate. Frag at his side. Yeah, Shrimsy takes the brunt of it. Uh, full on it. You know, that's the uh, get down, Mr. President. I'll just go ahead and jump <laughs> on the nade for oh, you. Oh, Moldock right back behind him. Goes for his break. It's a lot of damage. Doesn't get the knock, though. Dude, Tiggleton is so good. Trimsy there as well. Gonna get knocked for his trouble. It's actually Thanadol from a from afar. Art the only one left now for Exalt. Trying to get ahead of this around the corner. He wins that battle. H1 just not quite ready enough. Kickstart able to finish it, but are they gonna be able to get these reses? That's a big, big cost. They've got to go ahead and hop inside of vehicles, and they've just got to go. Looks like that's going to be Tig's roll on this one. Problem with it is, is remember Petrichor Road phase? They were over here a second ago. T5, this is about all you can get to. Get to that hillside, get to that rock, and then, yep, hunker down here. The best that you can do. Ace now going to have to contend in what's going to be going on this hillside. A couple of shots going on in D plus Kia as they're trying to creep their way in, but let's not forget about day trade because we've got 37 people alive in what is just pretty much half of the circle looking downhill. This is Tiamba from in the blue harassing these teams, getting these knocks, getting these flushes. They are making the most of bad positions. I mean, look, this, yeah, okay, they go out 13th. It's, it's pretty much their worst game of the day. Who cares? They're still doing damage. They still got three kills in really bad, bad circles. Three different players from three different teams all got flushed to the blue zone. That lets you know this is a pathing terror right now to try to work through as team is going to be rewarded for getting into position quite early, most notably T5 over in the east. Cerberus now getting some control over in that western area. But SSG, who has the high ground, has kind of been watching a lot of this. I haven't been seeing them take a lot of shots. It feels like they're gathering a lot of information and saving their ammo for what's going to come next. Yeah, you got to be careful with these high ground positions, you know, especially because you're going to be tempted to start shooting a lot, but yeah. you're going to potentially run out of ammo. You see it all the time in PUBG Esports that teams that get these high ground spots just run out of ammo, you know, through like phase six, phase seven, and all of a sudden they get into the late game and they're trying to scramble to find dead bodies to get more ammo potentially. So they're being a little bit patient, but they're going to have tons of information. And again, this is the benefits of them really hedging their bets really well on phase one and understanding the potential chaotic nature of these circles. And they're able to keep themselves in a really, really strong position going into the late game. So you can see Exo come up right back behind Ascend, gonna take some shots into them. Ascend was looking like they were gonna path more into the west, which is gonna be just south of where day trade's gonna be. T5 now getting much more control over this eastern area. It's just Tig that they really have to worry about, and Tig's not gonna be too loud in his position as he has pretty much Petrichor Road to the south, and again, T5 to the north, Dan one's gonna be to the west. As if going to be making that path right next to where day trade is. But if they can manage to get by this, they only have to contend with a duo from Cerberus. The problem is that angle is going to be real good. But no, that is just shut down. It's just going to be firefighting coming out from the vehicle. A Sin just run and guns that one all the way through. Yeah, that's really nice stuff there from a Sin. Not a little bit off with the shots with Cerberus, but Sen makes them pay pretty quick. Now, Sharp Shot has a Dragonov and a P90 <laughs> sitting above them. That's a really nice pickup for him. But look at Ascend. They just want to keep, you know, clearing these edges, just making sure that they have space to maneuver, that they can play their game. Tickleton has been spotted, and as good as he is, I think he is done so. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do out of that one. Uh, eventually running out of the tree lines, they're going to go down. Uh, keep in mind, T5 now is in a secure second place position. Eyes, yes, towards first, but let's just be honest, 
towards first. I'm not necessarily <laughs> going to be picking up too much more. They can pick up some decent kills off of this one, though. But it is going to be V7 creeping up back behind them, trying to use the opportunity that Tickleton was a distraction for. But that is so red from T5. That is not going to go down. Yeah, I mean, Thanadol's angle here is absolutely brutal. He can keep himself super safe and get down on top of V7. So now they have to try to hug the inside of this hill. And mm -hmm. Thanadol can just wait this out and use his teammates. He can bait them into Rossiter Jr. And yeah, okay, well, Glass has got a Groza, though, and that's a problem. Well, that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and start doing some traded shots between them. That's what's going to be up on top of all of this win, just absolutely demolishing him. And Thanadol, yeah, they have had one of the members go down, but V7, you got nowhere to go. Circle did shift over to the west, so this fight's got to end quick. Now, just going to be tossing last one up down that hillside. And, I mean, what are you going to do? Every single angle is a threat. Even vehicles rolling down the hillside. Yeah, and then it all because that's Ooh, such nice a good throw. grenade. He knows because he can't see a player just around the corner that there's those like kind of nooks that you can tuck into, and so that's that forces Tosi back. But it's really good awareness here of the terrain by T5, and the fight wasn't probably as clean as they would have liked, but still nine kills in this game is a really really good game. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what are you going to do from this stage forward? It's just going to be SSG. Is now getting some control. Also, looks like they're going to get a crate too, because why not? T5 got themselves a vehicle. That vehicle is going to be hard pressed. It's going to be running right into Axel's line. It looks like they're going to lean right into the cliff facing, stay as much into that as possible. So if they get shot, they can just bail out, lean onto the opposing side. Not going to get shot too much, so do manage to make it in the circle. So it's just good old Tosi out there by himself. Oh, rip there. Get, gets caught prone by Ming. And XO having trouble, but then it all coming in, stealing kills, stealing points. Really nice stuff. Page as well. Gets ripped, so Petrichor Road puts up the roadblock, and it's the other teams who are profiting. 11 kills and continue to stack them up. They're starting to get themselves a pretty good control point to play from because this is pretty much a king of the hill. I mean, verticality, hills, that has been the name of the game today right now, and it's going to be who can exploit it best. Dossie trying to make his way down that hillside. He's going to get bought out by Puchils. That's going to eliminate him, and it's starting to be a set of very dangerous contenders here in this later stage as Petrichor Rhodes Aixlip, realizing the problem of T5's positioning, does manage to try to creep up around here, but it's going to be assistance coming out from SSG that actually gets the knock. Yeah, third on five has just enough of an angle that they can't quite get finished. Aches left trying to find the range with a grenade. I'm shocked he could get one in there. The vehicle blows up, doesn't fall fortuitously, but that revealed Aches left's position to the rest of the lobby, but SSG helping him out. Oh, but then Flash got him. I mean, the problem with it is, is now that we can see this, Day Trade has had their position revealed. Space Station Gaming just kind of farming damage up on top of it. And you can see as the circle continues to close in more and more, more authority is going to go into these high ground positions as really it's just T5's little cubby that they're playing over here has got some safety. But you say that, that was one hell of a throw from there. By the way, Pixel's almost out of 5-5. Five five. Yeah. I, I talked about that earlier. Where mm -hmm. That's the problem with these high ground positions is you're, you're just going to be shooting so much, especially if they stay in, that you start running out of ammo. So curious to see what Pixel's going to be able to do. Now, there was another crate. I don't know if that was the crate that Sharp got that P90 out of up in that northern corner, but we'll see exactly what SSG is going to have to work with into this late game. They've got the high ground. They've got decent positioning for now. How much damage can they do to these other players? Nice shooting with the Dragonov. I mean, you got a Dragonov with 110 rounds, and I think that that's going to be fine for the high ground control for the time being. Sharp's just going to have to make sure that they continue to keep that pressure on. Now then, as they are looking into this, keep in mind, this duo is not inside the safe zone. So they're going to have to go ahead and regroup with Pixel, who's got, to have, got control position. But Ascend has been using this quiet time to really just kind of let everybody play the uh, attrition war, kind of get damage up, get everything together. And now they're starting to make an advance down into day trades line. Thanadol's one kill from 10 for himself for this. Now Ascend trying to bully day trade on the side. They're getting help from Thanadol. Ah, man. He's T5. Nuts. They are just not letting anything. It's just going to be a kill still to take that one away. But T5 now going to use that opportunity to creep in, hoping the fact that maybe that distracted SSG enough for them to move in, get right up against this rock. Dude, he's cracked right now. I mean, it's going to take some, some good shooting here from above. I mean, Space Station, again, has the advantage of knowing where T5 is. But T5, it's kind of hard for me to say for sure who has to move first. I think Space Station has to because they have to get off this high ground to maneuver back up to the north side uh, to get into the next circle. And that opens up a little bit of space for Theraton 5. Take a little bit of damage, but I think Hot Swat should be safe there. 
notice right now the, the very vertical position that we can see Pixel playing from. Whenever we see the other members from SSG, they're having to go entirely around this rock cropping, and they're going to be more in that kind of due north position. That's going to allow T5 to kind of creep in on this angle. Daytrade's got the vision onto him for right now, but Pixel's got to hit these shots. He's got to get knocked onto it. It's going to be Pooh Chills that gets the last tap in. So T5 is going to narrowly make it into position, but it's just not going to be comfortable. Still a brilliant game from Tanadol. Yeah. Absolutely stellar stuff. And the crowd was absolutely loving every one of those moments. And now their allegiance is firmly going to be behind day trade, no doubt about it. Ascend lines up three players. Even got a folded shield in there to help out. SSG spots a little bit of Kiliakai, puts a few shots down, but... This should be SSG's game, potentially. It just depends on how hard this Phase 8 circle shifts. Well, there's a world, too, where they've kind of put themselves in a pinched position, right? With Pixel and Hotwatt is going to be kind of next to each other, and then we're going to have SSG with Ascend. It's going to be about how Day Trade navigates this. If they can manage to survive for a while and distract Ascend enough to allow SSG to do something, great. If Day Trade just instantly explodes, SSG is going to have so much control and vision on these other teams having to move. Yeah, the good thing for SSG here is that this didn't hard shift all the way down to the south, so they've got the plateau underneath them that's still going to be high ground. Mm. Pixel, one more bullet there, buddy, and you could add a knock. Well, he's down 14, so... Yeah, uh, he's running low. I don't mind him conserving a bit, the, but that's one of those where... <laughs> oh, okay, sharp shot. Okay, sharp shot. <laughs> it's not fair, man. He gets both uh, I don't, the I two don't best think guns in the game, I Those think. numbers, those 1% chances don't cover what we just saw in Sharp Shot's hands. Yeah, exactly. The, with, with Sharp Shot having an AWN and a P90, this is like near 100%. Oh, man. Do that's, it. Do it. Just, just do it somewhere along these lines. We just don't, don't peek anymore, Dave. We don't need to watch do? any other players the rest of this game. He's just got all of the toys. <laughs> now we're going to sit here on Sharp Shot the whole time and watch him miss every single shot. And I he's know, just, now it's like... Uh, break his mental for the rest of the event. <laughs> um, but you can see that Ascend is throwing out some smokes, realizing the fact of where their threat in day trade is going to be at. Uh, Hatsawa has kind of used this opportunity just to do nothing. He's content over there letting SSG be entirely distracted. And so he's inside the circle. He's comfy. Blue zone nade with the blue zone now coming in. And yeah, Ascend's going to go ahead and pick those up. No surprise. Yeah, nothing they could do. They were stuck. Only one exit for day trade. But not a bad game at all. Keeping themselves uh, well within the top eight, top four for sure. And Sharp Shot still 10 bullets left in this AWM. Now it's Ascend's turn to see if they get taken down by one of these well-placed shots from Sharp. It's really going to be about SSG. Are they playing a 3v3v1, or is SSG playing a 3v4, where technically Hatsawat's on the other side, waiting to pounce the moment that Ascend starts trying to do anything? Because I know, how much more utility does Ascend have? They've been throwing smokes for forever in this position. Yeah, and Paige is trying to clear Hatsawat over here, and this is a little bit risky, you know, if you get it, great. They're trying to flush him out with some nades and stuff. But if Hatsawat does damage, that might open the door for Ascend to win this one. Trying to get some flashes out. Utility, they realize they need to get rid of that solo. They do manage to do it. It's going to be Paige that picks it up. Oh, at the same time, Sharp Shot manages to hit Chris. So that turns this one back into a 3v2. Controlled position sightlines. Pixel is going to be playing on one angle of it, just trying to survive. Sharp Shot needs to go for a reload in just one second. But Ascend has this little ridge that they're playing from. Problem is, is it's right up against the zone wall. SSG just has control over the circle entirely. Yeah, Pixel wants to book it down to get that kill on Achilles Kai. Sharp mm. Shot is going to finish. It's Chris, and it is one player left for Ascend. Mika versus the three of SSG. SSG looking like they've got it. Indeed. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's just going to be what we have to do at that stage. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to run directly into this multi that's just beat it into my position and win it. No, oh, man. <laughs> just beat it to the blue. That's going to be one of those few times I'm not even a question. Be like, yeah, that's the call. <laughs> Pixel just shrugs his shoulders. He's like, yeah, I don't know. I was out of bullets for 5-5 five five and we won. I was just I was just watching at the end. That's why you'd be able to pick up rocks and start throwing them. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, you would think Miramar has plenty of those. But Ascend also playing really, really good in this game, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Like going around, doing a lot of great stuff. But SSG, this whole game comes down to that early game decision they made with those with those uh, utilities. I mean, it just so cleanly played all together as now we're going to go ahead and shift over to the analyst desk, give a breakdown, moving into our last game of the day because, my God, today has been a treat.
Game five is done, and Space Station Gaming goes straight to the moon. They didn't have to worry about friendly fire in that match because with the high ground, Pixel was able to control the territory and come away with the chicken dinner. It got a little sketchy. T5 looked like they were going to cause some trouble, but they fought through it. Yeah, Tenadol with a fantastic game of course. Some of this high ground here, as you see Roth as well as bringing wow. down Kurexi. It's just such a rough place to get in between it. You can't really get in between those two kind of high ground sticks yep. there. It's so hard to defend from anything, and you can definitely tell here with Space Station Gaming how well they're able to kind of mesh it off. Also, that last shift there, the seventh shift, keeping them up at the yep. top and getting them kind of closer to the center in the end. Oh, that was just so important for them, and they're able to close it out. Absolutely, and I would say this momentum may give them the chance to keep pushing forward, but they're not one of those teams that I feel like has to win early. No, no. It's good. Roth has that relentless positive mental attitude. He's always forcing his team to sort of look at the brighter right, side right. of things. This, however, is going to really free them up. I know Pixel has been an absolute breath of fresh air in our region. Always a joy to have around. And you know how happy he was up there. But look at that. That was the face of a man who loves to bolt. Sharp shot, got to play with everything he could have wanted in that game. And uh, he hit he hit the shots that he needed to. He did. Yeah, I love to see when Sharp shot's bolting around. He's, and he's hitting some really nice shots. And yep. he's got a lot of arms today, too. Arms. Like, I love to see it. So it's good to come in, get us a C on the line here. Yep. And again, for them to do that on the first day, sure, it's for game five. But mm -hmm. for them to do it on the first day, of their place, it's just super important for them to kind of have a chance to get into that top eight, or at least stick on to it. Sure, it's, it's it's game five, you said, but it's still the third, third team to win one of these because Tiamba sure. has been so gosh darn dominant. They came out, they took a good win, and because of that soak at the top, it's going to put them in a good spot once we get to those match leaderboards in just a second. Uh, it was an interesting game, and I was I will say this, Martin, you know, we came from Tego and Vikendi, and we were talking right. about it in the green room a little bit. You can almost feel the tempo shift. Is sure. that because the teams are clearly less confident in the other two? It seemed like things slowed back down on Miramar. They just know Miramar and Arango so well, so they're super confident and they're like, they feel like they know exactly where to go in the next ones, right? You can see, all right, they're not so scared about to be on the edge for one circle because right. they know, okay, if this or that or that circle happens, then we have a plan, right? On the other maps, it feels a little bit more like some Hail Marys or some like full sense of the center and stuff like that. So it's definitely more calm and collected on Miramar and Arangel. And we're going to see a little bit more wild games on Takeo and McKinney for sure throughout the tournament. Well, let's take a look at those top four teams nice. after match five. SSG is going to get five. that win. Damn. T5. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to I'm just going to put it out there. I didn't expect to see them in the top three at the end of the day today. I didn't when I came here to work, and I think we're going to see that because they are being consistent. They're taking fights. I mean, that at all alone in that match was Eight absolutely kills. wild, insane, just super good. And again, it's another another chance or nine kills actually. Even it's another chance for him to you know step up. If he had a thousand damage and ten kills, and this, yeah. I was going to be like, oh, I don't care. Who of SSG you're, you're going to call the match <laughs> of the, or MVP of the game here? It's done at all already. It's a good to see here. No matter what, yeah. He yeah. had nine kills, right? Of course, one of the winning team, or one of the player of the winning team has to get the MVP, so we're going to give it to one of them. But still, for me, this game here, Thanodal, nine kills, almost a yeah. thousand damage. I'm not sure if he hit it, but that was just super impressive to see. And T5 was going to solidify themselves in the yeah. top two. It is the WWC team stats. We will show you the team that got the chicken dinner at Pixel. Nah, it's going to get how the heavy MVP. Is. I mean, that, but you know what? That's his real life. Like, that's not him in a photo op. That's literally how he walks around every day yeah, uh, in carriage. Guy. If you're going to chance to hang out with this guy, do so. But 536 damage from the top of the mountain was beautiful. I remember what he said yesterday when we had a dinner with him. He said, yeah, I'm not feeling my best. You know, like kind of feels like he's downplaying himself, right. and now he's definitely here with an MVP. The one of the five MVPs of today is, is of course, beautiful to see. SSG 20 here, a huge jump up for them. They're going to be able to jump out of the the bottom eight straight into the top five. And I think uh, you'll, you'll see T5 continue to climb total leaderboard. There it is top right now. Three They're even lock that wow. up in second. 51 freaking points, 72 for Tiamba. And SSG, you're right, jumps all the way up to third at 39. And as we talked about, Asin was last place with eight points in the previous yeah. game. With one good game, you're putting yourself straight into the top eight as well. I mean, it's Chris in the back when we're just yeah. going out to go to the toilet quick. And he's like, yeah, it's just one good game. Easy, no problem. And they do it here the next game. So good to see here that the teams that need it step up to the plate. They really, really do. And so that's that's the play. But because, and again, this comes down to that Tiamba point suck early on, was able to take a whole, a whole lot of points. They were able to sort of make everyone else have to keep competing the entire time. And with only one map left to play, it's anybody's game. So we head to the Dusty Dunes of Miramar. It has been 
hilltop to hilltop to hilltop throughout the day. Can you get to the vertical position? Can you control it? We are moving into our last game of PGS or PGC, day number one. Yep, it has been a really interesting day. You know, the Tiamba dominance is basically confirmed, but some teams have been stepping up when needed, like the desk was just talking about, you know, SSG and others showing some really crafty, clever play. And this, this play path is almost vertical, just almost straight down through Los Leones there. So if you're going west, a little bit tricky to get there. It's not a lot of, uh, the, the problem with Miramar and bad plane paths sometimes like this is it's, it's hard to get vehicles because everybody's wanting those vehicles. Uh, they've already kind of claimed them anyway that you want to take to maybe get to like El Pozo or, or something like that. Vitamar probably will be okay, but you know, I, I feel a little bad for XO. It's a little tricky to get that far, so I think they're going for an alternate drop spot. Indeed they are. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a plane path that pretty much causes it, right? And, and so no fault on that. Uh, see if there are any dust ups for vehicles. That's been kind of. Uh, we got a bit more of a hot drop on Aaron Gill of all maps today, but everything else has been pretty calm. Nobody really wanted to make too many major commitments. Just a couple of fights over vehicles here or there. Uh, Human looks like he's going to make a very dangerous pickup on a vehicle. Looks like he's going to try to steal this one away from Cerberus, and he's going to try to jump back over all the way next to Venus. I mean, it's a good vehicle pickup, but it doesn't look like Cerberus was reading for it. Yeah, Haisaki not able to find a gun over there. It looks like, ooh, straight north on this circle. We are going up towards the water treatment. Potentially, we'll see exactly where we end up. But, yeah, Space Station, again, smarts win games, you know, just as much sometimes as mechanical ability does. You know, we saw in the kind of the early half of the day, the story was just, you know, crazy shooting, good mechanics. And now we've had a couple games where it's just smart plays are winning. Love the fact that we finally got to see Ascend descend as they made their landing there. And gonna nice. go ahead and get good position as they are way down to the south. They went all the way to the complete coastline. Gonna pick up the vehicles with that one. Uh, Dano is gonna go ahead and grab the vehicles like you were talking about, cut into the west where everything is free and open. Yeah, they, they, they are kind of the benefactors of the fact that nobody went this far west and they noticed it. They were keeping good, good track of the parachutes. And that's smart stuff from Donawa as they're going to go over to Monte Nuevo and just make their looting lives a little bit easier. Now looking out, nothing too much that we can gather from these positions. But one thing I do want to say is while we did see some secondary drops come out, FaZe was exactly who I was wanting to talk about as they're playing that uh, Kudavaye position. So they're actually going to be in a very good spot to start off this game with a couple of really strong positions if they want to rotate out or just choose to kind of bunker down and defend. Yeah, this is a phase circle on Miramar for sure. This is generally kind of the circles that I see them do well on. It's it's their part of the map. They control a lot of this territory, and uh, they can do pretty well. Now, this is just mean. I want to see. <laughs> does the aim also work with the shotguns? Does, do you get the same love? Well, you're about to find out. I mean, Hatsawat. Tommy Gun versus shotgun. I don't know if he – what is – he definitely doesn't know what's coming because oh. he had an SLR. Yeah, mm. nothing you can do there. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the worst time to switch. Yeah, Tommy Gun might have given you something, but we're, we're old school PUBG right now, right? We're at beta launch. Yeah, dude, the Estelle Gay is pretty nuts. It's still a fun gun, and I mean, it's easy money when you're just camped in there and your opponent has no idea you're there. Speaking of, it does look like we are going to have Shin Tylee making a shift in, and they're going to be pretty close to phase. Uh, not in a scary, scary way, but enough to just kind of start locking down this position over here. And we do see Kudavai being a position that FaZe did leave, going for more of a centered control section that they want to play from some of these compounds. It means that they are going to have Falcons going to be just to the south of them, as well as T5 to the west. Well, it's relatively quiet, as is kind of expected. Again, a relatively fair circle as we're coming in with a few more teams making their way through. Ascend is going to be the last team to the circle if they can darn well help it. That's their that's their MO for sure. I think we got some more highlights coming up, guys.
Well, I've got this going on. Cerberus is about to have to make their path next to Minas Generalis. A V7 did leave that point just a bit ahead of them. Sonic's also going to be compressing in the Long Hacienda. So taking the old STK position and seeing how that one's going to play through. Um, now, really, it's just going to be about how some of these outlier teams. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Send XO, Day Trade, SSG. I feel like uh, emergency pickups are going to be in their future. There are no rush to be in vehicles. Yeah, you'd love to find one if you're one of those teams, no doubt about it. Except for a Send. They don't use them too much sometimes, but they're more like vehicles because they're just, they're playing edge, they're playing late. They're trying to outmaneuver you, outthink you anyway, so. I don't, but definitely XO and, and SSG for sure would love to have uh, some of those pickups. Hacienda, of course, normally under the purview of 4AM, but they're not here, so that is free for some other teams to kind of do their thing with it. Cerberus, man, tough day for Cerberus. 16th place right now, only 13 points. Nobody really expected this. A team that a lot of people were thinking is close to S tier. Uh, close to potentially being a team that we could talk about winning this event, but so far hasn't been their day, but y you can't imagine that that's going to continue to be the case throughout the tournament for them. Usually in the group stages, they're pretty solid. Um, so, yeah, it happens. Teams have bad days, and it, it Cerberus got, was one of the teams that got caught up in the, the only hot drops we've had, so that's a way to lose points quickly, and, you know, we see this all the time. We say this all the time, you know, Sometimes discretion is a better part of Valor. Sometimes giving up your drop spots can win you events, you know, and we've seen that with a lot of teams like the Sonics, for example, that gave up drop spots and ended up performing quite well, even, you know, having to kind of adapt to different drops. Yeah, I, if you had told me coming in today that Tyloo and Cerberus were going to be the bottom two inside this I group, have, yeah, I would have been I astounded have it. on it. And I mean, it's. I feel bad for so many fantasy players, including myself, who picked up people like Shin because it's I like players on both those teams. It, it's as if a million fantasy squads were just suddenly cried out in terror <laughs> and were <laughs> suddenly silenced because, man, there is uh, there is a lot of people that I have. I know, uh, including all of us casters. This is kind of unexpected with them, but that's just kind of been the nature of the beast today, right? It has just been a crazy day of performances. Yeah, well, hokey religions and swords are. No match for a good gun at your side. Good, uh, what? Like, it's a blaster. Uh, good P90 cool. at your side. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There, there you go. go. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, it is shocking. I thought for sure both those teams would be thriving pretty well in this lobby. I mean, again, it part of the problem is there, there has been a lot of attention on the edges of circles at times where a lot of teams are getting caught up in stuff and they haven't been able to execute. Oh, no. Well, there's some execution. No. Okay, well, that's going to be how Nurns ends his day. Not Two be games in a row, bro. Yeah. It do be like that sometimes. It do be like that. All right. So looking in, Sonics, uh, as you can see, going to be one of the most southern teams. Uh, going to have day trade next to them. Uh, it looks like they're trying to figure out exactly how they want to deal with this whole Hacienda situation. It's going to be just up to the north of them. A couple of their members are going to be eyeing that line. Petrocore Road's going to be holding down. Rest of day trade, uh, I mean, they do have the pathing over into the east, but they do have V7 that's running a split that's going to be in front of them. Outside that, if they kind of lean more into that eastern direction, it, it's pretty open. So if they just kind of going to be content right now and see where the next circle goes, which is probably going to be the call, they're going to be fine for now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if SSG has found another uh, emergency pickup that they just do the same thing that they did last game, right? They kind of hedge their bets, keep vehicles near their emergency pickup spot, throw the pickup, right is about circle one's closing and then make their decision from there. So I'm pretty pretty keen to see uh, how they want to do this because I was thoroughly impressed uh, with the way that they handled that previous game. It was what literally won them the game. If it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of situation, exactly. right? I mean, they do have Dana with it's kind of creeping in on them, so that might cause some issues, but that's mostly off pathing. We'll have to see how that one. Oh, actually, no, sorry. That was an incorrect read on my part. But I looked at one great team, saw a different great team, so. It's going to be uh, D plus yeah, Kia. That's they're very be close in color, it's true. Hey, I don't do that one very often, so you got to forgive me on it. Um, now, looking out, it's nobody really playing up into the north, and that's kind of due to the Oasis Campo Militar situation. Most people kind of hoping this is going to go centered. It's not as likely to go north. It's, it's yeah. generally pretty rare. So certainly, I love to see it. I think it's a lot of fun. But our players know better, and uh, there's good reason. The statistics say that they are making the better play. I guess it's, uh, whenever you got only got 100 rounds of 7.62, sometimes you've got to re- You just got to right? empty it, why not? I mean, you know, 
you don't care if anybody knows you're there. In fact, a lot of ways you'd rather somebody knows you're there so they don't just random crash it. And uh, yeah, you're just clearing backpack space. Yeah. It goes back into the old shaving a haircut trick, right? Whenever you're just kind of bored sitting in there playing in the lobby, you just ship the shaving yeah, yeah, a haircut, yeah. see if anybody responds, and now you know if you want to fight somebody. And then uh, in Korea, sometimes they'll do that at the end of a game if it's a 1v1 to indicate that they want to just drop the gloves and punch it out. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kuru Devaye is going to be where we're going to be going up to. Cerberus is going to be rewarded with that one. Faye is going to be a bit mad that they left that position, but, I mean, come on. Who would have thought the Campo Militar was still going to be inside of the circle in some fashion? But guess what? Who's going to benefit from this one? It's going to be Tianba. So they're going to have themselves a good point to play from. Most of our cluster and death bundle is going to be down around that hacienda, specifically the southwest. My God, we've got, it's going to be what? Falcons, Petrichor Road, uh, Exalt going to be coming over there. Sonic's most likely Ascend May V7 that's going to be over there. Faye is just all in the meat grinder, luckily, ahead of it, though. Uh, SSG went pretty deep in the paint, and now they're getting wrecked by service, I believe. Uh, uh, east of Cruz de Valle, off that hillside. So they kind of pressed their luck a little bit, and, and now they should be able to get out safely, I think, and try to get ahead. But this has allowed Day Trade to kind of scoot in between SSG's players. Petrocore Road, a mad dash here to find a way to get maybe towards Cruz de Valle, maybe to find some dips in there. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, FaZe wants to fight for the warehouses, and V7 happy to take these fights. We've seen it all day with them. I mean, it's a strong point if the circle does cut back down to the south. Getting control over this area can do you a lot of good. But, I mean, I, let's just go ahead and stack all of the buildings you don't want to push right next to each other. I mean, that's kind of what this area feels like. And so it's very difficult to navigate, specifically in these closer range skirmishes. But it does look like FaZe has gone ahead, got their line. They know how they want to fend it. Gustav is coming over to provide some support. But Exo to the south might create some issues. I don't think that they're actually eyeing, maybe trying to third party this. Instead, it looks like they're just going to use it as an opportunity to bypass. Yeah, we haven't seen XL be super keen on those kind of things, and the fight hasn't kicked off super hard. I think if that fight is kind of one of those long, drawn-out ones where there's a lot of shots, there's a knock back and forth here, there, then maybe, maybe you'll see XO get involved. Fex just trying to keep V7 honest and seems to be successful at doing so. And uh, Ascend, and actually the Sonics are coming way in on the west, but there's a dust storm up there that Donawa's caught in, so that might cause Donawa to kind of stop. In fact, it has, and that might cause a potential battle up on the northwestern side between Donawa and Sonics because of this storm, potentially. This is not the worst call coming up from V7. This is... This isn't very centered. I mean, it, it's about, uh, it's a bit in. It's enough that you could want it, but not really want to have to, like, contend again. The problem with it is, V7's hopping inside their vehicles and rotating away from FaZe at roughly the same time that Exo was eyeing over here, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be as big of a problem as Rip is going to go down, and now that's going to be V7 getting much safer rotation than they had just a moment ago. Yeah, I, I think V7 realizing that, you know, they're not having a horrible day by any stretch of the imagination. They're in seventh place, but... Maybe being a little bit safer here now, uh, considering that tomorrow you might be going into the meat grinder on Erangel again with Ty Lu. Maybe it's better uh, to just try to play a little bit safer. By the way, Sonics did some recon. They spotted the backsides of Donawa, and they opted to rotate around it. So that dust storm uh, did not create any action just yet. Now, Anonix, the IGL uh, for Donawa, is out on his own, kind of sort of in the direction of the Sonic's rotation path, but it looks like they're even going to swing all the way around him. I mean, it's a good call. It, you should have an idea that the north is going to be pretty open. Downside is the circle does get a bit centered, so it's going to make it more difficult as the compression is going to come into play. He's still 62 alive in this circle, and that just kind of tells you about the terrain that we're looking at in this area. I mean, Kurdubai is does still have the, the verticality that comes into play, but also there's a lot of recessed hills, a lot of compounds that are in play in this area, and just going to kind of continue to feed that, really ascend what Exo, Day Trade are going to be kind of the odd teams out. Almost everybody else kind of comfortable already. Yeah, it's, it's some of these teams that are on the eastern outside that you were just talking about that have the most difficult journey because there's stuff inside the circle that's available, but... There's also kind of some dead zones to the west of Cruz de Valle that are really flat, that are really difficult to find safe spots in. So you kind of have to dash between a couple other teams. You might lose a player here or there to get into some of the safety of the other hills uh, that are further west of Cruz de Valle. H-Win should be claiming a point here shortly. 
like this. Don't overpeak it. You never know. Sometimes there is the trap, and yeah, see? That's what's going on. Good read coming out from them. They know the fact that it's a pretty decent chance they're going to be able to flush this one. Get the numbers. Get the support. Step back away. Don't take a risk you don't have to take. Exo, uh, they don't have a choice. They just have to take any risk they can take. So they decide to just bypass right by V7. They're going to make their way to the hillside. Problem with it is Petrichor Road also about to be right in front of them. This is exactly what I was talking about. They, they know that there's not a ton of great stuff except for when you get a little bit more center circle, so you have to risk driving through other teams and you're going to lose players along the way because of how good these pros are. But Petrichor Road's crater here is just kind of relatively safe. Exo recognizing it, driving around it. Now, it's just can they get, well, the shack is going to have to be where they go, and even still, Ming is going to get ripped. I, there's just not too many other options you can take. I, the fact that they even managed to make it into that position is a blessing in and of itself. They're not really regrouped in a way that's going to be comfortable for them to deal with. But remember that skirmish we were looking at a bit ago? Well, now Sonic's realized they have a numbers advantage on what's going to be going on with D plus Kia. They're going to be a bit more aggressive into this to the north. Kickstart is playing a bit back behind the rest of Sonic's members. are going to have to regroup. So for the time being, it is a 3v3. But it's about to turn into a 3v4. I don't mind this decision here from the Sonics. You know you've already picked one player off of DK. You've gotten the information that the majority of the space around this compound is free, so you can fight for it. You can contest this. You could frankly just try to completely wipe D+, and you've got numbers. You've got a, a bit of an advantage here. You've got them on the back foot. Smokes are out. They're going to be able to pit, corner them. And this is a bit of an ego play, too. This is a, we think that we can take you even in an entrenched position. We yeah. think that we've got the firefighting capabilities to do so. Fully agree. And that's that's all that they're doing right now. They're bullying it out. Good use of the blue zone nades. And now it's just going to be about how defend it comes out. Nades going to connect. Oh, oh, and again. My God. D plus Kia, it looks like you are about to be gone unless somehow Ventus can make the most miraculous miracle happen, but I just, I don't see it. Sonics already knows they've got this one under control. Nate's gonna go out, Ooh. does get one, and with that Nate down, could be something. What? Picks up a second, and wow, we are at least gonna see a flush onto H win for it. Gets a point out of the whole situation, but I mean, Sonic still comes out ahead. Yeah, Sonic's just, at the end of that, the communication just seemed a little bit off. The beginning of that, the communication, brilliant. The way they line that up, knowing that they can clear most of the God compound with two blue zones, that's going to flush people into the open air part of it. On the other side, that's where the grenades are mostly going. Another one on the inside to clear out another part of it. Now, Akita's probably dead here, but... The way that the Sonics drew that plan up was absolutely near perfect. They made one little mistake, losing track of Ventus, cost them a player. Uh, you can see that SSG kind of suffering from rotation woes, to say the least, as they are going to get eliminated as well. There's going to be a one-two punch of V7 and Cerberus to take them down. Faze now making their way back into where they originally dropped. They're going to have to be kind of cutting a path in from the south next to Exo, as well as Falcons, who are kind of pathing along the same area. We saw Solo oh. down just a moment ago. Petrichor Road got oh. punished. That oh! Oh, my God. Falcons crested that hill, and they don't even know what hit them. Yeesh. Petrichor Road absolutely just swatting them away. Breck's going to let loose with grenades to try to finish off Emmy and finish off the Falcons. That last one might be good enough. Oh, just literally one damage shy. Okay, well, that's that it. Good. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a lot of nades for one man. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Well, speaking of T5, I mean, I wasn't, but we're not going to anymore either. If anything, this opens up uh, the door for Sonics to go ahead and try to pick up some more points. I mean, we are looking at the group stages, so really it's just a matter of making sure you secure yourself the better position. But uh, looking at the overall positioning, Sonics now do have the northern section of Kudavai, who are going to be in our third place position. And our first place position, Diambo, who's been having an absolute romp of a day. Um, they have a compound inside of this circle, and one of the few compounds that's not inside of Kudavai itself. It's just them and Tyloo. Everybody else just kind of fighting over shacks and dips. Whose mortars are those? Ascend, I assume? I, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, oh no. Tiamba. Tiamba. Why not? Yeah, sure. I mean, you're in a great spot here to use mortars. This is wide open space for mortars. You can just land a couple good ones. You are going to find it, but the range here, well, not quite there. So got to go back to geometry class. Or Tiamba on that one. Couldn't quite get what they needed out of it. That felt like one of those, hey, there's a mortar here on the ground. Why not kind of situations. I don't even know oh, if yeah. they were really measuring that one too much. It was more like, eh, if it hits something great. If not, eh, what have we lost? Oh, yeah. If you just find one of those in those compounds there, you're just like, man, why not? Yeah. We're here. We're in the circle. We got time. Let's just see what happens. 
Uh, this is going to be interesting. I don't really think there's anything that's land ratioed in here. So, yeah, it's yeah. just going to go back to Cruze Valley. So the north part of this circle, Matt, very open. Southern part has a little bit more to work with. There's that dirt road in the middle, a little bit of high ground on the west, not much. But this is this could be really fun. I mean, I think if this doesn't just keep hard shifting northeast, we've got some of my favorite terrain to play in on Miramar. Yeah, this kind of ravine road that runs through the middle of everything that's going to be controlled by uh, Exult is going to be pretty strong to be played from. The question I'm going to be looking at is actually the urban fight that could be brewing. Is Sonic's Day Trade and Cerberus all still going to be over there? Dano are going to have to make some type of concerted push to go past Tyloo as well as Exit are going to be in front oh. of them. And Tiamba down to the south. Oh, and here comes all of the Mortar Fun. The Mortar Master. L they're actually going there. He's really good at these. He is really good at these. Ooh. Oh, just a bit far. Did he readjust? I couldn't see if he brought it oh. in. Oh! <laughs> Did he go for a third one? You can see him freaking out. Is there another one coming? Is there another one coming? It looks I like he was know. trying to prep it. I don't know if he has any more. He just switched guns, so I think he's out. I think if that was all the mortars he had in his car, so I think Loki there. Oh, the last oh. one. Oh, he, he didn't. He over-adjusted on that last one. I feel like he made. He might have walked away from it and then come back, yeah. tried to reset. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh oh. I mean, blue zone nades can do that as well. The so. mortar too actually hit him. Uh, Petrichor Road and not in a comfy position there. Surrounded phase, Ascend, Tiamba all everywhere. V7 now also pushing into this one. Petrichor Road just trying to cling to life. Maybe they can use the distractions to get some type of reses out. V7 going to be coming up right back behind phase. That could provide some type of opportunity for him. But Ascend also going to be stepping in Tiamba roughly at the same time. This is just an entire brutal firefight between all of these. This is just a complete mini battle royale in and of itself. Yeah, it was actually, it's Chris who got a knock, but... No problem, I think. Chewie being rezzed should be doable because Tiamba has to stop the rez. FaZe is busy fighting V7, so Petricor Road offered, oh, I take it back. Bex just decides to go and try to wreck Perro's rez, but the, he doesn't get there quite in time, and now Tiamba's gotten involved, and he has shut Fex out. All right, so take one out, pass it around. Tiamba up on top. Petrichor Road trying to make a run for it. Yeah, those shots are Tiamba. Why wouldn't they be? Just trying to get through. Mean clinging to life. Sees Exalt's little shack, hoping that maybe they can brute force their way into it. But the damage is just going to be there from every single angle. Molotov's going to come out, is going to connect onto Insight. But I don't know if that, yeah, that is going to be enough to finish it off. And Summer, yet again, the last one standing. He's at least pretty darn good at it. We've seen him make some pretty impressive moves, but his shack, a little tricky to defend, as we just saw with Insight. He, one person there, even with the help of V7 at the time, but Tiamba, dude, seven kills already. They've got four up, Matt. Oh, but okay, gumin has got an AWM, so he just put 7-7 seven, seven down. But man, oh man, I mean, imagine Tiamba just gets four wins in one day. I mean, it happens. There's a lot of vision to be had inside this circle, specifically for Cerberus and their new position that they're going to be playing from. As you can see that they were taking pot shots down into V7. Uh, Daytrade was taking shots in Tiamba just a moment ago. So this is going to make it to be, I mean, honestly, Summer's in one of the best positions inside the circle, given the amount of vision that's going to come into play. Yeah. I mean, other than Cerberus, Summer's actually even though he's a, if he wasn't alone, it'd be great. The real problem is is he's going to have somebody barreling down on him. I think likely, potentially, Tiamba here in a moment. But Tiamba here being harassed by V7, trying to get out. And Gumin yeah. again, good with the AWM. I mean, this is just what we're looking at from here forward. I mean, to the right is technically going to be the circle. And you can see it's just mostly like some cacti here or there. And just, no, just fetch for summer. Just lay down. You're fine for right now. Let everybody else fight it out. I mean, you don't have to pay attention to what's going to be coming for you. But... That's going to be about it. I'm curious to see what's going to happen in the north with Day Trade, Tai Lu, and Donwall having to move. Yeah, no, uh, up up in that northern corner, there's there's some dunes to work with, but it's not super easy. Gumin just barely missing that shot. Gumin's heart rate starting to pile up. Pimas here had some mortars, by the way, involved in all that. Jeez. He just watched his mortar. I love it. Whoop, my man. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. That one. I love mortars. I do too. I'd be lying if I said I did. Oh my god, Soul. Soul just absolutely dumpstering people down below him. He's got two from Tiamba. Now he turns his sights to V7. In a world where there is absolutely no cover, the guy with the rock is king, and he is just demolishing all these things off to the side of him. V7, no clean pathing. Uh, Tosi is inside the circle, but I'm just going to say a foot inside of it. 
Danaway is going to use this opportunity to try to creep in, but it's going to be Tiamba that now has the attention focused back into this direction as Danaway is wanting to make sure that they get these flushes. Every point vital for them right now. There just isn't much for any team to work with here, so Danawa just opting to try to clear this side, see if they can get some points for sure, and then try to wait this out into the long run. Tai Lu actually did wrap into the same pathing that Dana was at just a moment ago. Tiamba is going to get eliminated. Tai Lu now finds himself with Day Trade as well as Sonics are taking some shots into him. And that stopped this push that they might be making in the backside of Danawa. And now Danawa is aware. You can see spinning back around, looking into Tai Lu as Tai Lu is trying to get over into this rock formation, but that's not going to be near enough to cover for what they're going to try to do next. Oh, but now the backside of Danawa is falling apart. Some good shots here. Tung Mu trying to get the drive by, but Soul is just barely better. Only left with four. HP at the end of all that Loki trying to hold the line Loki was the first one to kind of get an awareness of what was happening here Matt on that northern side that you pointed out but I think LZ is just gonna have to say bye bye all right, now then, Danawa might be able to write some. Uh, V7 trying to realize they, they, they're they just getting harassed by Cerberus and Sonics that are inside of compounds. So they've got their eyes set on seeing if they can go after Danawa. Circle's even going to favor the compound. My God, Daytray, Danawa, V7, what the hell do you do to get into this circle and survive? Yeah, there might be a few rocks here and there to the west of those compounds, but otherwise you got to try to crash or do something or get underneath that hill of the Sonics, but even that is... Obviously not going to be easy or safe by any stretch of the imagination. There is just not a ton of great options here. Now let's see what they can dial up. They might be able to find some space somewhere. Gumin has that AWM. He might be able to find a knock. Might be able to find that opportunity to get a player down from one of those teams that's in that compound to try to give them a little more breathing room to make a crash, potentially something like that. We'll just have to see. I mean, there's a crate. It's about the only thing, the angle that V7 can work with. Sonic's going to have a bit more vision in what's going to be coming on with the, most of these rotations. You can see already realizing how Dana was going to make, be making that push up the hillside. They really can't move too much more, they being Danawa, given the fact that just to the north they're going to have Belmont that's beaded in on them. Flash is going to go down, and that's going to be Cerberus, who's also firmly entrenched, just to the south. Sonic's making sure to shut down any movement. This, this feels like this is just going to be like... I don't know. What, what's that carnival game where you see like the ducks and you've got like the BB gun and you're just kind of shooting them as they go by? I don't know by. what it's called, but I know what you're talking that's, about. That's all that's going to be going on. V7, look, look at the vision that they have under this one. Jumps Tur out. Turkey shoot. It, it is a actual turkey shoot. Now, actually, Donawa decides to just say, hey, let's play for some points. Let's eat some blue and just do some damage. And that's what they're doing. And that's, wow. Okay, uh, and Onyx actually might. I don't know if he got that or not. But Donawa's done. But they're trying to salvage what they can. So, hey. Credit where credit's due. Donald plays that pretty well, and they don't give over too many points either. That's uh, the, making the best of a bad situation. That's the most you can do there is yep. uh, Belmont still alive, and I guess maybe can limp his way into this one. Is it's really just Cerberus versus Sonics is what we're mostly looking at. Cerberus sitting at four right now versus Sonics a three. But Belmont, you never know, could be an X factor in what we could be looking at in these later rounds as we are in phase number seven. So we still have a bit to go before we might see these two squads fight up against each other. Belmont could get second. I mean, if, if one of these two other teams just destroy each other, he could just get second. I mean, that'd be great. You'd take that any day of the week. But, you know, I, I think Sonic's here. Gunner was talking about it. Hey, you know, we want to win. Tiamba had been winning enough, so give it to us. And Cerberus desperately, desperately, desperately needs these points. I mean, just making it to this stage. We were talking about the start of this game being one of the bottom two teams exactly. is just not what you would expect from Cerberus. So finally now finding something, yeah, a little bit. They, the, Nobody really got circle love in this one. FaZe is the one that started and recruited by and everybody else just kind of shifted into it. But they did get some beneficial circles in these later stages that are going to affect them. But you got to play what you're given. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what they're doing. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. I mean, it's a risk going into Cruz de Valle, circle two or three that we had here, it's a real big risk because trying to get out of Cruz de Valle is kind of tricky sometimes. PUBG stat guys like day trade. Look at that. 15% with the solo out in the out I'm, on zone. I, that's way higher than I would have thought. Yeah, I, I would be closer to like that. Uh, How in the world four? is he going to get in? He's going to have to like find a timing here, Matt. I mean, if Sonics make this push forward, which they're going to have to do, he could use that opportunity to creep forward try to leapfrog his way in. But, I mean, I, Ty Con already knows exactly where he's at, so that's probably <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, somebody from Sonics needs to open up. They need to find a key. They need to make sure that they hit a shot to open this one, and they're just going to walk right down into the fire. This is not what Sonics was wanting to have to kick this one off. And this is kind of sucks for Sonics because they can't create a smoke wall to cover 
a certain angle there because it's so steep. So when ki when Kickstart and others are coming down the hill right there, there's like a brief moment where Cerberus was able to see them and get some damage. And now finally, they're starting to be able to get past it. Now those smokes behind Kick are already starting to burn out. But they're positioning themselves. In order to get away from Cerberus, their backs are now entirely revealed to Belmont. So Belmont looks like he's just going to go ahead and opt into taking some blue. If he steps out, he might be able to spot somebody, but... I mean, it's not going to be too easy. Tick's just trying to get some cover out, and Blue Zone going to be the one to do the last touch of damage to both Belmont and Tiggleton. Yeah, Tig had an opportunity, but it was just a little bit better shooting. Salalzi on top of Kickstart. Grenade in hand. If that one's good, Kick is done. 13 kills sitting for service. Looks like it's going to be moving up to 15 in just one moment. Moss is stepping out, looking on the hunt, wanting to finish this one out. Cerberus wanting to climb off that leaderboard. They know exactly where they're at, but never count out Trimsy. He's going to get one. He's got the wall. He's actually got closer to the center dot, too. So they have to come to him. Can he make the dream happen? And trimsy has got the Groza. I'm telling you, he's he's got a pretty decent spot on this dot, too. Cerberus has some work to do. Just trying to make sure to beat it up. He wants to make sure that he gets rid of Moss so that way no information is being fed over into position, but just doesn't have a clean angle for it. And now, yes, Rez is coming out. That nade could be massive. Bounce going to go against the wall. Got to go ahead and get the re-knock onto it. Shrimsy wanting to fight his way tooth and nail with it. Here comes the counter utility coming up from Cerberus. They know his position. They're starting to drop everything. Flashes, anything they've got in their pockets. Molotov is now creeping down in there. Shrimsy at half-life. They know exactly where he is. Can he just find angle and no it is going to be Cerberus to pick up our last game of the day. Barely there that was a little tricky for Cerberus but that has to be one of the most relieving games of PUBG you'll play getting a win when you started that game in 16th place. Now I'm not sure exactly where they finished up but like Avengers been talking about on the desk and Tommy's as well when you shoot up there you just needed a win here because it was so top heavy. One win and you're going to shoot way up that leaderboard. I mean, one win and 15 kills is going to do you some pretty good work on a very yeah. back to leaderboard due to what's been going on with Gamba. It's, this has been a ridiculous day one for PGC. It has been really good, Matt. Uh, what a good start to the day, and I can't wait for tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and throw it over to the analyst desk and close out, give you all the information, get everything set, moving in tomorrow. The three-headed dogs waited to the very end, but they came out and got that chicken dinner. We spent the whole morning asking, when will Hamas and Tycon turn it on? And the answer is, in game six, when it matters most. Congratulations to them as they come out with a big win. Sonics, and on the back of Shrimsy, managed to fight their way into second for some big points as well. So we should see that leaderboard sort of continue the climb up as the entire lobby continues to chase Tiamba. Yeah, there's some potential there. I feel like if Tingleton had joined them on that bridge, and they yes. were spread out. I feel like Sonic could have closed that one out. Absolutely. Especially with Lacrosa and Shrimps' hands. He's been a force to be reckoned with yes. today so far. Really good to see Sonic be so consistent already. Of course, mm -hmm. having uh, all their drop shots in a somewhat good situation. Yeah. That's a, They've got it's a good huge drops. Yeah. Good drops, good rotations. But I will say this Shrimps, you said he's been a force to be reckoned with. You know. We mentioned it back in PAS. It feels like he is developing to be, I think, pound for pound, the best player in North America. Now, is he the best fragger? No. Is he the best IGL? No. Is he the best support? Probably not. But he can do but everything. All yeah. As an all-around player, Shrimsy is the total package and has brought so much to this team in terms of his value to the Sonic. So we've seen that today. He has been incredibly, incredibly strong, and I get to expect that to continue. That said, this was the Cerberus show at the end. They had the strength, they made the push, they they sent the, it, honestly, it came down to him asking, even though he was dead, he was so helpful to his team, he gave them so much info. Yeah, please don't remind me that he died before they I know. won the game. I, I, the I, the, I the five too. points there, they <laughs> stabbed the heart. But yeah, of course, situation for this year, they're able to get all the kills, yeah. and the points they're able to put on the board, considering that they're starting on the 13 points, right. in the fifth game, or going into the sixth game after five games, mm -hmm. that is just incredible. Not the Cerberus that we've seen before, but definitely this last game here. Now, they're going to have a day, yep. day of tomorrow, of course. They're going to be able to go back and see, okay, what went wrong? Too many hot drops, too many contests. Yep. Let's see what they're going to do.
and the that day after tomorrow. And that chicken dinner unlocks them. The thing I For sure. like about this team is they are sometimes a little shaky until yeah. they get to that point where they go, okay, our game's on, we're playing well, we can win some matches. And I think the fact that they'll be fighting in that top eight means they're going to come in next time with a bone to pick yeah. and a willingness to go after it, to put their dog in the fight, if you will. <laughs> Let's take a look at the top four teams. The Cerberus does take that win. 2,000 damage and 15 impressive. kills. A very impressive game. Yeah, good to see Asami's again. Another fantastic game for them here. And with Cerberus getting this 25 points here on top of their 13 they had already, that is yeah. easily going to put them in the top eight. Surely they could have been higher, but still, that one good game, if they're able to start their last day with uh, like a decent game, then they could quite easily get into the winner bracket. Sonic's 21 smokes, 13 grenades, and two incredibly effective blue zone grenades. But let's look at the WWCD team stats oh. coming out here. Tycon with 800 damage, Hemas with 615. I mean, you can just tell looking at this how much work they were doing. Granted, they had the compound, they were able yeah. to lock out a bunch of teams, they stopped some good crashes, but they played. This is, this is the Cerberus I expected to see at the start of the day showing up here. Yeah, they played the wall strong. Of course, it's Tycon able to stay alive and get six mm -hmm. kills and 811 damage. Good to see him get the man of the match here yep. for Cerberus. Tycon, of course. You know, it's a big swing, though. We, we kind of, before the game start, we do these flyovers. We get to see the teams at their computers. And Tycon's face did not reflect confidence after right. game two and game three. He looked down. He looked frustrated. Whatever pep oh. talk they had during the break mattered. All right, let's take a look at the team summary after match six. Quite impressive. It is very, Tiamba very impressive. But to see day trade, that survival yeah. time has that worked is, really well for him. That was crazy. Uh, considering how close... Third and five, and Sonics yeah. and Tianba as well, all within a, less than a minute of each other in terms of survival time. Mm -hmm. You can definitely tell it's been very top heavy. It's been sponging yeah. at the top, and we're also going to see that once we get to our total leaderboard, of course. 25 here for the match just for Cerberus. Sonics, another double digit. Good to see V7 up there, too. I'll tell you what doesn't work for me. Exalt was in the top three for damage dealing, and yeah. yet we find them in 13th place on this match leaderboard, and I don't think much too much better when it comes to the overall. Right, I don't, right. It's like, they're getting in the fights, they're putting in the work, they're just not closing them down. And those third parties have been absolutely brutal for Exalt. There they are, 14th on the overall leaderboard after doing just so much damage. It's almost like they're doing the work for other people. But let's look at where we stand. End of match six. This is the halfway through deciding who advances from group A. The top eight is what matters. That's why it's a different color. And it is still wide open. When we come Completely back in two now. days, fourth and below is going to be honestly stressed out when they show up. For sure. One good game though, 17 up to 36, yeah. it's like, it is so close. And of course, once you get to tomorrow, it's gonna be the first day of Group B. We're gonna be starting on our angle just like we did yes. today as well. The Candy Take or Miramar, as you know it, but still, whole new 16 whole teams, new 16 teams. Everything's gonna start over. Cerberus did push up to seven off the back of that last game because it's anybody's game when it comes to so much soak at the top. Tomorrow, it's anybody's game because we're literally putting 16 new teams in to play their way into the winner's or loser's bracket depending on their performance. My name's Toppies, I've got Avenger here. Day one's pretty much done, what'd you think? Impressive. My question is just, who's going to be the Tianba of tomorrow? Who's Ooh. going to be our Thanadol of tomorrow? Who's going to be stepping up and uh, sponging? It could be another case well, of I'll tell you what, everyone kind of evening They may want to step up, but they need to sit down in these Anda That's seats. True. The ultimate comfort, the exceptional oh, performance. Choose Anda seat. Choose the seat of victors. Sponsored by the King Power Group, leaders in the travel retail industry. King Power, the power of possibilities. And if you need gear, go for Logo Pro Esports grade gaming gear made with a unique design. Now, if you want to talk about world leaders, we can only talk about MSI. The gaming brand stands out as the most trusted brand in gaming and esports. So the official partner of PUBG Global Championship 2023, providing PC hardware, monitors, laptops, and the designated hardware provider for this event. Tiger Noi, live deliciously. And finally, the number one fast and reliable fiber internet, True Online. It has been a heck of a day. It has been. It has been a lot of fun Wild. to watch. And uh, I mean, that's 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 it. It's it's crazy that it's over already. Day number it one is. of PGC. And congrats to Tianba. 80 points. 80 already points. probably. I, I mean, it's, no, there's no chance. They're, they're, they're going to get It's like we're talking about the 85% kind of guaranteed comfortable cutoff point. They're through. They're going to the winner's bracket. It's yep. good to see them being able to come in here with such a refreshed lineup. Yep. Sai being a fantastic player to come in, have clutch situations, yep. wins, winning games for them. It's just been insane. And it had 
three different MVPs. I mean, yeah. these guys Insane. spread it around. It's not like we had one superstar. Took the butter and just spread it all over the beginning. percent And on top of that, ZYY, a player that almost all of us are unfamiliar with unless you are really in tune with the, the scene over there in China, yeah, with you PCL. know the development squads. You're not going to know this player, and yet he comes out, gets an MVP, and helps carry his team to victory. 20 years old, man. That's And that's, that's I mean, we've been watching these guys, some of them since they were 17 or 18, and it was rare to see a 20-year-old show up at any PGC in history and play that well on day one, right? There is a lot of pressure here, Sorry, and he man. stepped up to it. Also, Sonics, they come away with some good points at the yep. end. They needed that so they could feel a little more comfortable going into tomorrow. Yeah, they're going five and Sonics tied on 51. Mm -hmm. Just need a like somewhat comfortable day on day two, yeah. not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, of course, once we get to that. So that's going to be super impressive. Mm -hmm. I got to say, though, I'm super excited for tomorrow. Like, I we're going to have a repeat of what we've seen. Like, they're going to be a fresh start for all these teams that are coming in tomorrow yep. here, and it's going to be insane to see. And I'm like, I feel like the this the kind of the sponge that we saw from Chandler, I feel like it's very unlikely we're going to see that at that level because that was crazy from Chandler. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but for now, we're going to have a chance to check in with Pan as she speaks with some of our players. Check it out. เอาละค่ะแล้วก็สำหรับในช่วงนี้นะคะต้อนรับกลับเข้าสู่ด้านบนเวทีอีกครั้งหนึ่งเพราะว่าเดี๋ยวเราจะมาพูดคุยค่ะกับ first rank and second rank of the day นะคะวันนี้ต้องบอกว่าอันดับที่หนึ่งของเราแล้วก็อันดับที่สองนะคะของภาพรวมคะแนนตารางทั้งหมดเดี๋ยวเราจะมาพูดคุยกับเขาสักหน่อยนะคะมาพูดคุยกับเขาก็เลยดีกว่ากับทีมแรกนั่นก็คือเชียนป้ามาแล้วสวัสดีค่ะโอเค so let's cheer the center here okay so you want me to ask in Thai or English would be better uh, English is okay right okay so right here today you have got like a chicken dinner in the first match and today you didn't slow down like any second sir right here did you expect to get off such a fast start in PTC here? 啊，你在今天第一把的比赛里就射击，然后一整天都没有放松下来。然后你对今天呃进入如此这么快的开局有什么想法吗？呃，因为我们开打之前就很放松吧，因为我们的压力很小，所以进入状态快，我觉得是正常的。So we just uh be relaxed before the match game, and uh, we don't have any pressure, uh, pressure, and uh, we just play as normal, uh, as normal. This one is formal, and uh, this one is normal. Yeah. Just normal play. คำถามแรกนะคะก็คือเพนถามไปว่านะคะคือวันนี้ได้กินไก่ตั้งแต่แบบ first match เลยแล้วก็ที่สําคัญคือตลอดเกมที่ผ่านมาวันนี้ทั้งวันเนี่ยคือเขาแบบไม่แผ่วเลยอ่ะคือวันนี้เขาไม่แผ่วเลยนะคะก็เลยถามว่าคืออันนี้เขาต้องการจะออกตัวให้แรงไว้ก่อนตั้งแต่ในวันแรกหรือเปล่าเพื่อที่จะได้แบบเหมือนครองแรงในอันดับต้นๆก่อนนะคะเขาบอกว่าอันนี้เป็นการเล่นที่ปกติเราก็ธรรมดาของเขามากนะคะอันนี้เป็นคำตอบที่เรารู้สึกว่าโอเคได้เราจะไม่ถามต่อนะคะอ่ะทีนี้โอเคคำถามที่สองแล้วกันนะคะโอเค so for the second question so three chicken dinner today and three different MVP so every team member had a chance to like step up at some point during the day so what was the atmosphere like in the team while playing the game อ่าเหมือนที่เนี่ยใช่แซมบาร์บีไซจงซ์แซมบาร์จีแล้วก็分别是三个不同的 MVP อ่าแล้วก็你们队内的氛围是怎么样？呃，因为我们团队主打的是团队配合吧，就是所有选手都能在关键时刻站出来，而不是依靠某一个人。So, uh, our team, uh, is good at teamwork. So everyone will stand up for uh, each time, mm -hmm. so yeah. So like the atmosphere is like helping each other, working together, something like that. Okay. ก็ก็ถามนะคะว่าวันนี้ก็คือได้กินไก่นะคะถึงสามมื้อก็เลยทีเดียวแล้วก็รวมถึงเนี่ยเป็น three different MVP นะคะที่แตกต่างกันที่อยู่ในทีมคือพูดง่ายว่ามีสมาชิกในทีมเนี่ยที่ได้ MVP นะคะถึงสามครั้งแล้วก็ต้องบอกว่าคือบรรยากาศการเล่นเป็นยังไงบ้างในทีมนะคะเขาก็บอกว่าคือด้วยความที่ในทีมเนี่ยเราทํางานร่วมกันเราช่วยเหลือกันอยู่แล้วนะคะดังนั้นก็ยังไงทุกคนเนี่ยก็จะช่วยเชียร์รับกันอยู่แล้วนะคะโอเค so maybe in another day so you would like to say something เอ่อนี่อยากพูดเรื่องอะไรบ้าง like the next day of the competition you would like to say something เอ่อนี่อยากพูดเรื่องอะไรบ้าง
呃，全力以赴，然后不要松懈吧，打出自己的东西。呃、uh, ，Yeah, we will do more. Uh, we will try more. Uh, do more hard work and、uh, do better. โอเคนะคะก็ถามเพราะว่าแล้วการแข่งขันที่จะเกิดขึ้นในอีกวันข้างหน้านะคะก็คือใช้คําว่ามารืนใช่ไหมวันข้างหน้านะคะก็คือเขามีอะไรจะฝากไหมเขาบอกว่าจะทําให้ดีกว่านี้แล้วก็จะฮาร์ดเวิร์กมากกว่านี้นะคะโอเค Thank you very much ชื่อเสียขอบคุณค่ะขอบคุณค่ะเอาละค่ะแล้วก็วันนี้นะคะเนื่องจากว่าสนามของเราอยู่ที่ประเทศไทยกรุงเทพมหานครนะคะยังไงเราก็จะต้องคุยกับเขาแน่นอนและยิ่งวันนี้นะคะแบบอยู่ในอันดับ2นะคะบนกระดานคะแนนรวมด้วยดังนั้นก็เจอกันเลยกันที่ป้า <laughs> ไม่ได้เปิดให้ใหญ่กว่าคนอื่นเลยนะนี่เปิดธรรมดามากนะคะตอนนี้เราอยู่กับชนะดนใช่ไหมคะโอเคเรียกชื่อจริงมันจะดูจริงจังไปไหมเดี๋ยวให้เรียกชื่อเล่นหรือเรียกชนะดนชื่อจริงแหละเนาะเออนะคะเขาเป็นคนทางการนะคะก็ถามก่อนเลยวันนี้ต้องบอกว่าคือ performance หรือว่าการเล่นของเราคือมันแบบสุดยอดมากคือได้ยินเสียงกรีดนะคะจากแฟนๆชาวไทยบ่อยมากคือต้องบอกว่าในเกมที่5เนี่ยเราสามารถคิวไปได้ถึง9คิวเลยคือสุดยอดมากดังนั้นก็คืออยากจะถามว่ารู้สึกยังไงบ้างที่เราสามารถทำได้ขนาดนั้นตื่นเต้นครับตื่นเต้นแค่นี้เลยตื่นเต้นโอเค so I just asked him that that he have like such an incredible individual performance in the game five that with nine kills so how does he feel he just feel that he excited just that <laughs> very short and แล้วแล้วแล้วตอนนั้นเนี่ยคือแบบบรรยากาศในทีมนะตอนนั้นคือเขาเป็นยังไงกันบ้างอืมก็เหมือนไม่มีใครรู้ว่ายิงไปเก้าตัวแล้วยังยังไม่มีใครรู้คือตอนนั้นไม่มีใครรู้เพิ่งรู้ตอนจบเกมเพิ่งรู้ตอนจบเกม Okay, นะคะ <laughs> And I just asked that. So, how the other members in the team just feel? So he just say that no one knows that he just have nine kills. So they just knew at the end of the game. That's a surprise. Okay. <laughs> แล้วก็ so uh, สำหรับในเกมนี้นะคะ how does it feel to compete PGC here? Uh, รู้สึกยังไงบ้างที่ได้มาแข่งขัน PGC แบบในระดับชิงแชมป์โลกแล้วได้มาแข่งในบ้านของตัวเองอืมแล้วก็ต้องบอกว่าแฟนๆเนี่ยมาให้กำลังใจกันเยอะมากอืมตื่นเต้นครับเธอเธอต้องให้ฉันใช้ความสามารถในการแปลมากกว่านี้โอเคมีอะไรมากกว่านี้ไหมนอกจากตื่นเต้นคือแบบมีอะไรอยากจะบอกแฟนๆหน่อยมาที่แบบเออเขาอุตส่าห์มาเชียร์เธอก็ขอบคุณครับแล้วก็ฝากเชียร์ทีมทีมราวนไฟแล้วก็ทีมในประเทศไทยนะครับจะทําให้เต็มที่ครับขอบคุณครับอุ้ยเขาปิดดีนะซึ่งนะคะ so I just asked him that like how does it feel to compete in PGC here in Thailand as Our home here with so many fans that has come to watch their performance. So just excited. And after that, we would like to thank you all the Thai fans over here, and don't forget to cheer up Thai teams and the other team as well from Thailand. Okay, so right here, T5. Thank you. Bye bye. เป็นคนที่ตื่นเต้นตลอดเวลานะคะอ่ะวันนี้ขอบคุณทุกคนมากๆนะคะที่มาร่วมส่งกำลังใจนะคะแล้วก็เชียร์นักกีฬาของเราต้องบอกว่าหลายทีมากๆแต่พรุ่งนี้กุ๊ปบีค่ะเดี๋ยวเราจะมาดูกันว่านะคะความสามารถของแต่ละทีมจะเป็นอย่างไรกันบ้างนะคะดังนั้นก็วันนี้ขอบคุณทุกท่านมากๆนะคะเดินทางกลับโดยสวัสดิภาพแล้วก็อย่าลืมติดตามเกมในวันพรุ่งนี้นะคะวันนี้พาลาไปก่อนสวัสดีค่ะบ๊ายบาย
Yeah.